Every poses in the game at the moment, it's, it's, it's frightening. I mean, we brought the European game over here where they're falling on. I mean, we didn't invent that. We got rid of it. The highlights of my career have been beating some of the best fighters pound for pound in the world. Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, Marvin is Marvin Hagler. So I've had a wonderful career. The Premiership, as big as they are, and it's a fantastic league and the best supported league and watched league all over the world, a lot of those players come through a system. Grass is football. That's where it's got to come from. Floyd Mayweather is probably thinking, should I fight this kid or not? He must be scared of something. That's why he doesn't really want the fight. He's not really keen on the fight between me and him. So let's see what happens. I'd like to have as many on Twitter as her. 53 million. Wow. This is Live Sports FM, the home of live sports. Tweet us now at Live Sports FM and follow us on Facebook at Live Sports FM. This is Cricket Live on Live Sports FM, the home of live sports. Good morning. Welcome back to Lords, everybody. Thank you ever so much for tuning in to Live Sports FM. We're back here again at Lords in conjunction with NV Play. And we're bringing you live ball-by-ball -ball commentary of the Vonius Village Cup final between Cal Calmore Sports and Dumbleton. My name is Keith Higgins and we've got a great team with us today. Later on you'll hear from James Gardner and Luke Edwards. But on my left and towering over me, I have to say, I've got uh, Kevin Emery with us, uh, the ex-former uh, Hampshire fast bowler. Kevin, great to be working with you today. Good morning to you. Good morning, Keith. Good morning, everyone. Um, yes, what a beautiful day for um, the showpiece final. Yeah, you couldn't uh, wish for a better day. Maybe a slight chill, but um, I think this is the time when the players, all the nerves are just at their accentuated height. Um, but keen to get out there. Um, we understand that Calmore won the toss and are going to bowl first, so Dumbleton will be batting. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, let's have a good one. Now, you, we'd love to talk to you about your career, but I think we need to focus on today's game to start with because actually you've got a foot in both camps. You have played for both clubs. Let's start with Calmore. So tell us about your association with Calmore Sports. Calmore, I went back down to Southampton to work in uh, 1989, 1990, and I had Captain Lansdowne in, in Bath, uh, but job with Halifax. Um, uh, and I went down, I met uh, a couple of their players, the chairman, I think Steve Branders, I think it was down in indoor school and chatting and thought, yeah, I went and played for them for a season in 1990 before work took me back to the West Country. It was a lovely club, lots of um, uh, very hospitable, friendly people. They enjoyed the cricket, they enjoyed the socialising. Um, I've already bumped into a few of them, Stuart Bailey, whose son's playing today, who was a former keeper when I played. Um, good player, good player, Stuart, his yeah. day. So yeah, it was good. And then when I moved back up west in uh, the late um, 90s, I started playing at Dumbleton and on and off for the last 15, 20 years have, have played and even played a few games for the second team this year. Yes, so uh, I'm not going to say how old you are, but uh, you're only just a little bit younger than me. So uh, you've had uh, been playing cricket regularly this year? Then? I played it um, a fair bit the first uh, couple of months, and then various little injuries and ailments started to um, creep in. Uh, and having been a bowler most of my career, batting a little bit, batting and you do a groin, just pushing off, um, yeah, was a bit worrying. So I, I played probably for the first two thirds, and then I retired gracefully to the physio's couch. <laughs> Kevin, I'll, we'll talk more about uh, your involvement because obviously you're very closely linked to Dumbleton at the moment. But um, thanks very much. We'll bring you back in later. But uh, we uh, just need to uh, tell our listeners and tell everyone what's happening at the beginning of the game because uh, obviously with the uh, sad news uh, last Thursday of the death of Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, then uh, Lords clearly want to honour this, uh, particularly with the funeral taking place tomorrow here in London. So if I just tell you what's uh, going to be happening shortly, because I can see the players and the officials uh, coming out from the pavilion and they'll be coming onto the pitch shortly. First of all, all the players have been asked to wear black armbands and I'm sure they all will. Uh, we were here yesterday for the Bexley against Nantwich ECB National Club Championship final and uh, certainly every single player was wearing black armbands there. 
Now, both teams will come onto the pitch shortly, so even though the game's not due to start for about another 10 minutes, certainly they will come onto the pitch uh, quite shortly, and they'll be lined up ready for the five-minute bell. When the bell rings, the announcer, the PA announcer, Anne Wellham, will ask for a minute silence, and we will obviously take that here on our uh, live audio and video. And the bell will be rung again to finish the one minute silence and then the game will start uh, soon after that. So we obviously want to make sure that uh, we uh, pay our respects here at uh, Live Sport FM and then V Play to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II who passed away on Thursday the 8th of September. So the players are actually and the officials are now coming onto the pitch. They're coming down from the uh, pavilion. Our commentary position is actually uh, square onto the wicket. If you know Lord, it's in the uh, tavern stand. I think you can hear the applause of the uh, spectators who are actually quite close to us. They are underneath where we are. So uh, they are applauding the players as they come onto the pitch. They're standing just in front of the pavilion. They're turning to face the pavilion. And when Anne Wellen, the PA announcer, starts, we will let her take over for the announcement and the minute silence. So uh, they're just lining up at the moment, waiting for and to start her announcement and as I said the bell will be rung she will make an announcement and then there will be a minute silence as I said in respect to pay our respects to Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth II so the players just keep, I'll, just until we start I'll keep talking so all the players have lined up we've got the umpires in the middle difficult to tell which team is which with their backs but one team to the left of them one team to the right one or two photographs being taken, a smattering of members in the uh, pavilion. The pavilion is to our left. As I said, the spectators, we actually can't see many of them, but they are sort of where we are commentating, underneath us. The spectators, that is. And we just, as I said, trying to time this, not quite timing it well today, but uh, hopefully in a minute we'll hear Anne Wellham, and as soon as she makes the announcements, then I will let her take over for the uh, announcement and the minute's silence. Just while we're waiting, the weather is good again today here at Lourdes. A few more clouds than there were yesterday, and I think a little bit warmer. But I have got my jumper on today, so I'm not going to be quite so cold. Still waiting for Anne Wellham to, uh, perhaps I haven't timed it so well, it's about uh, five and a half minutes before 11 o'clock, so maybe another half a minute, and then the five minute bell will be rung, as traditional at Lourdes here to let everyone know that play is about to start but as I said slightly different because of the sad events that have happened over the last 10 days Lord's already beginning to fall silent a little bit of murmur from the crowd but of course the minute silence has not yet started one or two people are still taking photographs Now you can hear the bell, and I will pass over to Anne. ...are deeply saddened and share the sorrow of the nation at the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. The Queen and her late husband, His Royal Highness Prince Philip, the Duke of Edinburgh, both had a long history of supporting cricket and England's national sides. We recognise her immense contribution to the nation, across the Commonwealth, and around the world. For those who are able, please be upstanding to observe a minute's silence in her memory.
Dann geht's los. The only sound I heard during the minute silence, I think, was a bird squawking, immaculately observed by uh, the spectators here today. And that minute silence is tribute to Her Late Majesty Queen Elizabeth II, who passed away on Thursday, the 8th of September. OK, so uh, we're here at Lords for the Vonius Village Cup final between Carmore Sports and Dumbleton. Keith Higgins and Kevin Emery on commentary for the first overs and then we'll bring in uh, Luke Edwards and James Gardner who will be uh, part of our commentary team and uh, we'll be switching around so uh, you'll hear all of us do a bit of commentary and you'll hear us do a bit of punditry as well. I shall start off the bubble commentary and uh, Kevin for the first half five overs will be our expert uh, summariser. And uh, the umpires are just coming out, let's uh, make sure we give them a name check, he said looking at his uh, sheet. We've got Peter Rockbourne and Anthony Blondell as uh, the umpires coming out into the middle here. And uh, I think we met time. To, I think uh, Kevin mentioned it. Uh, just to repeat, Kevin, it's uh, Carmore have won the toss and they put Dumbleton into bat. In other words, Carmore are fielding first. Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and I think what we're saying is that's uh, part of the course. Carmore seem to like chasing. Yeah, I think so. And you sort of gravitate to your habit. Um, Interesting enough, it's the same wicket, although looking from afar in the immediate centre, you wouldn't know that it's necessarily been played on, but the same wicket as yesterday. Um, so I think, given that, Dumbleton's preference probably would have been to bat as well. Um, you know, we're starting 11, there may be a bit of dew, but it's a fairly chilly breeze, north northerly perhaps. So I think it's set fair for, um, you know, if we get a finish... Half as good as yesterday, I think we'll all be uh, in raptures. Absolutely, uh, Kevin. I was just actually looking at uh, Carmore's progress to the final. There's only one game where they uh, batted first. That was against uh, Sarisbury Athletic in the uh, second round, where uh, they won by 89 runs. Every other game, they won by wickets. And I think it's fair to say that uh, Carmore's progress this year has been... Uh, been quite serene they really haven't been troubled at all I saw the quarter final against go taker where they dismissed go taker for just over 100 112 and although they uh, took a little while to get there they won quite comfortably so they've had a very serene progress as Mark Lavelle leads the uh, camel team out onto the field yeah here they come resplendent looks like in uh, new whites new jumpers perhaps caps as well but uh Calmore in the green caps um, yeah looking at their their run to the final as you say, Keith, it, it looked pretty smooth sailing if you look at the score. Sometimes in games there is those pivotal moments, but um, you know they are experienced insofar as they got here last year, albeit their first ever time in the village knockout. So I think they, they have a plan and they seem to stick to it by what I've seen. Um, so it'll be interesting to see how they, uh, they combat some of Dumbleton's strikers in, in the batting lineup. Let's give uh, big thanks as well to uh, the scorers today. It's uh, Claire Taylor for Caramel Sports. Uh, Sam Matt Taylor is out on the uh, pitch today. And the scorer for Dumbleton, I've got his surname. Let's make sure I get his first name right. It's uh, Duncan Westerman. And a great day for the scorers as well. They're in the score box, which is uh, just to our right-hand side. And uh, I'm sure it'll be a great day for them. So big cheers as uh, Caramel enter the field. But big cheers as well for the Turpney batsman for uh, Dumbleton, who've uh, just come out. Yeah, two opening batsmen. The taller of the two is Dan Holland, son of Nick, who also played for Kalma for a number of seasons in the 90s and is uh, a well-liked uh, member when he was down at their club. Um, he's got his other son, Miles, playing as well, who's middle order, and the slightly shorter is uh, Ross Martin. Um, and it looks like that uh, Dan Holland will probably face the first ball to uh, Kalma's left arm over Steve Wright. And I was hoping that Steve Wright might bowl after the clock has struck 12, because then we can talk about Steve Wright in the afternoon. Uh, well, he have to bowl. Steve Wright tends to bowl his overs all the way through, so I just yeah. have to hope that he's still bowling his uh, last overs at round about uh, 12 o'clock, as you said. And, yeah. uh, we'll make a note of that, Kevin. Thank you very much for that. Uh, first of no doubt, uh, several little puns that we'll have yeah. during the day. So uh, best that. Uh, talk to Steve Wright. Um, I'm not going to put you on the spot. His figures this, this time last year here at Lords was eight overs, six maidens, two for five. Yeah, remarkable. Remarkable in a final with all those nerves. Um, you know, keeper stood up. He's not the quickest, Steve Wright. He'll probably try and shape it back in, swing it back into the right-handers. He's got a, 
a fairly uh, ring set field with a short extra and extra cover and a, a slip and a gully um, from what we can see here our position being square onto the wicket not directly behind so we're just waiting for Steve Wright to uh, bowl the first ball and it'll be to uh, Dan Holden coming in from the pavilion M left arm over the wicket his first ball just outside the off stump not taken cleanly by uh, young Max Bailey who uh, very much impressed me in the quarter final against Go Taker where Calmore did not concede any extras no wides no no balls usually the odd leg bye gets conceded but not even that and certainly no byes uh, good young keeper Max Bailey is just standing up to Steve Wright next ball right on the money from Steve Wright and uh, Dan Holland pushes it on the onside for no runs yes the two opening batsmen Ross Martin and Dan Holland uh, the uh, two top run scorers in the competition for Dumbleton Ross Martin 296 runs Dan Holland 234 yeah not well timed that one by Dan Holland it was outside the off stump he tried to cut it through the cup through the offside but uh, mistimed it and uh, the leading run scorer in the competition, Ben Johns, is fielding there at uh, a gully. And he picked it up. And so at the moment, still <coughs> no runs on the board after the first three balls from Steve Wright. I think actually he conceded a four in the first over and a no ball in the last. There were his five runs last time. Again, right on the money there as uh, defended by Dan Holland. Yeah, just a hint of shape perhaps in that last delivery. Um Dan's used to uh, probably opening the batting facing something with a bit more pace and you mentioned Max Bailey the keeper you know the pressure's on the keeper when you're up up to the stumps of the very first ball you know you can't just glide into it being stood back um, so yeah good contest so far yeah just slightly over pitched by Steve Wright and Dan wait for it then uh, clipped it in front of us it was in the air it was catchable but um, Calmore's captain Mark Lavelle was just uh, a little tighter to the umpire and it was probably about four or five yards away to his left in the first boundary of the game. Nicely timed by Dan Holland on the leg side there yeah it was just on his pads and uh, turned it off nicely for four runs. Next ball he's slightly reaching for plays it out onto the offside so end of the first over Dumbleton four for no wicket, four runs to Dan Holland there. So uh, Steve Wright won't be pleased to uh, concede four runs. Uh, Kevin, I know from talking to Richard Isaacs, the uh, statistician at uh, at uh, Canmore Sports, that uh, he loves bowling maidens. That's yeah, he measures it, his success maiden, not necessarily wickets. No, well then, but he does a job for the side. I'd imagine that you know if, if you're if you're not going for any runs, then that puts pressure on the batters and the new bowlers come in have got a. A Philip already. Um, yeah, he looks steady. Steady gets in. You know, gentle run up to the crease. But it, you know, bar that one ball over pitch was was just back of a length. Dan Holland struggling to find his timing until he he had the leg stump half volley, which he put away. So the opening bowler from the nursery end will be Josh Metcalf. Josh is just the one change actually from the team that uh, won here last year. He's uh, in for Mike West. Uh, Mike, who's uh, I might say been relegated to the second eleven, but. Uh, Josh has come in from a local side and has added a bit more pace at the beginning of the innings and also a little bit more lower down the order. So uh, good acquisition by Mark Lavelle and his team and he's opened the bowling now from the nursery end into bowl to Ross Martin. Right-handed bat and first ball right on a length defended by Martin back to the bowler for no runs. So both bowlers got, what would you say Kevin, quite economical run-ups? Yeah, they're not taking too much out of themselves are they? Um, but it's about, you know, what it does at the, at, at the other end. And Next ball is uh, driven, but uh, nicely fielded there at uh, short extra cover. And again, Mark Lavelle's uh, opted for a fairly tight ring field. Um, he's got the short extra, but otherwise uh, people in to, to save one. Ross Martin is one of those players who likes to uh, field a bat on ball. Um, so he is fairly aggressive normally. So we'll see if, if, he, if he gets after Josh. Keeper standing up to him again. Next ball is uh, played into the offside, but uh, no real timing there by Ross Martin and uh, fielded again in the covers for no runs. 
Yes, it really is a tight field, isn't it? Uh, we got the fielding restrictions, so that means we got uh, we got a deep long leg, yeah. and there must be somebody outside <coughs> the circle. I can't see where they are. I should explain our commentary position. We have got a balcony that does obscure some of the view as the next ball is flicked off his legs there by Martin for his first runs, but straight down to that fielder we mentioned down at uh, long leg. Straightforward single, but gets Ross Martin off the mark. Five for no wicket. So yeah, tight. Sorry. Sorry, Kevin, you first. Tidy stuff so far. He's, um, again, as you say, economical. Approached the wicket slightly uh, double world bowl, not quite Mike Proctor-ish, but um, uh, now he's going to face the, the tour of the two, Dan Holland. Uh, keeper still up. Yeah, he's got his brother coming in uh, later on, uh, Miles Holland, probably about number five, and uh, That's right. part of the Holland dynasty. Mm. Talk about that a little bit more later on, but Metcalf in again. Just dabbed down there in time by Holland. Uh, John's very good fielder there at that sort of gully backward point area. Make sure there's no runs, but uh, just almost a little bit late on that shot, Holland. But uh, got down in time, kept it away from the wicket. Ball's coming quite quickly. So both bowlers with their shortish run-ups. Not much time to talk in between balls as the next ball's nicely driven by. Uh, by Dan Holland but uh, straight to extra cover for no run so two overs gone economical start for Camera on the field Dumbleton five for no wicket Dan Holland on four Ross Martin on one yeah I think obviously for batters in particular there's nerves up front um, they need to come to terms with uh, the wicket get used to the pace uh, the occasion but ultimately it's just uh, facing the ball that's delivered to you but so far both Camel bowlers by one delivery been pretty um, on the mark and so uh, Dumbleton looking to uh, build a partnership. Um, we've got Ross Martin facing his first ball against Steve Wright, left arm over. Yep, from the uh, pavilion end, uh, Steve Wright, which I think is very bold last year. So uh, already expressing a preference for his favourite end at Lords, and I said we expect him to bowl all the way through as he comes in and strikes Ross Martin on the pad there as he goes forward. Just check his. Uh, figures this year Sir Steve Wright who's uh, bowling uh, yeah not amongst the wickets but then that's not really what he's uh, there for as we said earlier Kevin seven wickets in the competition this year Mark Lavelle's got 15 yeah often if you bowling up front keep it tight then the bowlers at the back end can pick the wickets up not timed at all the next ball for uh, well the ball was well played and uh, well timed it was the stroke from uh, Ross Martin who didn't time it trying an on drive and uh, finds the field at mid on for no runs yeah it just looks like in you know, a wicket was played on yesterday whether that's just taken a tad of pace out of it but in you know, the batters just trying to come to terms with you know I think they're used to facing at least one quicker bowler normally are two openers from the pavilion end Steve Wright comes in and strokes into the offside but uh, the good field placing that Kevin mentioned earlier by uh, captain Mark Lavelle paid off there fielder at uh, that uh, Sort of short extra cover mid off. It seemed to be a very classical position, that one, Kevin, on the offside where it was fielded now. What would you call it? Is that short extra yeah, cover? Yeah, short extra. And yeah. it sort of does two jobs for the, if you just check drive in the air, it's the court and bowl, but it, it, it cuts the angle off and you can save the singles. Some people get carried away with it when it's a really good wicket. Um, because we do have a stop. traditional mid off and mid on, perhaps a little bit deeper, but uh, watch as the next ball is. Uh, Right on the uh, middle, middle and off stump, and uh, Ross Martin just plays it quietly into the offside for no runs. Ross Martin, he needs another three runs to uh, get his 300 for the competition. Well, speculation whether he could catch uh, Ben Johns up, but I think that's unlikely. I think he needs about <laughs> Ben Johns needs to get a duck, and Ross needs to get about 190. Hmm. Yeah, I think that's you get long odds on that. <laughs> Good job. I'm not a gambling man, Kevin. Steve Wright in again, bowls. An expansive drive there by uh, Ross Martin, and uh, that goes through the onside. No chance for any fielders to pick that up, and his first boundary, and that does bring up his 300 runs for the competition, takes him on to five. Dumbleton on to nine for no wicket. Steve Wright will not be pleased. That's two fours in his first two overs, Kevin. He will be seething at that. Yeah, well, it's just that again. He's just uh, a little fuller. He's bowled back of a length uh, a little in the over previously just a little fun Ross Martin has now just found the speed and he picked it up over mid wicket one bounce into the tavern boundary and the uh, Dumbleton fans applauded in earnest 
Quite a short boundary on the uh, leg side uh, to uh, Ross Martin at the moment as he plays the next ball to that field we mentioned a short extra cover for no run so that four off the over means after three overs nine for no wicket Dumbleton Dan Holland on four Ross Martin with his first boundary is on to five and Steve Wright's first two overs have cost eight runs yeah which for him as you say um, is probably uh, <coughs> something he's not used to um, and he's probably thinking right if I didn't pitch those two up I probably got two maidens but uh, you know it's uh, interesting time of the game in that you know how do the opening batters set it up and then for Calmore are they looking for wickets early or are they looking to defend and get Dumbleton behind the rate Josh Metcalf from the uh, nursery end coming into bowl to uh, Dan Holland back raised looking to hit the ball with a bit of venom but it doesn't really time it and goes through to mid on for no runs yeah it's definitely noticeable that they're both just a little early in their strokes um, unless the fuller ball so expecting it to come on but both bowlers are you know fairly medium pace that calf again right arm over I've just sorry I hesitated there I think there was a little bit of gamesmanship yeah. there it was clearly a bump, bump ball up. but uh, just for a minute we wonder if there was a catch taken there by that fielder at short extra cover I'm hoping they will tell me who it is but uh, they did flash up a name of a fielder just now, but uh, it was clearly a bump ball. Um, there was a little bit of gamesman, not gamesmanship, but a little bit of playing to the crowd, I think. But uh, clearly that was a bump ball. And, uh, he's bringing another fielder across. His final leg's coming across to bolster the covers. So he definitely thinks there's, it's not coming on and the batsman just uh, not timing it. So he's thinking a catch in the covers is on. Metcalf again. Got a shot. Nice shot, but straight to the fielder at mid-on. Can't pierce the field at the moment. Good, accurate bowling by Josh Metcalf. Dan Holland with just a one scoring shot in his first 11 balls so far. Matt Taylor was the fielder there at mid-on, and that's no runs. Yeah, definitely tests for uh, Dan, just to... Um... Just watch as the next ball from Metcalf comes in. and Oh, that one, let's see where that came off. It's... Uh, it was a bye, it just nipped away actually, it looked to it nip away, a kept a bit low, keeper got hands on it, it could have gone if he didn't get a hand on it, it would have, uh, hand on a pad, it would have gone for four byes, but yeah, just looked to grip I think, the tad, slightly quicker, um, but uh, yeah, Dumbleton will take all the runs they can at this stage, and so back to Ross Martin for Josh Metcalf, it's about just bowling back of a length. Ten for no wicket as Metcalf comes in, bowls. Another drive, but hit very powerfully straight to Taylor at mid-on, and that's no runs there. So I was just thinking, Kevin, uh, have you played actually with, you must have played with some of the Dumbleton team uh, during your time at the club? Yeah, played with a few of them, yeah. Um, played with the fathers as well, so uh, yeah, and even in some cases, some of the wives. Um, <laughs> we will stop there as uh, Josh Metcalf comes and bowls the neck ball, and that's edge, but uh, edge wide of the uh, slips, and that'll probably waste away. There's no third man, and that's gone through for four runs. And again, Josh Metcalf just uh, with a bit of width there. Ross Martin uh, threw his hands at it, thick edge, through a sort of gully region um, in the air, but nobody to catch it. And uh, Dumbleton will take those. Yeah, so um, a risky ish shot, but uh, I think if you sort of do the sums, the risk probably worth taking. And because uh, I said, you've got a fielder at slip, a fielder at gully, but there's every chance it will go where it did in between the two and it's uh, gone through for four runs so we've had four overs 14 for no wicket nine to Ross Martin four to uh, Dan Holland and often in the competition of eight Ross Martin definitely with the field the uh, restrictions up he looks to go aerial if he can uh, and as I say this pitch both Ross and Dan are finding it a little difficult to time it so I think he he'll he, take that four off a thick edge it was quite wide, it was a bit yeah. risky, but I think a risk worth taking. But anyway, Dan Holland on strike, facing up to Steve Wright from the pavilion end. Brings a forward defensive shot by Holland, who, yeah, after scoring in the first over, has uh, been quite quiet since, four off 13 balls. But uh, this stage of the innings, no need to get uh, too concerned. No, he's um, for a young man, he's got an old head on his shoulders, Dan. He, he, he won't worry him, he, he can catch up with the back end. He's got an array of shots, so he'll, he'll just play on its merits to begin with. It's a nice shot. Off his pick. legs, but uh, straight to that fielder at shortish mid-on. Liam Carty fielding there in the uh, sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's got sunglasses on. I thought he, right. he usually does. 
and with the, uh, the obligatory tubey grip on the left arm so the, di the dive years ago the tubey grip was oh yes put on your calf muscle or your your yeah. rankle yeah on his uh, left hand so uh, left arm which is what steve wright's bowling left arm over the wicket and uh, very respectfully forward there by dan holland for no runs yeah and it's sometimes the bowlers it's just do you get greedy are you searching for that wicket or do you just stay at length where they're not scoring and just happy to you know get out of the over with just uh, one or two off it um, that's the challenge for Steve Wright at the moment, but uh, he's bowling pretty well. Yeah. First two overs cost eight runs, just the two scoring shots off him. He bowls the next ball, and it's, uh, I think that was off the uh, legs there of Holland as uh, Jimmy Manning, the vice captain, comes round to field, and the umpire signals a leg by. So, uh, yes, having praised uh, Cal Moore for the fact that he conceded any extras against Goda Iker in the first uh, four and a half overs, they conceded uh, two one mm. by and one leg by. 15 for no wicket. Brings Ross Martin on strike. As I said, having just got his 300th run in the competition this year. Facing up to Steve Wright, who's coming in from the pavilion end. Ooh. That one. Have just kept that one again. Yeah. It kept a bit low, bottom edge. A bit low, got stuck on the crease. Uh, again, certainly Steve Wright's pace, you'd be looking to get forward to most things. But he, he seems to, to have a variation of a cutter. I don't think... Unlike yesterday when I watched it on the live feed, it did swing a little bit early. It may be just a tad cooler wind. It doesn't seem to be um, shaping in, but uh, that one was just a bit, a bit... Kept a bit low. Actually, just nipped back in. Good ball by Steve Wright as he comes in for his next ball. Yeah, very good. At the moment. No runs off this over. In fact, I think that's the end of the over. By my calculations, it's a maiden over. Indeed, and I think, uh, you know, 15 for none after five, Dumbleton. Um, whilst normally they like to get off to a brisk start, I, they'll be OK, no wickets lost. I think both sides would be happy-ish with the start. Um, Lovely. So. Sorry, Kevin, I'm going to cut you off in your prime. We're going to bring you back for some commentary later on. We're going to bring uh, Luke Edwards in for a bit of summary. So uh, go and have a break. Thank you ever so much uh, to uh, Kevin Emery there, who's uh, provided those great insights into what's happening. And as I said, you'll hear more from Kevin later on. And we're going to bring Luke Edwards in uh, shortly, but uh, as we wait for Josh Metcalf to start this six over, we'll give you Steve Wright's bowling figures. Three overs, one maiden, none for eight. So he's got one of his maidens, which I'm sure he'd be pleased with as Josh Metcalf starts the uh, next over. He's from the uh, nursery end, the uh, JP Morgan Media Centre end. Compton Edric stands in their full glory, as uh, you would expect. Although nobody actually in the ground at that end. As I said, all the spectators are in front of us. We're in the, uh, one of the boxes above the tavern stand. Watching Metcalf come in bowl. That's hit on the onside. And uh, didn't really time that, uh, Dan Holland. But he's got his first scoring shot for around about two overs, I would suggest. And uh, he's gone on to five. 16 for no wicket. And Matt Taylor very busy at that position in mid on their fielding. And there's no runs. So, good morning to Luke Edwards. Luke, good morning to you. Good morning, Keith. Good morning everyone, uh, watching on the stream and also listening to our coverage, it's a nice day out there, I won't use the word parky like we were using yesterday. Well you're a brave northerner as an expo, uh, had a little bit of problem there for Ross Martin, we'll have a look at that in a moment, it went through to the slips, I think it might have come off his pad or his boot, but uh, certainly Josh Metcalf got the better of him with that ball, but... Uh, but uh, yeah, well, okay, we won't go on about the weather today, Luke. It's a bit windy. I've got a jumper on, but uh, yeah, I admit I'm a southern softy. I haven't. <laughs> it's fair to say. As Metcalf comes in again from the nursery end. Nice drive there, but he'll be fielded by the fielder on the cover boundary. Sweeper there. Just a single two. Ross Martin takes him into double figures. Ben Perry, who's uh, the uh, fielder on the uh, cover boundary there. So one run to Martin. Takes him as a double figure. 17 for no wicket. Quite his start, Luke, would you say? But uh, both sides, a bit like two boxers just sort of feeling their way a bit at the moment. Is that a good yeah. analogy? Yeah, I mean, uh, obviously, Dumbleton, a uh, few nerves will be there. They'll just not want to make any mistakes, will they? As the next ball is steered, but straight to Ben Johns, who's not only a top batsman, but uh, a really expert fielder. And he got that very quickly and uh, threw it in, but uh, no chance to run out and well backed up by uh, Matt Taylor. Sorry, Luke, you were saying? No, I was just saying that Dumbleton have been uh, very watchful, haven't they, so far? I think there was just that one where uh, 
they nearly chopped on. But apart from that, yeah, they, they, they just won't want to make any mistakes, will they? They'll, they'll just want to settle into it and uh, punish any bad balls. That's the next ball's left outside the off stump. Uh, straight through to wicketkeeper standing up, Max Bailey. So, end of the over. 17 for no wicket. Dan Holland on five. Ross Martin on ten. Metcalf now three overs for seven runs. As you said, uh, yeah, very interesting contest at the moment. Bubbling up nicely, but long, long way to go. He's got a funny old action as Metcalf, hasn't he? He's, uh, it's almost like he's, uh, I don't know, throwing like some balls up in the air before he comes <laughs> into ball. His arms are a bit all over the place, aren't they? I know um, uh, Keish just described, uh, sorry, Kevin's just described it as like Mike Proctor-esque, hasn't he? A little but, bit, yes. I mean, a bit before my time, but I kind of, uh, I've seen the odd sort of clip of him. I, I know what he means, but yeah. yeah. Paul Adams is a bit like that. You know, the spinner, Paul oh, Adams. Oh, the... He was a bit uh, like was it, what was South the, African spinner. Yes, there was a nickname yeah. for him, you know, something in a like blender. Like the frog. Frog yeah. in a blender yeah. or something, wasn't it's, it? It's not quite as bad as that. But, oh, that's oh it's interesting. Shot. So, the next ball uh, for uh, Steve Wright is next over. His first ball, uh, Ross Martin uh, sort of comes outside the Australian and tries to paddle it round a bit and uh, missed it. It was taken by Bailey. Was... Uh, I just wonder if there was a signal there, because if he was outside the leg stump, that should be given a wide, and I think it has, so... Uh, yeah, because we're on the 80, yeah, there's a, a run been added to the total. Yeah. Um, and, uh, well, it's important the umpires are consistent, and we'll come back to that in a minute, but uh, next Ooh. ball is uh, Yorker length and dug out by Ross Martin. But, uh, yes, it's uh, definitely a wide, and... Uh, you know, with rules, fun enough, a sad person that I am, Luke, I did download the rules of the Bonius Cup and uh, it is very clear on there, umpires are told to be strict on wise, particularly down the leg side and what I say is, as long as they're consistent and certainly the two umpires yesterday were very consistent, I have no issue with that at all. That's the next ball from Steve Wright, is on a good length on the stumps, Ross Martin just defends it for no runs. Yeah, there's a decent crowd here and... Um yeah, I was just saying, it, in the sun, it's beautiful, it's really warm. When, when the sun goes in, I, I do get it being a bit chilly, but I wouldn't, I'm not, I'm not cold, but then, I'm, like I say, I'm, I'm probably hardened and used to it. <laughs> All those MPL commentaries you do, Lucas. Uh, oh, oh, he's bowled him. He went for the ramp shot there, Ross Martin, and uh, missed it, and uh, middle stump, I think, has gone back. Well, we said how watchful they'd been, but uh, that seemed a little bit unnecessary for aggression there from Ross Martin, and he's paid the price. He's been bowled by Steve Wright for 10, 18 for 1. We'll have a look at the replay, uh, Luke, but uh, it just seemed to me that, uh, you know, he tried the shot earlier. It was right on the stumps. Yeah, he came right across and uh, hit middle, middle and leg. A bit too early to be trying that sort of shot, isn't it, really? And... Uh Maybe you credit Steve Wright. I think he saw him coming a little bit as well. So, uh, yeah. yeah, he's just uh, just looking at the replay now. and Yeah, he's just fired it in middle, hasn't he? And he's just yeah. misjudged it. Maybe a bit slower as well. Um, he's just misjudged it, hasn't he? It's a, it's a poor effort, really. He's saying they were being really watchful and they were just maybe starting to get the confidence up a little bit and thinking we'll try an extravagant shot. But, yeah, that's the first wicket down. And Calm will be pleased with that, especially six overs in. So, new batsman coming out is uh, Tommy Borman, and uh, need to give a shout out to his dad, Pete Borman, who uh, very kindly gave me a lot of great information about the uh, Dumbleton players, and uh, we really appreciate that, Pete. Uh, I imagine you're here somewhere in the ground uh, watching your son coming out to bat, and if you are, that's uh, fantastic. And uh, good luck to uh, Tommy, who's uh, coming out to bat at uh, number three at the fall of Ross Martin, bowled by Steve Wright for 10, Dumbleton 18 for one. Yes, I just feel it was a little bit unnecessary, that shot. I, I agree totally with you, Luke. I think he uh, didn't really need to play that shot at that time. But uh, Without wanting to sound like a, a friend of the uh, station, Jeff Boycott, but <laughs> it, it's still, I mean, there's still no shame at this stage just sort of getting in, be in and behind and blocking it, really, is there? Um, just build your innings up as you go on. You've got 40 overs, haven't you? It's, yeah. You've plenty of time to put the uh, the afterburners on, haven't you, in that sense, in the innings? Anyway. He got two fours in his uh, ten runs, did uh, Ross Martin. Popular uh, popular man coming to the crease by the sounds of it. Yeah, yeah. No, his uh, dad, Pete, uh, certainly was uh, very, very helpful. I mean, uh, it's interesting, actually. He didn't tell me who he was, but uh, when I saw that uh, he uh, his name was Pete Borman and I saw there was a Tommy in the team, um, even I could put two and two together. There's all, you find that a lot in village cricket, don't you? Either the chairman or the chairman's son's playing or you've got father, son, brothers all playing. Yeah, 
as he faces his first ball. Oh, that was just outside the off stump and he flashed at it and Max Bailey went up, but uh, no, uh, nobody else did. But uh, yes, uh, Max Bailey still standing up to uh, the opening bowlers and uh, must admit, as a batsman, I, I used to open the innings, Luke, in my day. I hated that, having a keeper standing up to me early on. I hated it. Why did it make you think you weren't bowling fast enough? <laughs> well, no, it was the fact that I liked to bat out my crease. And, of course, as soon as I did that, I felt I couldn't, as the next oh. ball is. Big appeal for LBW as, uh, well, not a big mm. appeal, as appeal for LBW, but uh, turned down. But Does that uh, then, I won't ask, uh, I won't ask Kevin, because I know I've looked up his first class average about batting. I won't ask him about st stepping out of his crease. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, as, you're, as you've been an opening batsman, Keith, then does that, early on, does that make you think a bit more about what you're doing in terms of you've got to be careful? Yeah. Funny if I was talking to Richard a bit about it. I don't know if it was on air or off air, but uh, I felt as a cricketer I was very inhibited. I won't say too much. Well, I'd say more if you want me to, as uh, Tommy Baldwin plays the next ball. Uh, slightly thick edge, but he gets himself off the mark as it uh, goes down to Mark Lavelle, who's... Uh, on the uh, leg side uh, boundary, quite a short boundary here, but uh, a single there and a good over for uh, Steve Wright. Made the first breakthrough, four overs, one maiden, one for ten. Dumbleton, 19 for one after seven overs. Dan Holland on five. Tommy Borman keeping the strike at the end of that over on one. Yeah, that last ball just squirted off the uh, the bat into the onside, didn't it? But like you say, in a world final, you just want to get off the mark, don't you? Those butterflies will be there as you walk through that long room down the steps onto this great arena and yeah. The thing, the thing you want to do is just, uh, is just get off the mark. It didn't matter where I was playing, Luke. I just wanted to get off the mark. <laughs> You'll probably I would take it any way you like. And that sort of shot was, I think, how I used to get off the mark. A sort of squirt bottom edge that fortunately found a gap. I didn't mean it, but uh, I'm sure Tommy Bourne will be feeling happy with that as he faces the next ball because uh, obviously the batsman crossed with that single at the end of the last uh, over. and. Metcalf coming in from the nursery end and he leaves that one outside the off stump so giving himself a bit of a sighter there. Yes, I'll have a look in a moment, uh, Lou, perhaps when uh, we, uh, perhaps the end of the next over, if you uh, have a little chat, I'll have a look at some of the notes I've got but there seem to be a lot of these dynasties that you mentioned earlier and uh, the Hollands are certainly one of them as uh, the next ball is driven to mid-off by, by Borman but uh, straight to Will Brewster, the opening bat who's uh, fielding there and there's no runs. That's better. I've just adjusted my headset. There we go. It felt like they were falling off and I feel so much more comfortable now. <laughs> I was wondering why I was struggling a bit. Um, yeah, but I'm just going to watch Metcalf's action. Okay. Yeah. Metcalf in action is action in action because it's, uh, yeah, it's we're very... Watching it watch as he just comes up. It's that he takes a hop and a skip and then kind of throws his arm over and obviously in a legal manner. Yeah. Um, it's like both arms come over, don't they? Yeah. You know, simultaneously, the left and the right. Almost like he could bowl left arm or right arm. Must be a bit disconcerting. But uh, yeah, that one's outside the off stump and Borman left it alone. Yeah, quite disconcerting, actually. Absolutely right. I didn't sort of spot this too much at uh, the quarter final against Go Taker. But uh, yeah, I'll have another look at it and see. As I said, for those of a certain age, uh, very Mike Proctor esque. James and I were talking about him yesterday. Yeah, he sort of throws his arms, actually I'll say simultaneously, he throws his arms up, then his left arm comes down and then the right arm, but uh, not, uh, shall we say, a classical action. Another one outside the off stump that's left alone by Borman. Yes, I don't want to say a classical action, but effective. Here's one for you at the end of the year. How many wickets has he taken in the competition, do you know, Keith? Or without you looking up now, I mean, I can let you look that up later, but... Metcalf. Well, he's actually only played a couple of games. He's only taken four wickets. He's only played the last uh, two games, oh, so he's well, not then. been a regular... I was just wondering how sort of successful he is with it, um, but obviously quite successful then. Well, I spoke to Mark Lavelle after the uh, quarter-final win against Gotaker, and uh, he said what a great asset he has been to the side. Nothing disrespectful to the person he's replaced, Mike West, who's a very seasoned pro. Just watches Metcalf bowls the next ball, which uh, Borman plays, and he's going for the quick single. Matt Taylor does well to come across, mm. but uh, well just single there by uh, Tommy Borman. Well, yeah, a really good run because uh, he, he drove it back past the bowler, didn't he? And there was a man there at mid-on who scampered across quickly, but he was, so, he was off the mark so quickly, Bowman. And as soon as he hit the shot, he was more or less down the <coughs> other end. So, yeah, really good run in there. And, uh, like you say, 20 for one at the end of the over. And, of course, Calmore, incredible record in his competition. Only the second season in it. They won it last year, the first year. So they're currently unbeaten in this competition. So a bit of history could be made. Uh, Dumbleton first time in this competition and I know Rich talks a lot about the psychology of it all in terms of Dumbleton will be a lot more 
full of nerves, won't he? Whereas Calmore will be, well, the sort of veterans at this venue you now. They'll know what to do and what it takes to win. Absolutely, is uh, the next ball because, uh, of course, uh, they cross uh, well at the end of that over because of the single. Bowman keeping the strike for the second successive over. Facing up to a Steve Wright and he just uh, defends it for uh, no runs. Yeah, so we're just looking up some of the dynasties in the uh, club. So uh, certainly, I mean, Ross Martin has, uh, sorry, Dan Holland, uh, he's got his brother Miles uh, coming in later on. And uh, of course, yes, his dad, Nick Holland, used to play for Calmore. How about that for a link? As the next ball, he sort of uh, comes down on late Tommy Borman and plays it between his legs. Just kept it out of the wicket there. But uh, So, yes, a couple of things there. The fact that uh, their dad used to play for the opposition and uh, that shot there. We've got, yeah, if you want to tweet us, you can at Live Sports Defend. David Warren's tweeted us saying, uh, is it Jonathan Pinfield, the boss, wears a suit day already? Seems to come round earlier every year. Yep. Thanks very much indeed, David, for that tweet. And, uh, yep, we're in our best uh, suits here at uh, Lourdes. Uh, dressing respectfully, I have to say, because of obviously what's been happening, uh, what happened on the 8th of September, the death of Her Majesty. But, uh, yes, no, Jonathan Pinfield, uh, I think he's hot-footing it here from Hamburg. Hamburg, he is indeed. Far Stansted, and he will join us. I don't know if he'll join us on commentary, but he'll certainly join us in the commentary box. He can go and get the teasing when he gets here, can't he? We have a job for him as Steve Wright bowls the next ball and dabbed down again by Borman. Hasn't really settled in yet, young Tommy Borman. And, uh, but obviously a good uh, runner between the wickets. Uh, only just a single there, so Dan Holland will get to face a ball finally. We're oh. into uh, the uh, ninth over. I think Dan Holland hasn't faced a ball for 12, about nearly, uh, nearly three overs in total, 18 balls. But uh, he's back on strike now. But uh, yes, he'll be joining us later on. So yes, don't forget, um, we will uh, in a moment uh, just give you how you can uh, tweet us. We'll do it at the end of the over. But uh, yeah, please send us some messages, folks. We'd love to hear from you. We'll just wait as uh, the next ball is uh, driven by Dan Holland, but uh, straight to Liam Carty at short mid on for no runs. Yeah, he's, he's dressed like a Bond villain in his, his suit. He's got a white shirt, black tie on as Jonathan. He's going to come in and uh, yeah, especially if he's wearing shades as well. It could be a... Uh, Elementary, Mr Higgins, couldn't it for you? Um, but yeah, we, I mean, I was saying before about just settling in. I mean, the run weight is 2.42 at the minute. Slightly lower, really. They do maybe need to up it slightly, but again, not do anything silly. Just try and pick, pick your bad balls, really. Well, that was a good ball the last over, just outside the off stump. Dan Holland was not tempted, so he let it go through. So the end of the uh, ninth over, 21 for one, Dumbleton. Dan Holland on five, Tommy Borman on three. Steve Wright now, and I'm sure your bowl is overs out. Five overs, one maiden, one for 11. So as I said, this is Live Sports FM. We're in conjunction with NV Play, bringing you live audio and video of the Village Cup final between Carmore Sports and Dumbleton. Do tweet us. You can send tweets at Live Sports FM or at NV Play Cricket. But do please tell us if you're listening to us and you're from Dumbleton or from Carmore. Tell us and let us know you're listening to us and... Uh, you know, how you think your sides are getting on at the moment. As the uh, next ball is uh, a flashing drive by a uh, Borman, but uh, straight to uh, Steve Wright uh, fielding at uh, extra cover. That was a great shot, but it, it was. was straight to the fielder. But with the square being, it's quite close to us as we look. So they've packed the offside field, haven't they? So it's very hard to get a cover drive through to the boundary. And he's tried again, and again he's found Steve Wright. And... Uh, Credit to uh, Mark Lavelle and uh, Josh Metcalf. They've clearly got their field in the right place at the moment. Yeah, and uh, it, when they're facing, obviously, when the ball was running in from the pavilion end, it, because it is a short leg side boundary, it is prime for a big six hit towards us mm. here in uh, where we're situated. I think there's seven on the offside. As somebody I can't see ooh, when he plays and misses outside the off stump there, does uh, Borman. But yes, of course, there's a fielder. Sorry, but as I said earlier, we've got a balcony slightly in our vision, but there's a fielder on the uh, sweep on the bound on the uh, cover boundary. So we've got a slip gully. Backward point, short mid off, extra cover, sweep from the cover boundary. It's mid almost off. a circle, isn't it? They're yeah. in. And then on the leg side, there's just a sort of deepish mid on and a wide mid on. Of course, the uh, restrictions are in play at the minute. Yeah. And again, what great uh, positioning there. It's Mark Lavelle who feels the next ball. It was uh, well played by Borman. And uh, normally, when you play the ball like that, you're thinking, I've got runs here. And you should see how the uh, young Tommy Borman copes with this because he's played some good shots in this over and hasn't scored yet. Metcalf doing a good job for Calmore. Four balls so far, four dot balls. 
Good tight bowling by Calmore at the moment. Metcalf just steadies himself, waits for Bullman to be ready. Coming in from the nursery end. Next one is Shut. driven, but again, again straight Good misfield. Or slight misfield there by uh, Will Brewster and uh, Matt Talley has to come round. So just a slight fumble by uh, Brewster. Went very hard to him, had to move very slightly. He's wringing his fingers a little bit, but uh, Tommy Bullman will feel a little bit better that at least he's played a good shot and got some significance for it. But mm. Just means that Dan Holland, who's hardly faced a ball, has got one ball left in this over. He faced two at the end of the last over. I think two overs he didn't face a ball. They're very quick off the mark, the Dumbleton batsmen, aren't they? They're yeah. almost running as soon as they hit the shot. So the next ball is uh, played, but straight to Steve Wright, extra cover. So we reach the 10 over mark. Dumbleton 22 for one. Dan Holland on five. Tommy Bullman on four. Luke, I'd like you to say a few words, please, because... Uh, don't mute you might yet, Keith, you haven't finished. Uh, we're going to bring uh, James Gardner in to do the next 10 overs. Yeah, it's a solid start from Dumbleton. They've had 10 overs, 22 for one. They're probably slightly behind the rate. It's one of those now, it's you kind of, it's a bit like in football, you see the first 20 minutes through, you try and survive. So they survived the first 10 overs, one wicket down, but they're probably going to look now to score a bit more into the next 10 and then build it up from there. But, uh, yeah, I've been impressed at how Bowman's come in so far and um, taking it on to basically uh, try and look to score off every uh, off every ball or at least try to run that first one there. He's just played out into... And there's no, there's no run off that first ball of the over. It's been, uh, been an interesting watch so far, James, hasn't it? It has. Uh, good to be back with you, Luke, and saddle up again in, <laughs> in our commentary positions. Exciting things tend to happen when you and I are on, uh, on air together. Not as exciting as yesterday, I believe. Oh, we had a wonderful finish yesterday. One run separating the two teams after both teams batted 40 overs. Uh, extraordinary piece of uh, club cricket going on here at the Lords, the home of cricket. We've got uh, behind uh, Old Trafford. No, I'm only joking. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, yeah, well yeah. second only to Newlands. Here we go again. We've got uh, fielder at mid off there, wasn't it? Stopping that. Did you uh, did you happen to go to uh, the the South Africa Test match, James, at Old Trafford? I, I, I'm not to, no, I missed the Old Trafford game. I can't remember what happened there. I was here for the Lords game. Let's talk about that. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and he comes here, Steve Wright, to, to Dan Holland. Holland on the front foot. He's uh, very much a front foot player, I would say. Holland. He's he's got uh, a front foot press to his game. So he starts with a big wide stance and then goes even further forward. So where were you sat then when you came here? Compton Stand. Um, for the first 32 overs and then the heavens opened at which point it was not necessary to refund us our ticket prices so oh. there we go it's a little bit of a so you only saw one you only saw 32 overs 32 overs but boy they were great great overs the South African fast bowling attack was in fine form ripped through your, your guys um, and then of course came Old Trafford and yeah. it, it all uh, it all went sideways Rabad has been brilliant as it although it was a bit off color in the oval test but he sort of held south africa together really hasn't he superb superb and he's father. only 27 he's been around years steve wright similar sort of age steve wright in from the pavilion end <coughs> just completing his over there and that takes uh dumbleton to 23 for one holland on five of 26 balls it's been a cautious uh, start from him Woman trying to get on with it, but uh, also on five from 21 balls. So both batsmen, I think, struggling a little bit to adjust to the pace of the wicket. Uh, Holland, by now, I think, has got the, the measure of the game and the occasion. But uh, there have been signs of some mm. slight nervousness for, for uh, young Tommy Borman. Yeah, he's looking He's looking to like get a single or at least score off every ball, isn't he? But the minute he's either mistiming it or getting to the field. But then when he does get one and he's uh, a slight gap in the field, he, he is off there. But yeah, like I say, Holland 5 off 26, Bowman 5 off 21. If it was a three-day game, it's uh, do you know, it'd be very watchful. But yeah, like I say, the run rate's come down a little bit. Josh Metcalf in there. Bowman and Bowman's got hold of this one. He's taken on the fielder at mid-off and there's almost a hint of an overthrow possibility. But 
That gives him his single. Mm. Uh, and he's, he's really looking to, to score off every ball, but slightly frustrated. Batsman confer in mm. mid wicket about something or other. Possibly talking about uh, upping the rate. But it's like I said, then James just before you came on air. I mean, it's a good solid start, but 10. Between 10 and 15, 10 and 20 is now where you've got to up the rate to maybe towards four and just get it ticking over, ready for that blast in the last 20. Yeah, just over two and over at the moment. Dan Holland pushes that one out into this crowded offside boundary, the, the short boundary, down towards uh, the, the two banks of spectators in front of us, Dumbleton and... Cal Moore. I think probably both with... 250, 300 spectators, roughly, that they bust in for today's game. In comes Josh Metcalf. Bowling that sort of slightly, we described it as a proctoresque action, I think. It uh, appears to be off the wrong foot, but it's actually quite a sort of double gather and a dainty little hop uh, at, at the wicket there. Um, sort of Mike Proctor in the nets kind of uh, <laughs> kind of action, I would describe yeah. it as. I was going to say, you probably saw Mike Proctor a lot. Is, it, is there I a sort of visible... I, I faced Mike Proctor in the nets when I was 15 and he was uh, coming in off two steps and giving it an absolute <sighs> willy, which is much what uh, Boorman tries to do to this ball. And once again, it goes into that crowded cover field there. It's uh, tidily collected and he goes through for a single. Tommy Boorman's only 17, isn't he? Do you think he's nervous or do you think it's like youthful enthusiasm? I think it's a, b a bit of both. I, I would imagine it's the first time he's batted at Lords. Um, I can't, uh, although he's an England under 19 player, so uh, yes, it is indeed. We've just confirmed it is his first game at Lords and he's facing Josh Metcalf now. And he, he tries a very sort of ambitious chop cut down there, which goes almost nowhere. Mark Lavelle picks it up and flings it back to his bowler. So he's, uh, he's full of ideas, uh, young Tommy Borman, and I would imagine reasonably fearless in his head but the occasion does get to you I think oh absolutely yeah um, it's it's going to it's obviously going to have a few butterflies oh there he goes oh and what an outside edge which is going to run down to the pavilion there for, for, for four but that uh, was that the, a hint of a chance it probably went just to the right of, of first slip uh, and it's given Young Tommy Warman, uh, his first boundary, uh, which will maybe settle those nerves a little bit. Yeah, welcome boundary. I'm not sure if it carried or not, but it flew past uh, first slip, didn't it? Down to the, the, the boundary down We'll have there. a look at it there. No, I don't think we're going to... If, if Had he pulled it off, it would have been a quite outstanding mm. grab uh, low to his right, and he flung himself off in that direction. But, but uh, Much better over seven off that one, which is quite a big over compared to how it's been for Dumbleton. 30 for one off uh, 12 overs oh yeah it would he did carry he uh, did uh, carry uh, but it was just wide of his grass like I you say it would have been a brilliant catch I'm not sure we put that down as a, as a full chance oh no no yeah. no. I w but in real time from where we sat I wasn't sure if it, it, if it had just gone low past him but no it was in the air Steve Wright resuming from the pavilion end drops back straight back into that metronomic length of his a very disciplined bowler I've been watching his front foot uh, it's always well behind the front line so there's no risk of the no ball there I think he'd be He'd be uh, astounded and indignant to be called for a, mo a no ball, but no risk of that. Uh, and he's, he's resumed this uh, quest for maidens, which we're told is his raison d'etre. There goes Steve Wright again, and this one is hoiked up by Tommy Borman. It's cleared the field down to square leg there, just out of our uh, eye line, but that's uh, a very elegant looking uh, lofted on drive for four. Yeah, he'll feel so much better for that. As I say, he'll have felt good to get off the mark, but a really confident clip off his legs there down to the deep square leg boundary. Fielder had no chance. He could be beginning to tick now, old uh, Tommy Bowman, as the nerves settle. You can almost see it in his body language there. He's mm. just sort of reminded himself to breathe and relax as he faces Steve's right. And there goes oh, the shot and the, the, the bat held significantly in front of him just to say no run there but it's a it's a dominant mm -hmm. call there of no run but also it's uh you've got to remember he's an england under 19 international so he's he's, he's not like he's not some no. dummy is he out there no not at all he must be building experience all the time and presumably envisaging a, a career where he plays at lords quite regularly let's hope so and he has a quality as well S steve right into him now and he pushes forward once again uh, it is Authority has begun to creep into his strokes here, uh, young Tommy Bowman. Marks his crease, remarks his crease. 
he looks very much at home now after a, a slightly uh, startled opening to his innings. Dan Holland's just the, the anchor at the minute. Like, so like Keith said, he's hardly faced any deliveries, has he, so Ke far? Kevin rates him as, as a batsman who can pace in innings. And oh, Bowman has, has lashed that one down to the third man boundary. That's going to run all the way through for four. That uh, had a rasping quality to it, uh, almost a kind of Robin Smith mm. uh, feel to that shot there. It was in the air, though. It's a field that was two yards to his left. It would have been straight to him, so it was a bit of a risky shot, but he's got four, but you can see now he is starting to get confident now and thinking, Do you know what, I'm c I can score boundaries at Lords. That was uh, Steve Wright offering him some width, which is un un unlike uh, Mr. Wright. He'll be mopping his brow now and asking himself, how do I keep the youngster quiet? Here he comes. Uh, and Bormer's whipped that one off his toes again. It's down to that square leg boundary, but this time they're going to have to come through and run two. Uh, uh, has it gone all the way? No, no it's it been cut off. I think it's just two, like you said, James. It was just two. Yeah, yeah. two. So that takes the score to 44 1 of um, 13 overs. Holland and Bowman uh, going nicely, uh, beginning to just pick up the rate ever so slightly. It's just jumped to above three and over. Yeah, it's a decent partnership. It's, it's as I say, Bowman who's doing all the scoring at the minute. But uh, it's a solid start for Dumbleton. The rate has just creeped up now over three. Uh, there'll be, again, it's just ticking off that little box. If you can get up to three and a half by 15 and then get it up to four by 20, then again, that's when you start to build and start to accelerate. Maybe for the, the, uh, the master blasters further down the order to come in and, and add, a, add a big total. Change of bowling here. M Captain Mark Lavelle has brought himself on. Uh, Bowled very well in the final last year, didn't he? He did. Uh, he had, had a good final overall last year. Um, I remember it rather painfully from <laughs> yeah. an Orvenly perspective, but uh, there we are. He's a, he's a fine cricketer. He's um, captain of the side, I think, longer than anybody else in Carl Moore's uh, distinguished history and uh, got married this year. Stag night in Budapest, but he's, he's, he's back here and all that's long behind him now as he sort of um, jumps around behind the umpire, feeling his way into his, his run. Here he comes, left arm coming through, and that first one goes through to Keeper Bailey. It's a quite a slow, slow delivery, but they're, ha they're the harder ones to get away, aren't they? Yeah, it's, uh, we, we, we're discovering that this is uh, yesterday's wicket, of course, so where the National Club Championship final was played, and so it, it may just have lost a little bit of pace. The bell doesn't have much pace, and that one's been mm. ho hoisted to the... Uh, Almost to the mid-on boundary. There's a diving stop there. I think he's, I think he's pulled it off. Yes. So the batsman will go through for three. Yeah, uh, Lavelle hands over his head a pod in that. And it's... Yeah, it is just three. Really good work by the fielder there. Yeah, long, long chase. Again, that's the danger though, James. I mean, because he's quite slow, they think, right, we're going to go after him. But because there's not much pace on the ball, that's when it can loop up and not make it. Which I think we saw a couple of Dalvany dismissals like that last year. We did. Let's not go there. No, uh, sorry. Luke, thank I you. just, I just <laughs> use it as an example. <laughs> Bo Bowman there uh, grabs the single to square leg and uh, keeps the score ticking over. It's now 44 for one. I know Keith was saying there was a lot of respect between Calmore and Alvin Lee. They were disappointed when they heard Alvin Lee got knocked out. I think they fancied another a rematch at Lords. Very much so. I was talking to Mike West this morning on on uh, pitch side. Oh, here uh, we go. Here we go. That's. Uh, Holland launching into that one. The same fielder is up there this time, not having to dive, but just retrieve it. To keep the scoring down to two. Yeah, oh, absolutely. A, a, a lot of good spirit and, and good friendships made between Orvenley and uh, Calmore uh, this time last year. Simon Hughes even suggested we have a rematch, but uh, not to be. Here we go. Mark Lavelle. And uh, Holland is cautiously creeping forward to, to smother that one. No run. Yeah, we're saying about Holland hadn't had much of a strike. I mean, he's, uh, he's he's just started to open his arms those last couple of balls, didn't he? And for a while it was in the air. I thought the fielder was under it, but uh, just ran away from him. You can have a go at the left arm spinner, I suspect. Not this time. Pushes forward respectfully. And that's the end of Lavelle's first over. It's gone for six runs. And uh, that takes the score to 46 for one with Holland on 15 off 34 deliveries and Bowman 18 beginning to get uh, into his work off the 31 deliveries that, that he's faced. 
but yeah, a few clouds coming over the ground. Obviously, it's cool. There's no threat of rain, I think, today, unlike last year. But uh, it's 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 uh, warm when the sun's out. But it's going to be uh, an interesting final, certainly. As I say, 46 for one now. Another good over that for Dumbleton. I think they've realised they have got to up the rate, but also be careful as well. But they have got wickets in the, in the shed, haven't they? They have. Just a reminder that you're listening to Live Sports FM in conjunction with uh, NV Play, bringing you... Uh, audio and video coverage of this Village Cup final here at Lords, and that's uh, Bowman tucked up a little bit by Steve Wright on this occasion. Ball squirts out to to point. You can tweet us uh, on Live Sports uh, FM at uh, Live Sports FM or at uh, NV Play Cricket. If you're a Twitterer um, or you're a, a tweeter, never quite sure which it is, you can tap away and and let us know what we're missing here in this uh, village final if, if anything and uh, Berman very comfortably pushes that into the onside and takes the single our friends at Rainford and of course John Williams who, who joined me during the week for the Lancashire Yorkshire game they've uh, they've won promotion oh, well uh, done John congratulations sorry. to John John and Williams and Rainford well done I believe they can't take part in the village cup next year now because they've been promoted that's well, right so they, they I'm sure we'll be hearing a lot more of John on village cup coverage now next year be lovely lovely man oh. <coughs> Steve Wright is driven on this occasion he's uh, gone fuller in his length there he won't be happy with that Holland has driven him out past extra cover and takes two runs takes him on to 17 yes the, the, well you and I remember the Rainford uh, Dumbleton semi-final for all kinds of reasons some fine performances particularly I was announced at the quarters but it was a very hot day at the quarters <laughs> yes indeed of course that, uh, that was Alvinley. So I was at Rainford uh, Alvinley. Rain Rainford do. put Alvinley out at, at that stage, mm. and then uh, and then Dumbleton put Rainford out. Uh, Steve Wright falling over slightly in his delivery, and yes, that's been worked onto the the leg side. Yeah, Wright's looking a bit a tired now. I know they're trying to maybe looking to bowl him out, aren't they? But uh, he is tired. That is a fifty. Fifty up of eighty-eight balls, taken fifty-two minutes. The game's been played at a good clip. It's lovely to see the field is really r racing between overs and, and making sure that uh, they fulfill the time restrictions good good practice on a, a cricket field I always think right again Shot. into Bowman and Bowman plays this down towards the pavilion it's gone for four that was a shot of a of, of, of real punch and power He's, he's hot on anything slightly off onto the leg side, isn't he? Again, it was a lovely clip off the legs, wasn't it, for four. Timed it so well. I wonder whether Dumbleton have said in the changing room, and, and uh, they've got the home changing room, uh, let's have a go at Steve Wright. Let's, let's try and knock him off his length and perhaps even get under his skin a little bit. He's an unflappable-looking cricketer, and he comes now, left arm over. And uh, Bowling to Borman, who... Rather ungainly on this occasion, but works him away for a single on the onside. That wasn't quite such a sure shot as the last one. It takes us to the end of the over. 55 for one uh, of uh, 15 overs. Yeah, it's uh, again a decent over that for Dumbleton. And uh, it's just starting, as I say, to creep the run rate up towards four. Mark Lavelle is conferring with, with both umpires. I wonder what that's about. Umpires uh, Blondell and Ogborn both together for a moment there with Mark Lavelle and there's some sort of uh, discussion going on there possibly about mm. the overs. We've run through 15 overs in this 40 over innings. Lavelle twirling and twiddling with the ball. Hand in his pocket. I hope there's nothing else in there that's... <laughs> <laughs> could be used. I'm sure there is an honourable man, Mark Laville. Lovely fella. He bowls now. Just a gentle left arm over. And uh, Boorman plays him very comfortably. I'm leaving it at the end of this over, James. Keith will oh. be coming back in alongside you. Right, OK. Well, that, that could be, who knows, even more exciting. Thank you, Luke. <laughs> Difficult, I know, to, to, to beat your excitement levels, but there we go. Boorman on this occasion tries a bit of a, a, a sweep, and he's practising it now, but it uh, went nowhere. I've been very calm so far, I think, James, if I'm honest. Yeah, well, <laughs> <laughs> you have, indeed. And things will hot up, uh, as we well know. That one is held back by Lavelle, and Wilman reads the pace nicely. Gets it away for a single to mid-on. Well, we, we, we do hope that 
this game in many ways from a commentator's point of view boils up as excitingly as, as yesterday's final interesting that mid on's just gone now to deep mid on he's uh yeah. he's, he's gone back onto the boundary obviously Borman's trying to uh, sorry Holland's trying to hit Lavelle here I think he'll have a go at him now he's come forward then classic forward defense he's a tall man he got right forward there he's got a forward press in his in his batting technique deep square leg as well now for that sweep Yeah, it's a, it's a left arm spinner's field. He, he knows where he's vulnerable on that long far boundary. The bell comes in again. And he's taking him on, taking him on straight up over his head. And that's veered off for four. Yeah, and he got it straight, didn't he? So that he, he took out that fielder at deep mid on. He couldn't get round. It was straight back over the bowler's head. One bounce. Opened the face slightly, I think, and uh, gave it a deliberate slice. Takes the score to 60 for one. Holland moving along nicely now. He's on 22. Woman slightly ahead of him on 25. So th this is looking like a more and more solid partnership. Lavelle again. This time he gets past the, the defence. We'll have to have a look on the, the replay to see what it hit. There was a, a sort of tentative appeal from both Lavelle and, and He wasn't convinced, was he, Lavelle? Neither was the wicket keeper. It was a half shout and Lavelle joined in. We're just going to look at the replay now and... Uh, oh, uh, not so the, uh, Sorry, the, the replays that have shot before. That's the highlights package we're looking yeah. at. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, yeah, he's going... Well, it was That's close. That's a good shot. It was yeah, going I, I think just in the wrong leg. I yeah. think that was a referral, but... Uh, I think it would have been umpire's call if they'd have referred it, yeah. wouldn't they? Yeah. But, so like you say, it wasn't a convincing. It looked closer, actually, than the appeal made it sound. Anyway, no DRS here at, uh, at, at Lords, but there is Live Sports FM coverage with uh, NB Play, bringing you audio and video stream of the Village Cup final. And go ahead and Twitter and tweet us on... The, the handles for both live sports and NV play. Uh, I know you've got them probably on speed dial uh, down in Dumbleton, in Worcestershire, Gloucestershire boundary, and down in Col Calmore, down in Southampton way there. Hampshire representatives here at this Village Cup final. Keith, it's very good to, to, to have you. I can say you're towering above me, but uh, that's partly because you're sitting on a sort of bar stool up there. How? How, how is the weather up there, Keith? <laughs> yeah, it's very nice up here, thanks, uh, James. Yes, it's uh, yes, it's a much higher seat than I'm used to, and I do feel I'm towering over you. But uh, change of commentator and a change of bowling. Yes, um, well, in so force because Steve Wright's had to uh, finish his uh, spell, and uh, so I'm sure I'll make a note of his figures in a moment. But uh, yeah, no, Steve Wright's had to uh, come off, and uh, we got Ben Perry coming on. But uh, Boorman has taken a liking to him straight away. He's. Uh, Clunked him away there for runs. Four, I think. Straight yep. back down to the pavilion. So Ben Parry, who's bowling, uh, look like fairly regulation off breaks. We'll see what happens when when pace comes right off on this uh, slightly tired wicket, perhaps. Ben Parry, very one-two step man, and in he goes. And Bowman flays that one out to cover it's a it's a good looking shot but a regulation single 64 for one Borman moves to 30 and uh, he's making the making the running at the moment isn't he young yes very much uh, young Tommy Borman uh, when I was commentating do it earlier on he was uh, not settled in but he really has now uh, James is uh, another single for the next ball that's a single for Holland and uh, Perry's proving slightly expensive, and this is his first over. It's gone for six already off, off the four balls. Yes, I just want to give you Steve Wright's uh, figures, uh, which I'll do after this ball. You're always keen on Steve Wright's figures, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, that one is hit back down. The bowler goes down and feels off his own bowling. No run. Not as good as last year's. Eight overs, one made, and one for 31. So I do wonder whether, whether they looked at those last year's figures, and uh, knowing Steve Wright and a little bit about his very impress impressive track record they would have had a, had a go at him and it's it's come off in that sense and there goes Boorman he takes a half step down the wicket and pushes Parry for a single uh, keeping the strike at the end of that the 17th over score on 67 for one looking reasonably healthy from a, a Dumbleton point of view it's uh, now beginning to look like a, a platform from which they can launch later on and we'll We'll see some of the, the Dumbleton firepower coming out of the pavilion, I suspect. 
as the game unfolds. Just want to check uh, the. Uh, let me think. Uh, it was 18 for one, so just one short of the 50 partnership. And uh, now these two really have accelerated nicely. Dan Holland sort of playing the anchor role, but has settled in now and playing his shots. And Tommy Borman, 31 or 43 balls. Young England under 19 player, apparently only 17. So uh, yeah. really has made the facing, leap up. Facing skipper Lavelle now, and he. Oh, there was an, a, a sweep shot which missed completely. The ball bounced up off his pad, and the keeper thought, I'll have a go at the wickets, hoping that Bowman had stepped out of his crease. He hadn't, as it happened, so there's uh, a whole flurry of activity down that end. The stumps have been reassembled, and Lavelle can continue his over. Watch out, Bowman. Max Bailey is in attendance. Here comes Lavelle. This time he's just reverted to straightforward forward defensive crouching shot two things about mark lavelle uh, one thing i noticed today i think he's fielding in glasses he's not bowling with them no he was you're quite right he yeah absolutely i wonder whether he's a contact lens man normally oh and that's up and over high wide and handsome that's gone for four uh, and that really is Bowman opening those young shoulders and demonstrating that he's got the power game to go with uh, a, a very solid looking technique partnership has come up there Keith that's one for you 53 yep. of uh, 66 balls so a reasonable rate uh, and uh, in only 38 minutes you know that's that's good old-fashioned getting through your overs stuff well done absolutely James, absolutely great yeah. point here goes Lavelle. this one is looking a little bit tricky for for Berman but he digs it out and takes the single uh, he was on the move there, uh, coming down the wicket to the, the left armour, tall left armour, Mark Lavelle. He's a very imposing figure on a cricket field. He waves his arms around. and I think uh, I think you said this is his last game as captain. He's announced he's that in advance. He's stepping down as captain after this game. He's still okay. going to be at the club as he bowls the next ball. There we go. And that's been cut away to this short boundary in front of us. Uh, it's Holland this time who tucks in and helps himself to four. Nice shot, nice shot, just uh, waited, didn't he, uh, patiently, and uh, Mark Lavelle just uh, struggling a little bit. Uh, I was going to, well, I will say it, he uh, needs two wickets, and he will be the leading wicket-taker in the competition, but uh, at he, the moment... He's he a wicket-taker by, by temperament, he's an attacking bowler, but he's given away a single there to that uh, deep mid-on fielder out there. Matt Taylor has done a very good job out there. Matt Taylor, whose who's mum is scoring, I think. Claire, That's right, right. Claire Taylor, no. Old. Claire good Taylor old. Uh, met her when we covered the go-taker game. Regards uh, to, to you, Claire Taylor, from Colin uh, Jones at Albany, your scoring partner last year. He remembers that experience with, with, with great fondness and uh, your contribution in particular. So thank you, Claire, for scoring, along with your counterpart, Duncan uh, Westerman. Both scribbling away, I suspect, uh, pen and pencil stuff in the, in the old mm. club score books. While Andy and the Lords team look after all the other elements of the score, which has now moved to 77 for one off just the 18 overs. Uh, a reasonably healthy 4.3 run rate, the scoreboard informs me. Parry. That one's wide of the off stump. Uh, has it been called as a wide? It has. Yeah. Umpires do a sort of double wide indication. They first tell the batsman uh, and then turn to the aforesaid scorers we've been talking about I'm sure they've got that one down Perry sort of steps through his action there he's uh, given up the single down to long on yeah Ben Perry was the match winner against Foxton Granton four for 23 uh, but at the moment both bowlers been quite expensive for Lavelle three overs for 21 and Perry nine off his first seven Dumbleton balls just picking up the rate and th this time Boorman sweeps uh, he gets a, a bit of a top edge, and it's not an elegant result, but he, the single will go down against his name, taking him to 37 or 48 deliveries. And he's looking like uh, the danger man, I think. If, if it Looks class. If he's 17 years to old. to target anybody, they should target him. He'll have a go. Oh, and Holland, Holland has now had a go, and he's it spooned it up to... Uh, a backward point position there it, it was an a attempt to play a, a, a cover drive I think which really just didn't work and happen for we'll have, a look, at Dan the Holland. We'll have a look at the replay but he's out for 29 and uh, the score bo bo box will tell us that he's 
Yep, no, what he did was, I think he tried to pull it up outside the off stump on onto the leg side, got a bottom end of the bat, but went upwards, and Max Bailey had to run about uh, 10 yards behind, but of course the keeper with the gloves, you would expect uh, them to take it, and he took it in the end quite comfortably. Gosh, the keep, keeper covered all that ground, I, I thought it had gone to a backward point position, so he really, yeah. he really yep. sprinted. Uh, no, he took to responsibility, to yeah, yeah. Done Max Bailey. Well, well done, Max Bailey. Yeah, no, and as I said, you know, if you're the keeper with the gloves, you would expect that, and he did, and uh, Dan Holland's uh, innings comes to an end just uh, when he was accelerating nicely with Tommy Borman. He's out for 29, but a good partnership there between uh, Holland and Borman uh, after the uh, slightly early loss of Ross Martin, but 80 for two. But uh, Ben Perry are just, well, we had a commentator's curse yesterday. Every time I said something, it obviously happened. There was me saying Ben Perry was the uh, match winner. And uh, he's going to go a wicket. Well, in comes uh, RGC Salmon, Rupert Salmon, captain uh, of Dumbleton, to, to join the young Tommy Borman. And uh, he's always described as an elegant bat, uh, RGC Salmon. It's always useful to have three initials if you're going to captain a, a Hampshire side. <laughs> and uh, he's making his way in a fairly leisurely fashion to take up his position facing Ben Perry. Umpires have been conferring right the way through this. They've got a sort of walkie-talkie. Uh, oh, I assume it's a walkie-talkie. Maybe a mobile phone. Who knows? But some sort of equipment that allows them to communicate. Scorers and the third umpire. Anybody else they need to speak to. Salmon taking his guard. By the way, one of the uh, two players from Dumbleton who played in the 2011 semi-final. Him and... Uh, who was the other? Who was the other? Yes, I'll tell you in just a uh, moment. No. I've got a note on here. Oh, I'm sure you have. Adam I'm Stewart. Sure. Oh, of course, yes. Yeah. Well, Rupert's um, short sleeves, armband in place, immaculate armband around that uh, short sleeve outfit of his. And here he comes facing Ben Parry. And oh, Parry's taken pace off first ball and outside the off stump. Salmon leaves it alone, just feeling his way into the occasion and the moment. Quite a slight figure facing Ben Parry. Uh, that's uh, played back along the ground very firmly. No run. 80 for 2. Dumbleton. Uh, scoring rate, uh, Carmel will feel that they're keeping them in check at just over 4 and over. Parry pushes his men back. Salmon not going to be tempted. And plays defensively forward there at the end of the over. I think Perry thought that uh, Salmon might try and nick the strike, but he sensibly handed it back to the, the junior partner. Uh, well, in, in years, but uh, Tommy Worman's very much looking like the senior partner out on the pitch, isn't he? He's batted very, very well. After a slightly nervy start, and as I said, he got off the mark in the way I used to get off the mark with a squirt on the leg side that wasn't planned. Uh, well, that was your signature shot. That was my signature shot. The leg side squirt. <laughs> So he's done well. Uh, just quickly go through the bowling figures because uh, Perry's bowled two overs, one for ten now, just uh, three off that over, and that was a wide. And I think we're going to have a change of bowling. I think Mark Lavelle obviously feels that uh, this is not his day, and it looks like Liam, Liam. Carty's going to come on from the nursery end. Y Liam, easily distinguished by a sort of pair of designer sunglasses, which, oh, well, uh, interestingly, as he's taken the ball, the sun has come out. So, <laughs> Liam Carty, who knows? It could be your day, Liam. Uh, sunglasses in place. Oh, no, he's, he's whipped them off, and I think he's going to hand them to the umpire. Yeah. Just want to look at these uh, figures. Nope, he's the back on again. He's he got them back on again. He's decided he needs yeah. the sunglasses. So, yeah. just settling into his routine, Liam Carty. Uh, uh, just tell you, he's got eight weekers in the competition, but his economy merit is not too bad, just under four. Here he comes. Poises himself, and right arm. Fairly orthodox-looking action. Interesting to see whether he gets any turn out of this wicket, which has been used now for uh, both games this, this weekend and there goes Worman again he's down on one knee and he sort of slog swept him out to the uh, mid-wicket boundary where there's bisected the two fielders both converging on it the one gives up the opportunity to throw it into the other long boundaries out there uh, James but uh, there's plenty of spaces and uh, now there's a uh, yeah, agriculture, I think, is the expression, but well-timed, well-placed. Come back for two there, so Boorman now on 41, facing Carty. Oh, and this time he's, he's flamingoed it once again into the uh, onside, but just a single. That had a very uh, dainty 
than touched it, didn't it? That was a nicely timed shot, but a good feeling by Ben Perry out there because he attacked the ball, made sure that, because uh, he knows that Tommy Borman likes to uh, turn ones into two, something Rich and I spoke at length about over our commentaries, and Tommy Borman certainly one of those players who was looking for that, but quite rightly turned it down. But it's a long boundary, isn't it, over to the grandstand, the opposite side from where we are, James? Uh, yes, both those. I need my binoculars just to see who's the out there, but boundaries. I worked out it was uh, Ben Perry who just made that breakthrough. So Carty again settles himself. He's very composed at, at the top of his run, and one, two steps, and the right arm off spinner to Rupert Salmon, who's sensibly giving himself four balls just uh, as sighters to settle into the moment and get the pace of the wicket. It's another one. Salmon goes back this time, pushes it out. Carty's going to get through this over quite quickly. A uh, very short, sharp run up. And he comes. Oh, someone's looking for his first run there, but not to be. And he and Wilman confer at this point. As we come to the end of the 20th over, I think we'll be, yeah, we will be going off for drinks. Uh, and a, a little bit of a change of, of commentator at the same time. One of our commentators has come back from his MCC sponsored coffee uh, and is going to join us in just a moment so thank you Keith and uh, I'll hand back to you thanks so much indeed uh, James it'll be Kevin Emery who will join us I'm sure he's not had any champagne he's uh, had some coffee to uh, keep him going and uh, it'll be the mid innings uh, so mid innings break so uh, both players sets of players going off for drinks so we'll just let Kevin get in his seat and uh, Kevin actually be doing the ball by ball commentary for the next 10 overs so a bit of a role reversal from earlier on but that's fine it gives us uh, different voices different flavours I think Kevin's settled in now so I'll bring him in so Kevin what's your reading of the first half of the um, innings of Dumbleton interesting I think yeah definitely um, from the start where Calmore sort of strangled them um, with the lack of pace seam and good tight field setting um, Dumbleton wrestled back momentum with uh, uh, Dan Holland and Tommy Borman particularly Tommy Borman after a, a very nervous start so I think if you'd have said to both teams at halfway point 85 for two they'd have both been relatively happy um, now Rupert Salmon the captain's in so it's uh, time for him to try and get adjust to the wicket uh, from Dumbleton's point of view, Calmon now, their attack is mainly slow bowling. So you then get used to that pace, per se. Albeit slightly different, um, Ben Perry sort of is a, a strange action insofar as he, he starts, it looks he's going to bowl orthodox offspin, then he almost it sort of comes out the front of his hand with a little bit of um, a way swing, drift, which is what he did for Dan Holland. And then Liam Carty, nice, bustling, over his front leg, looks to turn it. So two contrasting spinners. So I think the game's evenly poised and the sun is poking its way through the pavilion. Look at respect both teams' flags up the flagpoles, which is nice to see. And I've been down amongst the uh, fans, uh, talking to some Calmer supporters just down the coffee area and they're enjoying the day. And I, even uh, one of our um, Cricket Week uh, teams, captain, Anthony O'Sullivan from Penny Darren Country 11 from Wales. He's come all the way up from Merthyr to watch. Um, so that's good to see in a nice camaraderie. Uh, James just now, uh, Kevin, was uh, speculating because uh, we uh, always uh, love talking about the metronomic uh, bowling of Steve Wright and the figures he had last year. We just wonder whether there was a plan at Dumbleton, perhaps attack him a little bit more. I don't, can you give some insight into that with your knowledge of Dumbleton? Was there a plan to have an attack on Steve Wright in the final? I think yeah, generally speaking, they look to take advantage of the, the fielding restrictions early, and particularly uh, Ross Martin. But, you know, credit to Steve Wright, he bowled very tidily, and he only really went for runs when he pitched it up. And he bowled just back of a length, got the wicket of Martin trying to play that sort of little ramp shot. Um, so, I think, given that they didn't get off to a flyer, they were a bit more circumspect. Um, some old players of yesteryear may have walked down the wicket at him, even with the keeper stood up and said okay you've not got that much pace I'll try and hit you back over your head um, but yeah no I think they Dan Holland which is unusual for him to get out he normally has got a good head on his shoulders and he'll catch up um, so credit to Perry just that little drift he tried to fetch it from wide of off stump the slope um, 
not bringing it in on that occasion and top edged it and uh, Bailey Bailey ran back helmet on always difficult for a keeper took a good catch great the players are just looks like they're coming back out Kevin so are you doing the bobble ball commentary and I can't say I'm an expert summariser compared to your good self but well, well, um, I'll summarise as best I can with your with your commentary Keith, it's a pleasure to sit next to you we'll win some match but we'll get a bit so Ben Perry still on this end again you'd think off spinner would you want to bowl to the short boundary with the slope slightly but actually as I said he tends to and I, I watched him for a game down at Calmore tends to get it a little drift away he's a, f he's a funny funny sort of slow bowler in that it's not an orthodox so yes no critical time of the game it's Ben Perry who will be uh, bowling to Tommy Borman who after a shaky start has moved on nicely 42 of 52 balls it's a bowl and he's oh straight after the drinks interval he's gone for an expansive slog sweep and toe-ended it to short mid-wicket poor shot because he lifted his head didn't he his mm. head went right up uh, yeah perhaps the, uh, did they put something in his drinks yeah there you go he's no <laughs> with the next ball he, he felt his father in his ear Tommy <laughs> Tommy hit your head down um, no yeah no so you just got to get yourself back in don't premeditate anything oh and he's just flicked that wide of the short mid wicket out to uh, mid wicket boundary where Mark Lavelle feels throws it back um, and now so Perry to Rupert Salmon who's yet to get off the mark it's right arm over Perry short little run up again and a little bit of a fidgety delivery and uh, Salmon is down the wicket and punches it full toss through to Mark Lavelle at deep mid wicket again a single to Salmon who's off the mark Looks very composed, doesn't he, uh, Rupert Salmon? And uh, nice experience, n nice juxtaposition, the youngster and the experienced captain. Yeah, and that's a fine delivery, Ben Prowell. When I watch them, he does vary his pace quite a lot. I think that's his differential. And in that delivery, Tommy Borman threw the shot again, looking slog sweep. So we said about a plan, I think he's looking for this shorter boundary. Um, but uh, you know, Perry is, is not to be... Uh, underestimated and he goes out it's interesting I was look at your spinners and captains sometimes think we'll keep him in close but he goes out to the uh, deep square leg boundary to field before he comes back and probably bowl his next so Dumbleton 87 for 2 after 21 and it will be Liam Carty in the sunglasses bowling from the nursery end more of a classic off spinner tries to give it a bit of a rip and he's got an orthodox field um, looks like it is 5-4 leg side, two boundary riders at deep square leg and deep mid wickets. Yes, with the balcony there is a fielder on the cover sweeper boundary as well, which we can just right. see. A nice, uh, they're just short of length, Rupert Salmon just guiding it, little dab down to short third man for a single. Gets Tommy Borman back on strike and Dumbleton move on to 88 for two in this, the... 22nd over. And a fine shot. Nim Carly give it a bit more air there at that time. And Tommy Borman controlled punch down to long on. Takes an easy single. Been very busy down there, Matt Taylor, isn't he? Done there, it seems yeah, to. Funny how some fielders, the ball always seems to yeah, go to does, you, doesn't yeah. it? Wherever you go. Been very busy today, Somebody Matt Taylor. Yep. That one, and then after when you drop catches, the ball seems to follow you as well. But a little magnet in your pocket, but gets through his overs quickly. Uh, Liam Carty's ready to bowl again. It's a nice looking shot from uh, Rupert Salmon. Back foot punches it down again to uh, mid on where Taylor sprawls and stops it. Single to Salmon. A very elegant player, Rupert Salmon. Um, absolutely, absolutely. Always it gives you the impression of a lot of time to play. And just back of a length, Tom Borman go back, use all the crease, cuts it to uh, deep cover for one, just to the short tavern boundary. It's very short, and uh, I notice they've got Ben Johns, one of their better fielders down there, and... Uh, I'll be to this ball and remind people of what happened last year with Ben Johns down there. That's a lovely shot. That is a lovely yeah, shot. That's a great shot. Rupert Salmon has just gone back and he has timed the cover off that. I was tempted to say Salmon smoked that through extra cover, but I won't say that. 
No, you're entitled to, Kevin, because you couldn't say right in the afternoon, so you're quite entitled <laughs> to say that. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, going back to Ben Johns at the end of that over, yes, it was under here uh, was where uh, there was a pull from one of the Albany players, and uh, we all thought what a wonderful six it was, and then realised that Ben Johns had leapt up out of our view and took a one-handed catch. Oh. It was stupendous, and... Uh, you know, we just couldn't see it, and it was exactly where he was fielding just now. So, uh, and I noticed it's interesting. Yeah, he's, um, coming, yeah. he's gone all the way to long, long off. off. Yeah. No, so and that's that's an art of captaincy. You get the yeah. best fielders in the right spot. Absolutely, absolutely. And he has gone for it this time now, Tommy Borman, and he's gone to his 50 with a six over square leg, 51 of 58, 59 balls. Tommy Borman, well played, young man. Excellent. Tommy gets all his natural talent from his mother. Is 51 off 59 balls, and after a shaky start, has really um, shown his range of skill. Yep, I'm trying to find him the mouse so I can tell you how many fours and sixes he's got. But uh, great knock by him there. Let's uh, wait to the next ball, and then I'll uh, give you information about that. Just uh, next ball is uh, short, and Tommy Borman just six fours and one six cuts it through. Yep, just on the PA. You're ahead of her, Keith. You're ahead of the game as ever. <laughs> Only just. Well Only just struggling there. <laughs> but, uh, uh, no, great innings. Really, you know, yeah. if this lad is 17 playing in England on 19s, I think we're going to... I hope I hear a lot more about him in a few mm. years' time. And that's good cricket. That's uh, just Rupert Salmon just dabbing it to a short third, getting Tommy Bourne back on strike. That's what you talk about. And the backing up of Tommy Bourbon, he was running to the danger end, and uh, must admit the fielder at short third man seems very short, but uh, great running by Tommy Bourbon. Perry again, just a little over pitch this time, and Tommy Bourbon, yeah, just clips it off his legs to mid wicket boundary. Mark Lavelle, who's busy again. Uh, again, captaining from the mid wicket boundary, often you don't see that, but again, they've got a plan, Calmore, they've got their best fielders in certain spots. And he's played it again, Rupert Salmon, and our short third man who's the substitute Croft. Maybe he's just getting himself into the game, but he, I think he might be quite busy with Rupert Salmon, who's, who I think is reading that Ben Perry is not a prodigious spinner of the ball. Yeah, and also the fact that uh, Dan Croft is on as the 12th man. We'll have to try and see if we can find out who's uh, gone off, but uh, we'll uh, and that's work on that sure lately. It's yeah. a good piece for him to be manning to end the over. I'm not sure if it's the opening bowl of Metcalf, but I might be wrong. Um, but uh, again, he's now, I think that's the second, if not third time, he's gone for that sort of slog sweep and toe-ended it to short mid-wicket. And that's credit to Ben Perry, just varies his pace. And just he's not there, you think he's there again. Mm. He holds his head in uh, anguish, but... No, good bowling, good mm. bowling. Held it back nicely. Very good. Yeah, great stuff. Just to explain, we do have the stats on the computer screen and uh, just let people know, I'm actually going to have to look at an email because I believe our guest at lunchtime has emailed me. So bear with me, Kevin. You no carry problem. on commentating and I shall see whether our guest, hopefully it's a positive message, but I better just check it just in case something's happened. No, you carry on, Keith. It's Liam Carty continuing from the nursery end. Uh, Rupert Salmon on strike. Right arm over the wicket. Slightly slower ball there from uh, Liam Carty who bowls in sunglasses and a tubey grip. Not a combination that uh, <laughs> Fred Titmus was ever used to. <laughs> and again, nicely floated up there. Just giving respect, Rupert Salmon, nice forward defensive shot. And uh, Liam Carley, one, two, three paces back, comes in, poises, up, coil, bowls it. This is given a bit of air and it's just ooh, a full shot. It's inside edge down to short fine leg and then looking for two Tommy Borman who's very quick between the wickets is asking for three but decides against it and uh, the fielder I think is Mr Brewster Will Brewster yeah uh, the opening bat for Calmore um, he retrieves it and there's two to Salmon off a, yeah um, an unforced error there yep oh, replay's only just coming up there oh I think it went over the top of the stumps I think I think it turned in away from him and deceived uh, Max Bailey uh, well, yeah, it looked like it I could be wrong but almost uh, a Nat Skiver actually yeah. almost through the well, yeah. he, almost remnants yeah. of your early days Keith with those little squirts <laughs> to shorten that's a nice shot for none Salmon looking expansive drive but again well fielded in the covers by Manning who's been uh, very adroit there at short extra cover there uh, come or send out long off the last balls of the over and well bowled Liam Carty 
Just definitely varying this pace, gives it a little bit of air. Over. Two runs uh, off yeah, it. Yeah, nicely bowled. And uh, it's yeah. uh, unusual that you've got an uh, attack in the middle overs with no seamer. You know, I think they've got two other bowlers yet to bowl in um, Manning. Jimmy Manning and Sean Johnson, who's yeah. a little quicker, but uh, yeah, they, they could come on. But great point you're making earlier. Something actually echoed with uh, Rock, uh, what uh, Rich uh, Dean, who was with us yesterday, and myself, was saying that uh, particularly Rich, he was saying that what he loves about cricket is you can play a full shot, get an edge, and get runs, and then you play a lovely, well-timed shot, but you hit it straight to the fielder for no runs. And he loves that sort of juxtaposition, and I agree with him. And that happened in that over there, wasn't it? Sure the it runs did. that they got were off the edge. And uh, two, one or two other shots were uh, straight to the fielders. Perry's back on, bowls this slightly shorter, and Borman's on the back foot, and he's crunched it through to extra cover. There's a dive on the boundary, a great, valiant effort. Uh, looks like could be Sean Johnson, might be wrong there, but it's just evaded him and gone for four through extra cover. So nice Borman, shot. nice, nice shot. shot. Four off the first one, always, always very handy. Bowler then is now thinking about trying to save the over. But all the angles that there are, and looking at that, you got that short mid off, you got extra cover, and he managed to sort of bisect them and the fielder on the uh, sweeper on the boundary there. So well played shot by Tommy Borman. And he's gone it's again. Big one. It's gone again. It's almost the classic where the bowler who bowled it sat out sort off, and he's gone back foot and punched it through the covers this time. He's pitched it up on the stumps, and he's slog sweep for six, which he's been trying to do. Definitely a plan. They've definitely um, talked about that, but that's well executed. Borman moves on to 63 off 64, Dumbleton 117 for two, and Ben Perry under a bit of pressure this over. It certainly is, 10 off the first two balls. And he's gone again, is it high enough? And it is. Yep. Just under our commentary position, we can't quite see... Uh, no, I could just see Mark Lavelle's head. I yep. thought for a minute I wonder if it was going straight to him, but when he jumped up and put his hands in the air, even with his new glasses on, he was never going to get anywhere now. Another uh, six to Borman. Yeah, Mark Lavelle, six foot three, six foot four. Couldn't yeah. even with a jump get bring it in. So, 16 off the over so far. Borman looking really imperious now. Uh, well, Ball, just a little quicker, Perry. As I said, varying his pace, just yorked Tommy Borman. Then it's very easy to get giddy and carried away I think Dumbleton would like Dommy Borman just to continue be there at the end see it right through take responsibility but as we say he's only 17 he's got a wise head on young shoulders and he's hit that and that's a good stop at short extra going to be hit hard and got everything behind it there I think that was Mr Brewster again yeah good piece of fielding in that sort of short extra cover position final ball of the over it's just yet yeah, just a little quicker Perry just into the block hole and Borman just digs it out. Um, but, uh, you know, certainly Dumbleton, just a momentum shift here. OK, I'm going to hand over to, I think it's uh, James to uh, come in to be the expert summarizer. So just a quick comment. Yeah, well, I'm going to compliment uh, Ben uh, Perry for because 16 off your first three balls, you fear the worst. And he came back with three dot balls. But uh, 25 overs, 123 for two, Dumbleton. Uh, intriguingly poised and uh, well we'll see what happens over the next uh, few overs and uh, mm. back to you Kevin but uh, we'll have uh, James doing the um okay thanks Keith um, as you say Keith, 123 for two 25 overs gone 15 to go Liam Carty bowling off spin from the nursery end he's going to bowl his first ball to Rupert Salmon who's down the wicket looking to punch it through the leg side but only finds Mark Lavelle at short mid wicket just berates himself a little bit wanted to give that a bit more but Liam Carty is in a good little spell here gets through his overs quickly doesn't he Carty mm. no time to think between just tuck, tuck around the corner that's very good running Tommy Borman backs up well, Brewster just slips as he tries to gather it but yeah cricket rotating the strike um, gets Tommy Borman on back on strike and who is the man of the moment as we speak not wishing to put the commentators curse on him so Liam Carty just I sending extra cover out sorry do you believe Thanks. in commentators curse I, I, I don't <laughs> Carty well bold well bold just nicely yeah nicely just again a, bold, a nice line looks to build and just on off stump a little bit of air probably born respectful just pushes it into the vacant gap but short extra cover for one Salmon dancing down the wicket there. Yep. Leaping down oh, the... Oh, very good. Yeah. 
Very good. Well, yeah, all puns, all puns are intended. Maybe not well received. No, he may. Not, he knows he may fish outside the off stump before before long, but uh, we won't go there. Oh, he's done it. That's a lovely shot off the back foot. We put salmon, and it just makes a lovely crisp sound off his back when he times it effortlessly, almost through one to deep extra cover. Dimbleton, one twenty-six for two. Tommy Borman back on strike. Liam Carty doing a good job for his team here. Last ball of his fourth over. And he bowls nicely and just, just worked to the leg side, just in front of square. Tommy Borman takes the single, keeps the strike. Liam Carty is end of his fourth over. Very tidy, four overs, none for 19. And uh, game certainly well poised, James. You think? Yes, there is. There's a t I was going to say there's a touch of the Joe Roots about um, Rupert Salmon, isn't there? He's got that uh, ability to keep the score ticking over and everything looks very correct and in, in, in good working order. Uh, you, you've seen him bat quite a lot, I suspect. Yeah, I've seen him. Yeah, and in full flow, he's one of the most aesthetically pleasing batsmen you you wish to see. Um, effortless play shots around the ground. Tommy Borman simmer in a way, but Tommy also has that sort of uh, destructive element where he's looking to go with the slog sweeps and the shots that all these young lads are thinking of playing. It's going to be a change in the bowling from the pavilion end now, and. Uh, Skipper Mark Lavalle thinks right, we need to try and make something happen after Ben Perry's over and last over going for a few and he's bringing himself on from the pavilion end which will be interesting Slope just taking it in rather than away You can't help feeling that uh, Bowen will target this short leg side boundary which he's done successfully already Yeah I think uh, it's definitely a plan of his he just needs to see let's see if, if Mark Lavalle can spin it from the pavilion end but at the moment and he's hit that. Oh, it's caught. We can't see. It was a short ball, and he's pulled it leg side, looks and like he's looks like the sub. Caught. He hit it straight to square leg. It was not a ball that you thought was going to take a wicket, but Tommy Vaughan almost trying to keep that down is gone for 71 off 71 balls of fine innings, but the century beckoning has gone. Um, Mark Lavelle, so good captaincy, changed it, brought himself on. So they'll take responsibility and he's got the wicket. Could be the, the golden arm of Mark Lavelle striking there. And uh, yet to be seen, I suppose, but pivotal moment, potentially? Well, yeah, potentially, because Tommy was playing very well. Um, and you see, he sort of tried, got caught between two, I hit this in the air for six, and he pulled it and it went flat under our commentary position to the right. Um, and a good catch by a subfielder. Seven fours and three, Johnson, three sixes, so he was, he was trying to add to that six tally, wasn't he? Yeah, and so often, as we say, it's not always your best balls that get the wickets, but the bowling isn't about bowling your best balls, it's about having your best field placing as well. The uh, Carmel fielders are huddled here, very close to their supporters, in fact. Almost sort of drawing sucker, I think, from the, from the crowd in front of them. Uh, it's quite an experience, I think, for any village club players at this level playing in front of a, a, a crowd of this size, certainly, you know. Yeah, and there's plenty there. There's the plenty beneath us. It's a fairly full stand. There's a few uh, in the in the main pavilion, and there's an odd person dotted across the way. I think they've had um, difficulty coming up to, to London on this particular yeah, weekend. Yeah, 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 true. But Mark Lavelle, uh, he only needs one more wicket to be the top wicket taker in the Vonius Village Cup this season. So um, an opportune time for him to take a wicket. And now, again, just a rebuilding phase. Miles Holland, the younger brother of uh, Dan, um, a fine uh, player in his own right. Um, slightly different uh, in terms of where he's looking to hit the ball but tall only uh, again 17 year old pushing 18 um, Miles is Holland the younger is he? Holland the younger yep, yep. Uh, bowls with a seam as well so him to face his first ball Mark Lavelle and he just works it away on the leg side nicely off the mark first ball um, and it's interesting because uh, you know, both teams, I think, looking at them, have got new kit for the final, and why wouldn't you? Did a comment from some old chap in the building. He said, well, they've got new kit, but they don't whiten their boots. They don't whiten their boots in our day. You'd be torn off a strip. Yes, you, now you've drawn attention to it. There are some slightly grubby boots out there, mm. quite right. So very smart haircuts, though. I notice a number of players have had Lord's haircuts. Yeah, they've had, I think it's called, James, you and I, maybe not quite in that kind of, they've had the fade. They call it the fade. Now I've heard of brain fades, but now you have it. It's the fade where it sort of oh, I see. You, you, you glides into your you Start with the number one neck. and a half, and you end up with the number two. Is that right? Something like that? Mm. And that's a ball just slightly down the leg side. Rupert Salmon is back sweeping and gets a 
bottom edge on it and there's fielders having to come from square leg looks like it may be um, not Johnson good fielding uh, they, and Dumbleton run through for three it was Johnson who took the catch um, yep. earlier on uh, we thought it was the sub but in fact it was it Johnson was, yeah it just it under off it was Sean Johnson himself yeah mm -hmm. now he is uh, a fine fielder I've seen him when I watched and he's also again another Zimbabwean I think is that right? it, yeah a nice timer of the ball Zimbabwean of origin I think so yeah I think he uh, did speak to a couple of the lads when I was down watching and they rate him he hadn't got a lot of runs had a slight domestic situation this year, but uh, has resolved. Um, but he's one to watch. I, I, I was quite impressed with his batting when I watched them at Calmore. He's probably traumatised by the ball he got from Chris Charles uh, in, in the village Probably's final last year, but I, I won't remind him of that. He's not listening uh, to Albany, us got to, got on, on commentary. But uh, Chris, Al Chris Charles may be, as, as will some of the other Albany. I think Albany, uh, as village populations go, is, is the smallest in the competition. Right? Uh, Four or five hundred? That four or five hundred in the, in the village itself, and, and certainly one of the smallest villages to be represented here at Lords this time last year. But a great occasion for all the players here. Great. Yeah, and Calmore have had a wonderful run, um, uh, and having only entered the, the Village Cup for the first time last year, and here they are on the final two years running. Yeah, and you know I think phew, there's some there's some professional people who've never professional cricket's never got to play at a final at Lords, so two years running is uh, unheard of. So. As they say, soak it in, enjoy it, but uh, I'm sure both teams are looking to win. Our indefatigable statistician, Keith uh, Higgins, I think, dug up the fact that if Calm will go on to win today, they'll be the sixth village side to, as it were, defend their title back-to-back -back, uh, championships. That's correct. It's Liam Carty again now, bowling to Miles Holland. Gives it a bit of air. Miles Holland Ooh. is punching that too short mid-wicket. Mark Laval fields nicely. Up in no the run. Air up in the air for just a moment. Give Carty some uh, food for thought. And again, just again, just slightly, a little flatter that one. Holland off the back foot, just punches it again, and Mark Lavelle is in business again at short mid wicket. Varies his pace, doesn't he? Yeah. I, think. I mean, credit to Calmore's spin bowling coach, they have such one. They've all varied their pace, it's not all the same. Carty certainly hasn't been carted as yet, um, and he's into his. F uh, Fifth over, 4.4 naught for 21. So a couple of balls to go. Double to 133 for three. Salmon's got a good back foot game, I've noticed. Uh, almost an old-fashioned yeah. ability to play off of both feet. Not just a, a bowling machine product. No, and I think that, yeah, it's nice to see the nuances of batting being displayed. Uh, and often he doesn't strangle the bat. The bat looks, you know, quite light in his hands. It does. So Cardi looking to finish off his fifth over. And Salmon is down the wicket and hits a lovely, elegant off-drive out to extra cover. They're looking for two, but I think that's Johnson again and no run. They just take the one. And Dumbleton moved to 134 for three. Um, James, yeah. you mentioned, sorry, just to the, uh, the other five teams who've won it um, uh, twice that they were trying to elm I think it was Troon, St. Fagans, Caldy, Shipton under Witchwood and Woodhouse Grange. So they would be in fine company. And and, and w effectively undefeated. Well, they would be undefeated yeah. if they won today. Undefeated, yeah. Uh, they had a, had a magnificent 17-match run in they the have. Village Cup without uh, tasting defeat. Very good point, yeah. And they've, um, they played one more round than Dumbledore. They've got a bye in the first round. Um, so that is, a, that is a feat in any competition. Yeah, quite Two a way for, for Mark Lavelle to go out in his last game as skipper. Yeah, and that's, he's on again, Mark Lavelle, from the pavilion end. And... Just back of a length, Rupert Salmon, back foot, punches it down to long on, um, and there's one run. <coughs> Dumbleton, 135 for three. Lavelle into his uh, fifth over from the pavilion end. He's got long on, long off, and a deep sweeper at the cover point, and a square leg on the boundary. Clouded over. And again, nicely, nice variation of pace, just a little slower. Miles Holland trying to guide it down to third man, doesn't get enough bat on it, and it just dribbles out and... The keeper, Bailey, tidies up. There's a resemblance between the, the, the two Hollands in their batting style. They're both wide-footed stances. They've both got a slight forward press. Is that, uh, is that the dad's influence, perhaps? Yeah, the, da the dad always had a forward press in more ways than one, uh, particularly in the bar late at night. Um, but, yeah, no, I think... Both products they've come through on scholarships at Morven College, 
but yeah, their formative years. Their dad, Nick, who was a fine player in his own right, an opening batsman, uh, who used to strike the ball um, with some venom. Um, and he has the record, Nick Holland, of I think of the most consecutive drop catches at slip. Not off your bowling, I take it. A uh, few off my bowling, um, no, uh, and some choice words. Um, but no, uh, they're both very fine players. Miles is also bowl seam, whereas Dan bowls a bit of spin. So Mark Lavelle doing a good job. It's uh, last ball of his fifth over. And Nick, um, like you, has a foot in both camps, I think, as well. Yeah, Nick played for, I think he played for four or five seasons at Calmore. He's originally from the Isle of Wight. And that's well bowled. That's well bowled Mark Lavelle. He almost has found a better rhythm. Stood up from there. a little yeah. bit, or at least from... Uh, from Holland's, Holland's reaction. Point of view. Yeah. yeah, just just gripped in the wicket, I think, there, just expecting it to come with the slope, and just you see batsmen think, oh, well, I didn't expect that. Um, but yeah, back to Nick, he played most of his cricket, Isle of Wight, and came over, played at Calmore and Southampton, then moved up in the, the late 90s up to um, the Cotswolds, and has been a an ever present in Dumbleton since. You mentioned the slope. Our batsmen have got to put the slope out of their mind when they're batting anywhere, but at, at, at Lords in particular, because there's a certain mystique about the, sp the slope, I think. Yeah, there is, and, and often, you know, that old adage, just you know, treat each ball on its merits, have a look. There is a bit of a slope, and certain bowlers can um, use that to their advantage. Sometimes we've got now Carty who's bowling uh, with the slope slightly against him from the nursery end to bowl off spin, so that's more difficult for him to, to get any purchase, so maybe that's why he's bowling it, you know, relatively slow. Suits a bowler with natural variation, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and he's a good fielder. That's a great stop off his own bowling, dives down, prevents the run to long on. So it's uh, no runs off his first ball of his sixth. We put Salmon on strike. Carty in again, quite crabby, and then he comes up, gets nicely through the action, and Rupert Salmon has smashed that backward of point, and it's a nice stop in the end. Might have just caught him on the kneecap for the backward point. Quite a large divot that he's managed yeah, to Yeah, and I think that could be Steve Wright, who's thinking, yeah, yeah. didn't want to do that. Um, I have bowled me over, so I'll, I'll just put that back. Oh, he's done a good job as well. He's, he's, he's really done a very neat uh, divot replacement job there. Well done, Steve Wright. Yeah. You never thought that his dad was a golf grounder, would you? Is that right? No, I've just made that up. Um, <laughs> but I was just uh, having a bit of fun. Uh, um, your research knows no bounds. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> knows no truth. Um, here we go. Liam Carty. Right arm over. But was it slowly? Nicely, nicely flighted. And Holland looking to pierce the leg side. Only finds backward uh, square leg and no run. Looks around uh, increasingly proprietorily, doesn't he, uh, Salmon? He's non-strikers in. Yeah, and that, yeah, he is, um, and he's a, he's a fairly unflappable character, Rupert. He's a lovely chap. Um, recently got married, was out in uh, Botswana or for the game reserve, and Chobi, and very probably, or the Okavango, one yeah, of the two. Yeah, yeah okay, you would know. I'll just I'll finish it off after this <laughs> ball, but it's uh, Liam Carty coming in to finish his sixth over, short, and Rupert Salmon hammers that. And it's well stopped by uh, Manning at, at short extra, but it, it goes through his grasp. And it's a single to um, Salmon, who moves on to 21 of 32. Miles on is 5. Dumbleton 140 for 3. And we'll come back to the Tiger-Lion story later. But uh, uh, I'll be Hi handing over now. Highly unlikely to be a Tiger, Kevin, but uh, we'll, 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 <laughs> we'll work on your wildlife. Yeah, I think he was sponsored by Esso. Um, oh, very good. So Luke Edwards is uh, coming in to take over the commentary for me. And... Uh, 140 for three, and uh, James will just uh, fill in before. Thank you, Kevin. Providing your uh, real insight, I think, in, in, into both sets of players, and that was an opportunity for Salmon to try and dibble one through the, the, the leg side, but uh, didn't quite come off. A slight sort of touch of inelegance about Sam, and he's always described as a very elegant batsman. And he's shown us all that mm -hmm. so far as he as he faces Lavelle. Yeah, yeah I'm waiting with Welcome, Luke. Yeah, thank you, Jay. I'm waiting with bated breath for this Botswana story, but you'll have to wait until uh, Kevin's back on with us in around five overs time. Um, it's Lavelle from the pavilion end over the wicket, and it's off the back foot there by Salmon fielded there and uh, it was a big blow losing Bowman because he was just really starting to hit his straps wasn't he and you felt he could really go on and get a big score here I know um, they always say halfway judge the score and I think they're on about 90 odd 91 at tw 20 overs so you feel they could get to 180 that's chipped away over mid on it's fielded down there at long on and uh, one run added to the total 140 for 
three. You still feel that he can get up to 180, 190. That'll be a challenge in total. Well, you're taking us into sweepstakes uh, territory <laughs> here, Luke. Uh, what's what's your bet? Where, where does your number come down? It's oh, I sweat. That's high. That's six. That has gone the journey. Thank you very much. Miles it says Holland. Miles Holland slog sweep. That's probably the highest one of the day so far. Yeah, Lave Lavelle looks a bit rueful, doesn't it? And, and at this stage. He's wondering whether you have to go and fish the ball out of the confectionery stand or wherever it's ended up. Yeah. It, it has been retrieved. No, it's, uh, it's interesting to say about, yeah, sweepstake. It's, um, it just all depends on wickets. Like I say, still plenty of wickets in the hutch. But the more, obviously, a new batsman comes in, he's just maybe got to, use to get used to it, making a debut here, the nerves and everything. And this time he's forward. So they maybe need an over or so to get in. And with overs running out, it's, it's difficult. And so wickets are key for Cal Moore if... if Dumbleton can keep it to three down and these two can put a partnership together then who knows as nine overs remain in the end of the over 147 for three Simon's on 22 and Miles Holland is on 11. Yeah I think that the, the 240 score which would be uh, the, the six and over par figure um, probably ambitious at this stage but not not beyond their reach uh, with, with wickets in the hutch but we'll have to see some some big hitting for, for that to happen. I've got a feeling that, Ho that Holland might be the man to, to launch. Yes. Continuing from this end, it is uh, Carty in those sh shades with white rims around it. Very uh, elegant shades he's got on. It's cut off the back foot there by Salmon for a single. And here's Carty again. Only two paces in, bowls. And again, they're looking for a quick single. They're going to take this one again, and they're taking on the fielder, and he's Steve got Wright. for another single. Yeah, I think they may be targeted right. Maybe realise he's not the quickest in the field. He's bowled his eight overs and uh, another good single. Oh, he, 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 he's your man for divots, isn't he, on Steve Wright? Yeah, he's gone back one. Here's a straight to the field. There's a chance for a run. That was a shite. The stumps. He was just back there in the end was Holland, but uh, yeah. sharpish this time, I think, from Brewster. Yeah. Quick single taken there, Rupert Salmon, who's the the captain for this competition. He's not the club captain, though. As Carty into Salmon, and he's played it back past the fielder. He's got a hand on it, and it rolls down to mid on, and that will be the 150. So we were saying at the start, James, how sort of it was a steady start from Dumbleton. They needed to up the run rate, and they really have done now. And, and like I say, there's still eight overs remaining, and they could easily get another 50 push up towards 200. Well, I think I think the 200 would be a minimum target, I would imagine, in their minds. It's 220 maybe now. Potentially, Salmon just uh, Holland, sorry, dabs that one down past the gully region in another single. I think Carmel would fancy their chances facing uh, chasing 200. Yeah, just milking the singles here as well, which is always good. Certainly from a batting point of view. Now the field is out. Carty a bit quicker that one in. It's a good shot down to Ben Johns and well fielded by Ben Johns. A tumbling stop there by the man in the floppy green Calmore hat. And it's uh, another single to the total. Ended the over 152 for three. A slight tightness to um, Rupert Salmon's running between the wickets, I've noticed, which seems to have developed during his innings. I hope he's, uh, mm. hope he's all right. He's not... Well, I suppose he's keen not to show us any discomfort. But uh, just watch his uh, acceleration between the wickets. Mm. Maybe a bit of tension in those legs, James, as well, isn't it? There's a lot riding on it as captain. I sometimes feel quite tense up here in the, in the commentary <laughs> yeah, seat. Yeah, oh, know, I, I, You I, suddenly yeah. realise where you are and what we're doing. Mm. And, and, you know, the, the history and the aura of this ground is all around us. Even with a crowd of perhaps a thousand, thousand plus, uh, is, 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 there are other shades that fill the ground. She does sound like Theresa May this announcer. I, I thought that on a number of <laughs> occasions. Maybe they were at the same school just outside Oxford. Uh, this is Sean Johnson. Johnson coming on, yeah. Now we'll see a little bit more pace on. Uh, Kevin Emery earlier in on commentary was bemoaning the lack of pace. Oh, I think he was bemoaning it. He's an ex-pace man of note himself. And anything under about 85 he, he regards as below his threshold yeah this is his final game Sean Johnson as well Mr Bump Ball as he's known is uh, that right yeah, Mr Bump Ball that must be a particular incident <laughs> that he, where he celebrated too early or probably does it all the time doesn't he uh, there we go. Here, he comes. here he is medium pacer from the pavilion end and a swing and a miss and they're going to get a bye maybe some wides as well it's 
see what the umpire is signalling. I think. Oh, he didn't single anything, so he must have got a bit of bat on it. Bat or glove, perhaps. There we go. Have yeah. A, have a look on the replay. Yeah, runs go down there. There he comes in wide from the crease, and oh, we got that was close to the off stump, wasn't he? he? Nearly chopped on. Must have got a bottom edge in the end. And uh, they get through for two. Salmon's on at 27. Hit. Here he is facing. Oh, Ooh. that's a high one. That'll be a no ball. Ooh, straight away. Signal yeah. there, and. Uh, he was trying to play the old um, sort of ramp shot down to third man, wasn't he? And uh, almost an uppercut that he that he yeah. essayed at that. Yeah. Uh, Johnson's perhaps um, a little bit of nerves and tension burning from the pavilion end. Well, trying to come yeah. to terms with the slope, maybe. Found it now. That's, yeah, that's a, a good shot straight to the field. That old salmon just rocks his head back in disappointment and bashes his bat against his pad there as he found the fielder at point. And uh, there's no run. Strikes me as a batsman who, who, who can play a lot of good looking strokes but uh, often hit the fielder. He's classically very correct. Here's Johnson again into Salmon. Salmon drives this one, gets this through the covers. He's going to get a single. Wants two. Uh, he's not going to get it. So just a single added on. 156 for three. I'm not sure that Johnson's one of those who's gone for the, 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 the Lord's haircut. Uh, approach he just looks a little bit tousled to me <laughs> <laughs> yeah clouds building up uh, behind the grandstand there's a, a dark tinge to them I'm not mm. sure if there's a threat of rain I'd, I'd hope not I think the forecast says there isn't it's just uh, we had this similar uh, right at the start didn't we about five overs in and then the sun burned through again um, Certainly not as dark as it was last year. You could see it coming in last year, couldn't you? I think there's no um, forecast of rain for the funeral. No, I think it's supposed to be dry again this week. Which is uh, a good thing. Johnson in. And a play and a miss through to the wicket keeper there. It was Holland playing and missing at that one. And there's no run. Could be that Johnson's getting a little bit of wobble. He, he, he started a little bit uh, all over the place. But he's, he's settled into his rhythm and... Sort of sharpish medium pace of his. Yeah, just don't want to look at that one. And uh, oh, yeah, he swung in again. He nearly hit the swings. He's really in. Yeah, he's got a good in swinger on him. Here he is again. It's short, and this is in the air. Crossed it up in the air. Yeah, just going to get there. Just over his head was a slight fumble as well. But in the end, they only get one. And it's 157 for three, end of the over. Just went over fielder Steve Wright's head, and there's, uh, we got sort of skid marks on the 30-yard circle there, where he flung himself. Good piece of fielding in the end. Committed. It's Live Sports FM in conjunction with MV Play, bringing you the live audio and live stream and the video stream in the Village Cup final here between Carmel Sports and Dumbleton. Carmel Sports, the defending champions. They only came into the competition for the first time last year and they're looking to defend their title which means they're currently unbeaten in this competition Dumbleton were asked to bat by Calmore after they won the toss they're currently 157 for three all right right seven saying that you can uh, you can you can send a tweet you can at any given moment you can at live sports fm and we're also on facebook send us a message maybe you're a fan of one of these clubs and you can't make it to lords today or you're just in neutral listening and if you are just send us a message we'll read it out for you there was an avalanche of tweets yesterday during the uh, club championship final coming in from all over the country. It's car to, con to continue and it's Holland who just flicks it away down to deep mid-off. They're going to take on a second. Oh, there oh, could be a run out here. Risky. It was a bit of a mix wrong up end. as he threw at the wrong end in the end, yeah. yeah. There was the de hesitation between the two. Mm. And... Uh, Skipper's call, I guess. Yeah, did have gone keepers end, he'd have been in trouble, I think. I think so. Carty, just again, he's almost by the umpire as he starts his run. Two paces in, bowls, tosses that one up. He's played back to Carty, and there's no run. He's a thinking bowler, um, the impression that Carty gives. It's a very, very deliberate setup. Every single gesture of hand and foot at the beginning is identical, ball to ball. That's cut down to the sweeper down here just in front of us Ben Johnson has another single 160 for three he's uh, 
where sunny's whatever the weather it says and that's proven today Absolutely. that's a big shot that's out towards the boundary that is four good shot there over extra cover he really uh, slapped that one away in the air but away for four and Salmon moves on to 32, 164 for three. Seemed to vary his pace a little bit, take some pace off, and Salmon read it perfectly. Just uh, lent into it beautifully. Carty again just walks up to the umpire and sort of just composes himself and then bowls. And again, that's slapped past the fielder. And that's four more. So Salmon, the captain, is getting into his stride now. 36, now a 45. Again, that was a bit of a, a half volley, that one, I think. And... Uh, Salmon gave it a treatment. Well, he must be eyeing up the certainly the, the 220 plus mark. I think the sweepstake uh, keeps bouncing around, but uh, it wasn't a half volley, but he just tossed it up and he, he just gave himself room. Salmon will have an eye to what he thinks he can defend. Oh, it's a good shot, beating the fielder again. And there's a sweeper down there. They put a man in there this time down at deep mid off and it's a single and Carty was furious with it he's just taking the cap of his umpire he's churning away to himself he's kind of stamping his feet as he walks off he's even taking his sunglasses off that's how angry he is uh, and it's Gosh. 169 for three dramatic gesture <laughs> from Liam Carty those, those, those last three shots for Salmon were straight out of the MCC coaching manual weren't they mm. uh, off drives just punched down the ground with uh, real ease and, and elegance Kevin on commentary earlier says he holds his bat lightly, which is always a sign of a touch player. Yeah, the wagon wheel was uh, it's kind of stayed steady at the minute. Here's Johnson continuing from the pavilion end. Oh, and it's, there's an appeal for LBW. It was, it's gone down the that's where slip would have been. That's that late in duck, I think, which, uh, which Johnson seems to get uh, nipped in towards the pads. Yeah, single, another single, uh, leg by, 170 for three. As I say, he's going to relocate to East Sussex, so I'm sure we'll see him playing in the Village Cup somewhere next season. Grinstead or somewhere like that. Johnson's yeah. in, and that's oh. a huge shot. That's going over the stand. That could well be into the road behind us as well. Wow. That is the biggest six of the innings. Yeah, you're probably picking up all the, the, <laughs> the effects, Mike. Uh, buzz and crackle there, and uh, there's, a, there's a huge buzz and crackle amongst the, the Dumbleton supporters. Wow. They're down the immediately in front of us, so you're getting the full benefit of their full throat there. Absolutely middled. Yeah. Oh, there's the excitement <laughs> in your voice there, Luke. You're, you're, you're the big stroke man, aren't you? Well, the thing is, he didn't even... I'm just looking now. He's just guided this one away again down towards third man. He's going to get another two. There's a miss field. They want three. Oh, three. They're going to come for three oh, as well. Great aggressive, running. yes. Nine off the last two. But just going back to that shot previously, there was no foot movement really, just kind of just stood there and, and whacked it away, but really good batting. It's, that's a 50 partnership as well, 52 off 50 balls. Yeah, last, uh, last five or six balls, the, these two have really raised the temperature, both uh, out in the middle and amongst the crowd and the supporters, and indeed here in the, in the live sports oh, commentary that's box. That's four more, three of the covers, the extra cover, great shot, just beats the despairing dive of the field. The Johnson's getting through, he's over really quick, but he's being slapped around the park as well. And it's now 183 for three. Batsmen high five each other on the way through, so there's a real energy and excitement now about uh, the Stumbleton innings. Uh, I think they realise they've got wickets in hand, and mm. uh, bats can be itching for their moment uh, in the Lord's sunshine. Yeah, still five overs to go after this one. Here is Johnson again into Salmon doesn't quite get hold of this one he's just going to get a single this time they've got a look they wanted two this time they're being a bit ambitious and they just sent back only a single the marvelous moment there where holland had to do a sort of hop almost a little arabesque to get up over the ball with the salmon had punched down the ground the, these two are, are batting with real intent now johnson now into holland he's trying to get in on the act doesn't get hold of that one it's well, Phil De Dorn's a shy to stump, and that was really close there. And yeah, well, that would have been a tight one. I think he was just home. Direct, uh, direct hit, as always, would have caused a, a real flurry there. Didn't seem to be running his bat in either, which uh, I think uh, Father Nick Holland might have a word or two to say there. End of a fantastic over there for Dumbleton. 185 for three. James is going to leave us, and Ing is going to come. Kevin. 
as always, you're in great hands. Yeah, it's going to be a fascinating last five overs. And Kevin's put joining us now, and they've really upped it, haven't they, in the last couple of overs? I mean, look at the, the wagon wheel. Yeah, definitely, Luke. Um, this is the business end now, and uh, Rupert Salmon in particular has played some exquisite drives, timed the cover of it, and uh, Miles is... Uh, yeah, Calmore, and uh, I think Ben Perry's coming back on this time from the nursery end. He is indeed, and he's, uh, they describe him as a magician with the ball. We'll need to weave some magic now for uh, Dumbleton. Needs to be more Dumbledore. <laughs> Doesn't yeah. sit for uh, to get him out, I think. But uh, yeah, Calmore need a wicket here. Yeah, I think from looking at him so far, he varies his pace. He's, he's not orthodox; just sort of flicks it out the front rather than a big body spin, and um, almost unusually gets a little drift away more than spinning and this time he'll have the nursery slope in his favour yeah that one was just uh, flicked away into the offside it was one more added to the total to Holland, he was on to 28 186 for 3 there are some darkish clouds like I said they are quite high though, I don't think there's a threat of rain that's uh, pulled away almost tennis shot style down to mid on again they want 2, only going to get the 1 though yeah, certainly um, Calmer have uh, been good in the field. They've attacked the ball and uh, got the throws in early, but uh, Dumbledore trying to put them under pressure as Perry comes in again. Yeah, here is Perry into Holland. And that's dabbed away. Crowd like that one. It's going to get two at least. It's uh, old Steve Wright trotting after it again. He's done a lot of work in the field. He probably thinks my day's done here and he's having to run about. He didn't look too happy having to chase after that. And there's... Uh, yeah, that a was Steve. More added to the total. May well have been a buy, actually. No, it was a little, a little uh, sort of ramp flick shot mm. by uh, Miles Holland and Steve Wright running no G there. Umpire was just uh, putting his hand up for some reason. But at 190 for three, Perry in again. Down the wicket, that's a good shot. And there's a fielder <laughs> down there, sweeper, yeah. Yeah, they've got a good field set, um, Ben Perry. I think, again, you know, people underestimate that when bowling isn't just about bowling at the end, it's about having a field set as you where you want them and the right field is in the right place and they've certainly got people running to specific slots as he comes in the bowl this time to Miles Holland. Yeah, here is Perry again and shorter delivery and uh, again off the bat foot down to that long off and there's a another single, there's one ball left in his over, two balls, yeah one ball left in his over, mm -hmm. nice. one nine two for three. Well, I said about, fa about 10 overs ago, they'll be happy to get to 200. I mean, they'll be looking maybe for 230, maybe more, as that's straight to the fielder. And there's no run any of the over 192 for three. Yeah, we've got, you know, four overs to go. So 24 balls, less any extras. Two batters who are set in Rupert Salmon and Miles Holland. Um, so you're right there, Luke. Yeah, I think, you know, 230 is uh, probably the target they're looking at. If they could get it past... Um, Bexley's 241 they'd be delighted but uh, they're going to persist still with Johnson who, who comes on the bowl at the uh, pavilion end from his field placing at uh, long off so he's got a bit of work to do but keeps his limbs lubricated and he's coming on now the field's fairly well spread now we've got a deep mm. cover point third man Fine leg. He's, let, he's right arm over as a bowler Kevin how do you respond to like a big over like that well, here's Johnson with his next First ball, the next over. And they've again whacked him down there. There's a fielder down there, though. And uh, he slips as he throws it in, and it's over the stumps. So two runs off that first ball. Yeah, when, he's, when you've had a big over, if you like that, how do you respond? I think you need to be, you know, be clear in your mind what's your plan, what you're planning to do. And I think this time is about bowl straight. You don't want to bowl slot balls, but straight. You might vary your pace, but you don't want to give any width. Johnson in again. And that's hit away, oh, and it's beaten shot. the fielder. That's a great shot. Well... They're liking the look of uh, Miles Holland. Sean John yeah, this, it's Miles Holland that time, but they're liking the uh, the look of Sean Johnson. It's almost uh, and it's for coming. Yeah, and it's a good combination. You've got Rupert, who's perhaps a bit more offside player than Miles, and Miles has smoked some balls through to the leg side boundary. And his dad, Nick Holland, who played for both clubs, would be really proud. Miles is doing him his dad justice. His Johnson in again, and he's not got hold of that one. Fielders just underneath short, it just, just dropped short in the end. Look with Dumbleton. And that was, yeah, he just towed that. Sean Johnson, good. Just changed his pace slightly slower, towed it in the air, and maybe that's the reason why James Manning's not 
bowl because he was a little uh, slow to react and get there. Just maybe he's just got a slight niggle. Who knows? Here's Johnson again. Up to the wicket, bowls and a play and a miss through to the wicket keeper. And uh, yeah, Johnson, who has got a slightly angled run up, comes in and he just has a little bit of induck in the air and it tends to just carry on off the seam. That one's just gone through the, uh, the expansive drive of Rupert Salmon and nicely uh, taken by Young Bailey. Here he comes again, Johnson. Yeah, past the umpire, bowls. It's a quicker delivery, but he's drilled that way and it's beaten a cover fielder again. Four more. Mm. And Salmon moves on to 48 and these two are well set now. Yeah, that is the uh, epitome of timing. Magnificent extra cover drive from Rupert Salmon. The fielders didn't move, just the uh, square cover field out to go and retrieve it from the boundary and it went right to the edge of the old boundary. Salmon has moved on to 48, playing a captain's innings of 55 balls. Dumbleton, 203 for three. Yeah, 203 up. That's what you could hear the applause for, and that's outside our stump wide, given. 204 for four. So, sorry, 204 for three. Yeah, and Johnson trying something different there, trying to bowl it out wider off stump, which is, as I said, no width really at this time of the day. You need to be bowling straight, uh, have your field accordingly, and he's just a bit frustrated, Johnson, as in he comes again, bowling to Salmon. Yeah. Salmon drives that away again, what great shot. shot, that's going down towards the pavilion. I couldn't even see where the ball had gone to hit it that well, but the field has come across yeah, just, and cut that off. Just checked a bit in the boundary and a good fielding in the end there by um, Avell, I think. Uh, but Salmon moves on to 50, 50 yeah. off uh, 56 balls, captain's innings, mm. appreciated by all the team, the Dumbleton boys on the balcony, you know, supporting their skipper, Miles Holland, congratulating the old obligatory fist pump and Dumbleton. Uh, now you'd say slightly in the ascendancy, obviously, can we get to bat? And they've got the gun, Ben Johns. Um, but, you know, from a shaky, uh, slow start, 206 for three with uh, three overs to go, 18 balls. Can they get 240? Highest partnership of the innings as well, 79 between these two. And I was just looking up actually last year and, and Alvin Lee made 150 off 36 overs. So even if they'd have had the full quota, they'd have been well below this score that Dumbleton are doing. So this will be a real challenge for Calm. Well, that's a full toss and it's been flicked away. They're going to get at least two. They're going to look to run hard and get three. I don't think he's got a great arm, oh, Brewster. He's, yeah. He's, uh, coming in and they've taken on Brewster. Yeah, great running again. And Holland adds three to his total and the Dumbleton crowd are loving it. Yeah, the Dumbleton crowd are up now. They're up downstairs, maybe... Uh, Helped by a few beverages, <laughs> yeah. um, but there's a bit more noise beneath us. Uh, good to see. Uh, you know, I know that the Calmore fans will still be supporting their side. This is a long way to go in this match. In comes the Ooh. bowler again, and it's whips away Perry. Oh, the oh, field has slipped well. It works out well for him. What a brilliant end. piece of fielding. He's <laughs> come in and he's gone skating style, both feet, and he's caught it between his legs. He's flipped it from one dare I say, T to T, and then thrown it in on the floor. Now, you could not do that again if you tried. He's actually probably saved another run doing that. Here is Perry in, bowls, and that's oh, that away. A that's going to be four, is it? The fielder comes around with four Rupert more. Rupert Salmon has gone back, picked the length early. It's a slightly slower ball, Ben Perry, and he has pulled it over mid-wicket. One bounce for um, straightish mid-wicket, and he moves on to 56, and Dumbleton are... On the charge, Luke. Yeah, I was just yeah. You, well, you summed it up perfectly. Rupert Salmon certainly on the charge, isn't he? Yeah, no. This is this has been, as you said, the biggest partnership and fine. You know, the platform set by Tommy Borman, um, Dan Holland stuck in early, uh, and now they're pushing on. It's a good shot. I had to stretch for that one, Salmon, but gets it down in front of us in a single. Yeah, he leapt out of his crease there, Rupert Salmon, and. Uh, cut it away into the deeper waters of the extra cover boundary. Here's Perry again, <laughs> sleeveless sweater on, aborted run. I think there's somebody just moving out. They're just adjusting the field, so he has to go back to his mark. He's bringing short extra or extra cover up into mm. the circle. Mark Lavelle's dropping back, and they put a posted now deep mid-wicket. Perry in to Holland. He drives that, and that is straight out. to the fielder. Well, he tossed it up a little bit, and well, the fielder you just mentioned it he brought in, he's hit it straight to him, hasn't he? And Miles Holland is out for 39, and the end of a really good partnership. And like I say, plenty of wickets 
in the shed. They'll be, he'll be disappointed to get out, but he's contributed so well, hasn't he? Yeah, almost trying to caress that, wasn't he, Miles? He, good, good captaincy, Miles Lavelle brought the fielder, changed it, and he tried to go inside out. Hit it nicely, but caught on the 30-yard uh, circle by extra cover. Miles yeah. Holland, who uh, he's not the quickest walker off when he gets out, but he, he's put a bit of a spurt on this for Miles, and he's getting uh, applause from the members' end. Uh, Miles raises his back. Another one with a nice new haircut. And so coming to the crease, and it's always nice on these occasions that a lot of the team get to bat. I know that sounds a bit sort of mm. cliched, but um, in comes the Saturday captain, Adam Stewart, who does a sterling job. He does the ground at Dumbleton as well and has produced um, some cracking wickets over the last few seasons. It is a pleasure to uh, play and bat on that wicket at Dumbleton. He's ja coming in. James Manning took the catch. A uh, good simple catch in the end under pressure and uh, yeah here's Adam Stewart he won't have time to much time to play himself in no no he, and he, again Adam is a little shorter than Rupert likes to um, uh, scamper knock it about likes the pace on but um, interesting so uh, that was the end of the over as well so he won't be on strike it'll be Salmon still on strike who as we said is well in I think it's yeah I think there's I don't think he had a wide one ball to go one ball to go um this over Perry so so again it's sort of you know almost he's, I wouldn't say he's got a free hit but you know you want Rupert Salmon on strike there um, field, field staying the same um, and Perry is going to finish well, off Perry has sorry he's got one left the scoreboard was, uh, it, it made it look like he still uh, it was the end of the over here it is then and a oh, hello. Little, little gentle sweep away by Stewart off the mark quickly which he's yeah, I'm sure he'll be happy about yeah, no, yeah, but I mean, it's, yeah, it's about runs. It was sort of a, sort of what you might call a collapse suite. Sweet. Yeah, he's a stocky little character, Adam. He's a fine groundsman. He's got on the groundsman and he's doing an excellent job at Dumbleton. Um, skippers aside very well on a Saturday. So, you know, you've got two good heads at the crease. Um, unfortunate Miles Holland out, but good, good bit of field changing, both from Ben Perry and Mark Lavelle brought one up and it went straight to him so that may be the difference Luke of maybe another 10 at the end yeah Captain Mark Lavelle's bringing himself back on he's at the pavilion end he's got one for 35 off his six overs so far no maidens yeah and certainly it was noticeable early uh, that he seemed to bowl better from this uh, pavilion end than he his rhythm was better um, lines than the uh, nursery so he's brought himself back he's just adjusting the field he's thinking well, I better send uh, long off back off goes Ben Johns be thinking about his batting here he comes left arm round into Stewart who just again just dabs it down and just gets a single I think it, that's his role now just come and anchor it and while Salmon's still in just say you go out and blast it around skipper yeah yeah, spot on, Luke. You're spot on there. Just rotate the strike. It's in your arc, hit it, but let's try and get Rupert Salmon back on strike, who's timing it nicely. There's Salmon on strike. Oh, and it's a good Yorker full delivery. Salmon just jabs, jabs it down and, and runs it through for a single. Or is it a bye? Yeah, it's a bye. Oh, it's a yeah. bye given. Yeah, he didn't get any bat on it then. No, it was. He tried to, just, just didn't get, but. York, the keeper as well there, is a different, bit quicker pace, and all the Calmwell slow bowlers have changed their pace nicely. Another single, though, to the total. Here's Stewart. Sweeps that one away. Doesn't get hold of it, but it'll be it's one. one. Yeah, possibly two, but it's just a one in the end. Just down to backward square leg. Good bit of fielding there by uh, Johnson, who's been involved in the game, uh, both with the ball, but certainly in the field, has been everywhere. Um, so Lavelle looking to... Uh, Finish off nice in this over. Three balls to go. Yeah, here he goes into Salmon, his fellow skipper. Been looking for two. And yeah, it's oh, he's going. Oh, this he's could be top. No, it's, it's a bad a throw. throw. It's a terrible throw. Bad he's throw. Uh, he's, he's, he's run. He, he went down to um, the extra deep extra cover boundary and he threw yeah, it in. It was Perry. almost. It was between the wickets, wasn't it? Yeah, Perry, and he had it. And you thought, well, a good throw is going to put Salmon under pressure, but it, he just got his radar slightly wrong and it went in the middle of the wicket. Lavelle in again, bowls. Salmon, big shot. That is going to be down here in front of us. It's gone the journey. And again. Big uh, shot again from the skipper. And I think you'd agree, Luke, fairly effortless. Some of Miles's Holland shots were brutal uh, strength but just almost that he, he, he towed that but it just sailed over the boundary 
228 for four. Two yeah. more to go of the uh, 39th over. Yeah, have that, Mark Laval said, uh, Rupert Salmon. Here he is again, quick at his time, and Salmon tries to thrash it away, gets something on it, gets a single. There was some anger in that delivery from Lavelle. He really threw that down, didn't he? He did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he was uh, not happy with the ball, the ball before going for six, but um, mm. that will finish his spell. Seven overs, one for 46, not bowled out. Um, so one over to go, and um, I think Dumbleton, at, uh, if you'd have said after 10 overs, 230 plus, they would have snapped your hand off. Um, and certainly from the early part of the innings, when Metcalf bowled, there were a few, and even Steve Wright just nipped off the straight, off the seam, and Dumbleton have got a few handy seamers, so it'll be interesting to see if any of that little dew comes up later on. But to finish the innings for Calmore is their stalwart, two bowls at the left, Ben Perry. Does various pace, but he has gone for a few in the last few overs. He's now seven overs, two for 53. Yeah, Matt Lavelle is, is the joint top wicket taker in the competition. One more wicket would have seen him go clear, but he, he hasn't got that today. And here is Perry then to bowl the last over in this Dumbleton innings and tries to ramp it into oh, the for oh, some of the keepers down in the I end. Think I think he's ramped it into, into the keepers. Yeah, mid-drift. We'll yeah, call it. yeah. If, if the old, it used to be called <laughs> the lightsome area, the little lightsome pink. <laughs> I hope, you know, now they're, they're a little more sturdy than those uh, yeah. protectors. But, yeah, he just caught him, I think, there in up, the yeah. groin area with the little ramp. Up he gets. He's, uh, yeah, just walking gingerly. I gingerly. think he's just seen um, stars, isn't he? He's, uh, on his, well, as a keeper, he's on his haunches anyway, so he doesn't have far to move. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yeah he managed to scamper through for a single. Here's Perry. There's a lot of laughter around, you might expect. Sam um, cuts that away for a yeah. single. Yeah, Stuart there, yeah, when... Uh, Bailey went down, didn't he? The square layer jumper went. He did signal the one short, but it wasn't the running between the wickets. Um, <laughs> Perry in. Sorry about Salmon that leaves that alone outside of stump. Wide, wide signal. Yeah, he does just drift it, as I say, drifts it. And again, he's bowled, I would have said, much better when he bowled from the pavilion end. Now, with that slope, it's just oh, yeah, drifting you can see away. That. Drifted away outside the blue lines, and Salmon hits it's that up. out. They're looking for two. Yeah. Stewart scampering. Johnson there, and it's a hard throw in, but he's. He's home, that's two to Dumbleton, Rupert Salmon, just labouring slightly. Um, mm. 68 now off 64. Yeah, pulled that away through mid on and Salmon's back on strike. And it's Perry and again to Salmon. And he's Ooh, hit he's that hit away, that Perry's hard. got something I think something that may have been that. a, yeah, I think that was a court and bowl chat. Very difficult one, very difficult one. I, I think he just got a hand on that, uh, Ben Perry. Oh yeah, he did. It was a, yeah, it was a difficult chance, but it just went through the fingers. But it, it yeah, but he saved he saved four because he deflected it out to the wider long off. And now here we go, bowling to Stewart. Stewart just takes a step back. He just held up a little bit that one. Perry Stewart just had to take a step back and just clips it out into the offside for one, two thirty seven for four, two balls to go in this innings. Perry comes in again, bowls. Oh, I said Salmon he was going to pull He's that. He's gone for a big one out to us. Pull that, the mid wicket, and it is nice gone. No, no, what a good bit of fielding that was on the boundary. Yeah. Pushed it back into his colleague, looked like a bit. Bounced up nicely. I just thought to myself, this ball short, pull it mid wicket. Would have gone a little straighter, would have got four, but two more to Salmon. Gets a 241, which was the same score yesterday that, um, no, uh, Bexley got in there first inning. So can they go? Or was it? Last ball. In Salmon Hits drives that away. Back looking for two. Ball. Stewart's got to run. Johnson's attacking. He's coming in. They're looking for two. It's a hard throw in over the top, but he oh, he's oh, missed he the stumps. Missed, yeah, he took a while to take the stumps off there, and uh, in the end, they got three for two. So two forty-one for four. Dumbleton end up on in the end, and we were saying after ten overs, it was quite slow going. We we're worried for him, but they really went through the gears and sort the last fifteen overs, didn't they? They did, Luke. Yeah, I mean, I think early on. Uh, Keeper stood up to both opening batters who like pace on. Um, it looked like you know 160 was going to be a, a score Dumbledon might aim for, but they come good in the middle overs. And Rupert Salmon has played a, a wonderful captain's innings there, ably supported by um, Miles Holland initially, and then Adam Stewart who timed it nicely came in at the end, cutting it away and scampering his singles. So 241, exactly the same score yesterday as uh, Bexley. So who'd have thought that? Two games and two scores. Exactly the same, 241, slightly less wickets lost by Dumbleton. But I think um, the old adage, you've got runs on the board, yeah. uh, I think they'd be fairly happy with that, Dumbleton. But we all know, if you look at his record throughout this competition, Ben Johns is yeah. a run machine. 
Well, just looking through the scorecard, Dan Holland caught by... Oh, he's gone off the screen anyway. Um, but um, 29 for Dan. And 29 then his, for his Dan, brother, yeah. His younger brother beats him, got 39. It'll be a little nice little conversation. Yeah, absolutely. And the ground staff are just coming on now. And Do you think Cal Moore will be disappointed having won the toss, put them in, that they've, they've conceded 241 runs? I think, it, um, you know, after the 10, 15, they were, they were 85 at 20, Luke. So... 85 at 20, and then for it, come to get 240, uh, double to 241. Yeah, I think they'd be marginally disappointed. They didn't perhaps um, execute as as well as they may have done. Ben Perry, who's their go-to death bowl, has gone for 65 in eight. So, um, but often you can uh, change bowlers, different ends, and they just don't quite have the same rhythm. Um, you know, difficult to get it, slight slope at your Lords as we see the ground staff come and brushing away at uh, the end, you don't normally get this at the, your village on a Sunday <laughs> uh, the camera, it's a heavy roller going on um, yeah, I think camera will be slightly disappointed, but you know th you know, there's now the second half of the game, they've got a good batting lineup. They they've had a good run in this competition, not really been tested so I think they're going to back themselves but Dumbleton have got as we'll see the second half, a little bit more pace in their attack. So it'll be interesting to see if this wicket seems a bit for those uh, quicker bowlers. I have got the scorecard now. So Dan, Dan Holland caught by Bailey, bowled Perry for 29. Ross Martin bowled by Steve Wright for 10. Tom Borman, brilliant innings from him. He really got the accelerator on for Dumbleton. He was caught by Sean Johnson off the bowling of Mark Lavelle for 71. Uh, Rupert Salmon, he was not out, 73 off 67, 6 fours, 1 6. Miles Holland caught by James Manning off the bowling of Ben Perry for 39 off 34. Adam Stewart, nice little cameo at the end, 5 off 5. The bowling figures Steve Wright, 8 overs, 1 maiden, 1 for 31. Josh Metcalf, 6 overs, no maidens, none for 16. Mark Lavelle, 7 overs, no maidens, 1 for 46. Ben Perry, 8 overs, no maidens, 2 for 65. Liam Carty, 8 overs, no maidens, none for 42. Sean Johnson, 3 overs, no maidens, none for 34. And there was 7 extras in the end. And we are having an innings break of play. And uh, I'm going to bring in... Keith Higgins very shortly. My thanks to uh, Kevin as well for uh, joining me joining me on that stint there as we uh, saw a really exciting end to the Dumbleton innings. Uh, Calmore, as we said, defending champions last year. They um, they chased it down. They do like to chase, but it'd be interesting to see if they can chase down 242 to win. And uh, we will have that for you very shortly. But uh, here is Keith back with us. Thanks very much indeed, Luke. Great commentary from everybody there. And uh, what a coincidence. Are we taking the headphones off? So you left me all by myself. That's all right. Don't worry. Just very quickly, just to let, let uh, you know. Uh, what a coincidence, Luke. I mean, exactly the same score that Bexley got at uh, Bexley got in their first innings yesterday, 241. I mean, deja vu. Could we have Keith? Could we have deja vu? Anyway, you go and get some lunch because yeah. I know that uh, you. That's where I was heading off. I was, yeah. And, uh, well, <laughs> well, actually, we're going to hear from you because we're going to play an interview pre-recorded. So, uh, but you go and have some lunch and uh, just let uh, listeners know that you're listening to uh, Live Sports FM or indeed. If you're watching on uh, MV Play or the uh, MCC YouTube stream, then uh, we're providing the commentary for that as well. And uh, we're live Sports FM. It's the innings break. And we just said, Dumbleton, 241 for four in their 40 overs. And I think that is a very challenging score for Calmore Sports. But we know that uh, they like a challenge. We know they love batting second. And uh, therefore, I think we're going to be in for a very entertaining second innings. But during the break, we've got a couple of things that uh, we want to do with you. The second one will be in about, uh, hopefully about 10 minutes' time. I'm going to be joined in the commentary box here by Hugh Turberville, who's the editor of The uh, Cricketer. And uh, we'll be talking to him. The uh, Cricketer magazine, who does a lot of great work in far as the Village Cup is concerned. And uh, they, um, well, we'll find out a bit more from Hugh about... Uh, what uh, work they do as far as the cricketer is concerned and uh, be a very entertaining person to talk to and I'm really looking forward to chatting to him. He's just a little bit busy at the moment because uh, there is a Hall of Fame for the Village Cup and they do induct people into it. So we will ask about this, but let's give a shout out for the two new inductees that are happening today. Uh, Paul Hemming from Shipton under Witchwood and Nigel Thurkle from Linton Park. 
So uh, they have been inducted into the Village Cup Hall of Fame and uh, he will be taking part in that. So that will be happening very, very shortly. So just while waiting for you, as I said, uh, our Luke's been a busy boy. If you were listening to Live Sports FM uh, last week, you'll know he was up at uh, Stanley Park in uh, Blackpool. He was commentating on the Roses' second eleven game between Lancashire and Yorkshire. And while he was there, he got to chat to R.P. Singh. And the reason being that uh, R.P. Singh's son, Harry, is the captain of uh, Lancashire Twos. Uh, if you're wondering who R.P. Singh is, well, he's a former Indian test bowler and has taken five wickets here at Lords. He's on the uh, Lords, Lords uh, board, as it were, for taking five wickets. He took five for 59 in the test area in 2007. If you're wondering what that test was, that was the quite well-known one where no one thought the game was going to be washed out because of a torrential rain. But Lords have got this wonderful drainage system and the game restarted and in fact India had to hang on for the last five overs to force the draw. But as I said, he took a farm for 59 RP Singh in that game. And uh, our look Edwards was at, as I said, at uh, Stanley Park in Blackpool. And uh, while he was commentating on the game, which was a win for Yorkshire by 160 runs, he had a chat to RP Singh and he caught up with him. And uh, well, the obvious first question that Luke wanted to ask him was, how did he feel about seeing his son being captain of Lancashire? Well, hope uh, he seemed to be doing okay and learning his ropes, yeah. as you know. So it's a good, good experience for him. Been stood at cover pointing, hasn't he? <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, he's, he's a quiet one generally, but yeah. uh, uh, he's quite astute when he comes to thinking about the game. So given an opportunity like this, I think I'm sure he'll learn from it. And uh, John was saying that I was quite surprised, actually, because you were a fastballer, he's a spinner. It's not in the genes, then, is it? Well... Mm. Uh, John probably will tell you when he was younger, he used to bowl fast. Yeah. And then John and I had word, you know, because he generally wanted to be a batsman mainly, you know, and he's an opening batsman. So I thought fast bowling and opening batting probably doesn't go together oh. in terms of physical demands, you know. So as a result, we made a conscious decision that he probably would focus on batting and bowl spin a bit, which he does, you know, quite well. And uh, and I probably in the my whole clan are bold enough as a fast bowler, and <laughs> I've got the scars to show it. <laughs> John was telling us a story yesterday, and hopefully you'll clarify this or tell us a bit more about you were called up, weren't you, to to for a test series in Pakistan for India? An unfortunate war broke out. You never able to make your debut, were you? Mm. Well, no, no, I played, uh, before that, I played oh. for Austra against Australia. Okay. I played in one day and was in test squad. And then uh, uh, following that, um, Pakistan team was supposed to be coming here and uh, and then there was a riots in Mumbai. Yeah. Uh, used to be known as Bombay at the time. Yeah. In 1992 and three, and then tour was cancelled and things like that happens in life, doesn't it? <laughs> you know? well, yeah. You've got to be lucky sometimes, yeah. Bit of a sliding doors moment, mm. I suppose, and then mm. you, you came and played your cricket over here and settled here. Yeah, so I started coming over as a lot of people did uh, in in the summer months in those days, mm. uh, because in those days, as you know, the only cricket was played was in, in England. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so everybody used to come here, you know, obviously play and experience because there was no cricket in India in those summer months. And we used to come, so I played, kept coming over and play against overseas, and uh, and eventually, you know, LCB Lancashire Cricket Board happened, and others, and opportunity was there for me to work there in cricket, which I took. And yeah. uh, as a result, I'm talking to you here after all these years. <laughs> yeah. So is that, is that are you still involved with that now then? I left uh, just uh, 2018 okay. after. Um, 20 years of uh, working in cricket in, in Lancashire and with ECB, etc. And then I just wanted to, you know, go and try to get a lot of things started happening in India. Mm. And I just wanted to see if, if I can go and set opportunities there, you know. So hence this left it. And of course, because my son Harry is playing. Mm. And as a result, uh, I'm supporting his cricket. So prior to that, now he's coming to an age where he can sort of take care of himself yeah. in more ways than that so as a result uh, opportunity seeking opportunities in India then which I did some work in India uh, 
doing some couple of fast bowling camps along with Courtney Walsh wow. and did some work in Canada in global T20 tournament and then obviously COVID happens. Yeah. Which shut the shop for people likes of us, you know. <laughs> no, that's it. That's fantastic. And mm. uh, lovely little name drop there, but Courtney Walsh seems like such a nice guy. Mm. Brilliant. Obviously, he's a legend of yeah. the game, and yeah. I had a fortunate fortune to, you know, uh, work with him. And uh, he was a young, talented fast bowler in India, uh, and we worked together, you know, for a couple of camps. And it was a great learning experience for me, listening to him. Obviously, you don't get better opportunities like that, you know. So, and obviously, you know, so we gelled together nicely, and it was a great opportunity. And But COVID happened, we haven't had one since. Yeah. <laughs> But so you've got obviously Harry playing here. Um, you said he can look after himself. Is it one of these you let him play and if he wants advice, he comes to you and asks you for advice? Well, I kind of work as a coach. His coach have been yeah. more, so we'll have a more of a coach training relationship yeah, okay. uh, than, than a dad relationship. So we work together and now we more discuss things, how it's going on, it's the process he has to follow and eventually he needs to find out how it's done and everything else, you know. So we do talk and discuss things and uh, and hopefully now he can take the mantle himself and lead himself in his career, you know. He's, uh, he's got to go out there and be really disciplined in his second innings now. It's, they're not look, looking like they're going to win the game, Lancashire, but they've certainly got a bat out for a draw now, haven't they? Absolutely. I think uh, they, 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 in the first inning, the way they kind of collapsed or against good quality bowling on a pitch, which was very, very helpful to the you know bowlers. I think uh, Lancashire obviously struggled in that and now it's a mountain to climb, but so if they can give a good account of themselves bat for a long time and hopefully if they can bat all day tomorrow it'll be in today and tomorrow they'll be perfect but uh, I think it's a very uphill battle and task ahead of them. Thanks very much. That was uh, RP Singh there talking to uh, Luke Edwards uh, during the uh, Rosie second eleven match that uh, we covered here on Live Sport FM up at uh, Blackpool last week. A comprehensive win for Yorkshire, but uh, RP Singh sounding in uh, good form. And uh, in case you're wondering what the link is, it's his son Harry who was captain of Lancashire Seconds. Just before I uh, have, uh, it's almost full like test match special here, you know, view from the box, view from the boundary, and I'll introduce my guest to you in just a moment. But uh, just to let you know you're tuned in to Live Sport FM in conjunction with MV Play. We're providing a live audio and video stream of the uh, Vonius Village Cup final between Calmore Sports and Dumbleton. First innings has just finished and Dumbleton reached what I think is a very challenging score of 241-44 in their 40 overs. Highlights of the innings was the uh, 60, uh, uh, sorry, was the 71 by uh, Tom Borman, 17 years old, off 69 balls, and a magnificent 73 not out by Rupert Salmon, off 67 balls. But we'll find out a bit more about uh, the game shortly because, uh, I said, I've got the real pleasure of talking to the editor of The Cricketer who's sitting next to me, Hugh Turberville. So, Hugh, thank you ever so much, first of all, for coming up and joining us here at Live Sports FM. Absolute pleasure. And, uh, first of all, what's your feeling on uh, what you've seen today? I think a really challenging score set by Dumbleton today. I think that's a really good score, isn't it, against the holders. The holders must have been very confident. And so, um, yeah, six and over. And they had quite a slow start, didn't they? Uh, they did. But Tommy yeah, Borman, 17 years old. I mean, God, that's I amazing, I could play like, well, if I could play like him, I wouldn't be talking to you now. The nervelessness <laughs> of youth, I guess. Yeah, he hasn't had enough years to worry about batting at Lords, perhaps. No, no. <laughs> I mean, funnily enough, I actually thought the first two or four balls he looked nervous. And I did say that he squirted his single, like I used to get off the mark. So right. he would squirt off anywhere off the bat yeah. and hope you find an edge and find a gap Absolutely. in the field. <laughs> but uh, we'll talk about our cricketing days later. But, uh, yeah, Hugh, thanks for joining us. I said you're the editor of The uh, Cricketer, so uh, basically a chance we'll give you a bit of a plug for your magazine. That's fantastic. So give it's us a, a bit of a chat about what The Cricketer's all about. Well, we had a new one out uh, th this, the end of last week and a uh, very striking cover from, with Moeen Ali on it. But, um, no, I mean, we've been going 101 years now and we're the biggest and best-selling cricket magazine in the world. Uh, we cover the game at all standards, all levels. We... Obviously love test cricket, um, international cricket, county cricket. Our, our readers love county cricket. But we've also got schools cricket, we've got club cricket, um, a dedicated women's section, women's cricket. So we, every, there's something for everyone in, inside the pages, yeah. 
every month. We come out every four weeks. Yeah. It's a good read, and uh, you know we'll talk about uh, you know how I know that in a moment. But um, you know, obviously we're here today though because the uh, cricketer particularly is very uh, supportive of the Avonius Village Cup. So tell us a bit more about that. I mean, a couple of questions. I mean, first of all, um, do you know how we got involved, or what's the strategy behind uh, the cricketer getting well, we, involved we, with the Village Cup? We initiated it. We we run ah, it. Yeah, right. yeah. So it's it's our baby. Although of course we're uh, hugely grateful to MCC for their help with it and also our, all our sponsors Vinayas and so forth um, but no Ben Brocklehurst the former Somerset captain saved the Cricketer magazine it was going to go um, liquid it's going to be liquidated or whatever by um, the American owners at the time and um, Ben Brocklehurst was made redundant and he said um, I'd like as my redundancy present to be given the rights to the Cricketer <laughs> uh, I wrote the history of it last year to coincide with our centenary and he, he took the magazine back to his uh, house um, and his wife Belinda, who's, who's marvellous, she's still with us. Um, she was very helpful in, in running it for a few years. Uh, and yeah, they rescued the Cricketer magazine. Uh, and, and it's had sort of. Um, am I going off tangent here? Are we still talking about the Village Cup or are we talking about the Cricketer? But um, no, but so anyway, yeah. Both, um, um, yeah, both are fine. yeah, so uh, ben, ben, but ben, ben thought it was a fan. I think I was reading earlier actually in the programme, but he was, it was suggested to him that there should be a village competition or something. And as and, and soon as. Um, he, he, he launched it in the pages of the cricketer, it absolutely took off. You know, I think they, I think I was reading they had 750 entries or, or 900 applicants and, and they whittled it down to 753 um, teams in that first year. So yeah, I might grab the program from the desk actually, cause it's got some, some numbers in it if you ask me for any more, but um, no, so, and it's been going, 1972 was the first year and it's been going on, uh, this is the 51st running of the competition, yeah. yeah. Although we're in its 50th year, yeah. I mean, in particular at the moment where obviously with the death of the Her Majesty, we've all been thinking a little bit about sort of what makes Britain, if you like. I mean, if somebody said to me, you know, what do you identify with Britain? I would say, well, actually, village cricket Absolutely. will be very much in the minds uh, or top of my list. And, Definitely. Uh, you know, um, but can I say, I'm sure there's a lot of people who are very grateful for your support for, uh, you know, village cricket. And yeah, uh, it's wonderful. Well, well the, done. The, Her Majesty, the Queen, used to um, apparently watch games at her, her, on her Windsor estate. I think she stopped the car and, uh, uh, and the Range Rover in it. Because a friend of mine used to play for the, always plays for the Fleet Street Strollers team. Mm. So, so uh, Her Majesty was a, a fan of I think there was cricket. a Royal, is there a Royal Household cricket team? I think there, there might be. might well be, yeah, I don't know, yeah. I've got no Prince idea. Philip obviously played. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah He was a bowler, sure. he was a scene bowler. Okay. And uh, I've got seen a picture of him bowling at Arundel. Yeah. And he used to host the county champions at Buckingham Palace every year. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Great stuff. I mean, going back to the cricketer this for a minute, uh, Hugh. So, I mean, when I read it, I always think you get some great people writing in there. I mean, no, not from the last one because I had to do this uh, the time before, but you had good contributors from uh, people like Vic Marks, Derek Pringle, uh, David Gower's quite a regular contributor, Nasser Hussain and Mike Selvey every month, mm. and a particular feature on Sam Northeast in the one before that came out today. Yeah. So, I'm just intrigued. I mean, uh, do they knock on your door and say, Hugh, can I please write an article for you? Do you have to go to them? How does it work? Um, go through them one by one. David Gower is now with us every every issue, uh, and every other issue we take somebody nice out to lunch. I'll talk uh, about yeah. that later. Okay, yeah, no, that right. line. So anyway, he's every month now. So uh, Mike Selby's been a columnist every month for the for a long time. He, um, I've been with the magazine seven and a half years, and uh, he he so he was there before that. Um, NASA is saying every month, yeah, the Ask NASA column. I ring him up and get put re uh, questions to him from mm -hmm. readers. Yeah. Uh, Sam Northeast, I just had the idea to interview him because he'd scored his uh, triple century, I think, wasn't it? Um, quadruple, wasn't quad it? 400. Was it quadruple in the end, was it? Yeah, he beat Hick, did he? Yes, he beat Hick, well, yeah, 410 not out. That's just my memory yeah. is a sieve, isn't it? But uh, no, it was a quadruple century, right. And uh, so just, I'm, I've got a very good um, uh, relationship with uh, Glamorgan and their press officer, David, I think his name is. So it's, um, he, I just rang him up and, uh, and uh, yeah, he, he put me in touch with Sam, who's walking around uh, Cardiff that morning. Did a nice phone interview with him. So, yeah, no, that was a sort of one-off one with him. But, um, yeah, we have a, a really good roster of regulars. Barney Rowney, The Guardian, and uh, Tanya Aldred. So, yeah, you no. Do. I mean, you mentioned what your target audience is and uh, said very much uh, people who are into sort of, so we say, the more traditional forms of cricket. And uh, certainly reading, I mean, in fact, the uh, new one has uh, had a look at uh, Andrew Strauss's blueprint. And mm. I think it's fair to say uh, not 
very well welcomed. But uh, I won't put you on the spot there. But just to say that I think you're very much in for the traditional forms of cricket and uh, that's your target audience. Well, our target audience is everybody in cricket. I, my, my personal target audience is everybody. But I suppose, yes, the people who read the magazine and fill in the surveys suggest to us that they are traditional fans of the game. But I wouldn't tell a columnist what to write. But it just so happens that George DeBell's, our chief correspondent's views, are that uh, Andrew Strauss's high performance review uh, wasn't that consultative. Um, about uh, with county people he hasn't really it doesn't appear to have spoken to many county members or uh, i know one or two county clubs he hasn't spoken to and um you know th so yeah it's fair to say that uh, um, him suggesting a reduction in the number of county championship rounds is not going to go down well with our readers no and it's interesting because i think he made the point that he's a man who sort of grew up through the to sort of you know to be a top test cricketer mm -hmm. through the county system at the time when it was you know reasonably strong and yet he seems to be uh, suggesting that it's not the way forward i think he's a pragmatist a bit i mean it, when he was um i think managing director of the england team he'd stopped people playing in the IPL didn't he and, and um, mm. it was suggested that he was you know that inevitability they were going to play anyway so I think he was a bit behind the eight ball with that and I think he's I think he's just sort of reading the ruins now and, and just thinks that um, ruins rather and it just thinks that um, you know the 2020 leagues are the, are the way ahead people are going to play in them because they want the money and it's almost like in a way it's just futile to sort of try and stop them playing in them and I know I do try and see his point of view, and I, I'm, you know, I, I admire him as a man. I mean, he he was he, 2010 11 Ashes was an amazing achievement, uh, and the 2019 World Cup as an administrator, you know, the 2015 World Cup men's World Cup have been appalling, and so to, for him to sort of put all the building blocks in place to win the World Cup four years later, so I want to have faith in him, but um, I just think it's being interpreted that his high performance review is a little bit sort of high handed really and I think and of course county members and our readers don't want a reduction into county championship mm. rounds I don't want them I, I, I try and go to a game every round and I, I absolutely love it and I just I'd be very sad if it went down to 10 rounds you know mm. No, I mean, I can. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a chance to tell people how they can get the magazine. There is a way you can subscribe to it. And uh, I have to say, uh, it's a good read. I, I think no matter where you sit in terms of the way in which cricket is evolving, I do think that uh, you get a pretty balanced view. But uh, Yeah, we've got the, this issue this about private ownership in cricket yeah. is the theme. And we've got people in there who are arguing that it, private money is a good thing. And we've got people in there arguing private money is a bad thing. But you have these, I won't say light-hearted, but uh, you do, as you hinted at earlier, have some articles uh, where uh, it seems like you're taking people out to lunch. And uh, you've got, I mean, you mentioned David Gower. I think you've had lunch with Graham Gooch, uh, Heather Knight, and in the comments, uh, you've got uh, Gower and uh, Alan Lamb. Yeah, it's Gower's feature, so it's David Gower has lunch with. I just tag <laughs> along and... Uh... <laughs> well, can I put it to you this way, mm -hmm. Hugh? As a cricket fan, I think you've got the greatest job in the world, yeah, if the that's what it lovely, entails. Yeah. I mean, I, so... Uh, yeah, we've got some good ones coming up, and we've got some, had some suggestions. But um, no, Alan Lamb was brilliant, and we D David booked this uh, nice French restaurant in Marylebone. <laughs> so uh, when I saw the bill, I had kittens, to be honest. But um, no, it's all it's all good fun. And Heather Knight was nice, really really sweet, and and and, and really friendly. And uh, Graham Gooch was in Darlington because Gar and Gooch were doing a, a yeah. evening up there. So yeah, I mean. It, you can suggest you can you can probably guess some of the guys guys have got on our radar like uh, Mike Gatting and people like that. But yeah, I think they'd be fun. But yeah, we're trying to also think a bit left field and uh, non cricketers as well. I love the subtle hints in there about the things that you couldn't. Print. <laughs> there was a few. I have to let people read it in a minute. We'll uh, tell you how you can subscribe and buy the magazine. But I can assure you that. Uh, you know, we're not going to make any revelations here on Live Sport FM, but there's a lot of subtle hints, and I like that. I, I love that sort of thing. Well, it's a bit old school, should we say, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Can I just, therefore, Hugh, thanks very much for your time. I've just got two last questions for you, and I've led up to the first one. So, um, gave you the plug for the magazine. I think people got a pretty good idea of what it's all about. So, it comes out every month. So, obviously, you can buy it from uh, your local, all good uh, local bookshops, and news agents will stock it, I'm sure. But WXL, you can subscribe yeah. to the magazine? Yes, yeah, so it's £52.49 for 12 issues delivered to your door, saving 27% on the cover price. And if you go to shopthecricketer.com, 
shopthecricketer.com. Yeah, we'll try and make sure we'll we get Google, that out we'll later shop, on. It, then, um, yeah, it is a, a good read. It's a good read, but as I said, we Gideon Hay is another guy we have in every month as well. So oh yes, yeah, yes, it's Australian. Yeah, 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 he's a very good writer, isn't he? Lovely. Hugh, just one last question mm. for you then, and uh, this might only make sense if you read the magazine, but um, you know, you're obviously very committed to uh, cricket, and we know that uh, you are the key player for your team, which is, if I remember rightly, Beddington Fourth Eleven. <laughs> I, I, when you sent that in an email this week, I sent it to my uh, teammates, and we had a chuckle that I was the key player. I suppose I can be sometimes. Uh, yeah, so we're a five-team club in um, between Croydon and Sutton. And um, that's where, near where I live in Carshalton, and um, we play in the Surrey League. And uh, yeah, I've, I've managed to scrape a few runs together for the forwards. I was I found h half the season I was in the seconds and floundered a little bit. We were a bit short of players this year, but uh, and the other club that I'm involved with is Woodbridge uh, in Suffolk, mm -hmm. for whom I'm president. That's my old club. All right. So yeah, no, I, I, I still love playing cricket, opening the batting. Yes, don't, I don't I, get a bowl very often. No, and I noticed. I think in one of your innings, I think you scored twenty in about thirty overs, but <laughs> held the innings together, and that's I think you won by twenty runs, and sort of pointed out to people, well, we no, that's real. Yeah, yeah, tw <laughs> twenty. I was out. I got twenty, and was out in the twentieth over, yeah. and I came off to silence. Like Ian Botham came off at this ground <laughs> in eighty-one, no one looking at him, and. Um, Afterwards, I, I said to them, that'll be enough runs, don't worry, and they didn't leave me, but we, the, the bowlers were bowled brilliantly, so I, I tried to claim victory, the, claim the achievement, but uh, no, it's still good fun, yeah. Oh, lovely, Hugh. I can, I can I really identify, you play cricket as an opening bat the way I play cricket as an opening <laughs> bat. I've got a few shots, but it does take me a while to get through the gears. Yeah, yeah. I, was, I was terrible that day, I couldn't get the ball off the square. <laughs> but you won the game for your team, that's, that's right. <laughs> I mean, Hugh, just looking out at uh, the pitch here, we're here in the uh, Tavern Suite, and uh, we've had, uh, uh, there is a word for them, I believe, they're perambulators who walk round the edge of Lourdes, but it's yeah. a lovely scene, isn't it? Yeah, I, I, I love a perambulation, perambulation of the ground, but um, they're, they're on the outfield here. It's um, wonderful to see, really, isn't it? I think I, um, it's become, Lourdes has become a bit more accessible in recent years. I don't think that uh, five, six, seven years ago it was allowed, but uh, no, it's, as long as they don't go on the pitch. Uh, it's really nice, isn't it? Um, it's beautiful, it really is. And uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Hugh, it's been a pleasure chatting to you. I really appreciate your no, time because you, obviously man. a busy day for you. Sorry, there is one last thing. Um, in fact, uh, we should have mentioned them. I gave them a little plug earlier, but just before you came up here, I think you've inducted two new people into the uh, Village Cup Hall of Fame. Yes. No, so I, let's give them a shout out and I can give you the programme, although I'm sure you've got their names. But um, they, were, they, were, they were, yeah, we had them in our last magazine actually, Nigel and Paul. Yes, that's get, right. Yeah, so. Uh, Okay, lovely. Yeah. Ship, Shipton under under Witchwoods, Paul Hemming, and Linton Parks, Nigel Thurkel, Thurkel, and um, they're really interesting stories. Actually, um, I, I know somebody who actually plays for Nigel's team, Linton Park in Kent, and he uh, was man of the man of the match, player of the match in 1978, and then played again 21 years later as captain. In fact, and he scored a half century in both games. So. That's amazing, isn't it? Twenty-one year gap. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, and, and then Paul Hemming had, um, had a, a, a gap. I think he said two thousand two and two thousand three, and then two thousand and ten. So he was skipper three times. So um, they're worthy recipients, aren't they, of the award or? were the oh, inductees absolutely. of the Hall of Fame, yeah. Village cricket relies on volunteers like Paul and Nigel and, uh, you know, I'm just so glad there's a way of, you know, of um, acknowledging the great work they do. Yeah, we that's down to your good self. The so. number two and three in our, in our Hall of Fame, so I'm sure there'll be one or two more next year in the final, yeah. all being well. Hugh, thank you ever so much for your time today. If, by the way, you get bored this afternoon, you want to pop back, you're very welcome. OK. If you want We've to got come George back. DeBell down there as well, if you... Well, if they want to come and, if I, you know, I believe that uh, Test Match Special are looking for one or two people if you want to do an audition for them. You right, yeah. Well, <laughs> no, might, very... My time might have passed. It's my 50th birthday match next Saturday, so uh, I think they'd have come to me by now if they wanted me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure TMS would love to hear from you if you do. But, so, Hugh, I really appreciate okay. you coming up Thanks here. Thanks very much and, indeed. Uh, pleasure to talk to you. I Thanks ever so much indeed, the rest of the match, yeah. I'm Thank sure you. we will. Thanks so much indeed. That was Hugh Turberville there, the uh, editor of The uh, Cricketer, who's uh, kindly come into the commentary box and uh, has given us a good chat. And I'm going to shake this fine man's hand because uh, he has given us his time here today. Thanks very much, Hugh. And he's just shaking James's gardener's hand and... Uh, 
I'm going to ask James if he doesn't mind joining me just for a moment, just while we wait for, for the other two. I'll check our rotor in a minute. We have a rotor here at, uh, at Eli Sports FM for our commentators. And uh, I can't remember who's on next, but James has come back from lunch. He's kindly brought me a sandwich, so thanks very much indeed. James, what did you bring me? Just I brought you a sandwich and indeed a bratwurst. Uh, on a, I, I thought I'd get you the, the smoked salmon sandwich in honour of the uh, Dumbleton captain, Rupert Salmon, who's had a fine knock out there. He has indeed, and in fact, I think a good way while we wait for the players to come back, uh, the Camel players are just, uh, sorry, the Dumbleton players, because of course they'll be fielding and just warming up in front of us here. But uh, I mean, that is a really good score, I think, by Dumbleton. I was so impressed with all their, most of their batting, uh, but certainly two of the two standout ones, uh, Tommy Borman. Uh, let's start with him, young 17 year old lad. He, what an innings. Oh, ab absolutely. He, uh, he looked very scratchy for his first four or five balls, but once he got over the uh, very understandable nerves of the occasion and the, uh, the, the venue, uh, he, he took control. It's interesting to look back at that Manhattan that you had up a moment ago because the first ten overs are real are bungalows, aren't they? Whereas the, <laughs> the middle overs get into sort of commercial territory and then the final overs are skyscrapers. So it's a, a certain rhythm which they established to, to their innings, which they, they would have talked about wanting to build a platform and then strike, and that's exactly what they did. Yeah, it's interesting. We haven't got the Manhattan up here. It's difficult to uh, tell you this uh, graph. Uh, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, it's uh, like a bar chart with uh, all the bars for the different heights. But we talked yesterday about Bexley's innings being in three thirds, and in fact, it was an acceleration. Then they sort of had a be calm period before they took off again. But what you just said about the uh, three thirds, if you like, for. Uh, the um, Dumbleton innings was, uh, yeah, as you said, that's quite a nice word actually for Manhattan, bungalows, but they accelerated quite nicely and, uh, yeah, six and over, that's challenging, I think. I've been out, uh, uh, it is challenging, I've been out amongst the spectators, uh, as has Kevin Emery, so both our uh, commentators have, have been doing their vox pop research during the, the break and... Uh, it's interesting because both sets of supporters, and, and, and put this way, no, neither set of supporters is particularly confident at this stage. Uh, the, the Dumbleton, uh, you know, are cautious because they they, they know that they've posted uh, what yesterday we described as a testing score, and of course it's the, an identical score, so it'll be equally testing today. Um, but then, uh, Calmore are very conscious of the Ben Johns factor. Uh, and the way they put it is that most of the rest of the side have hardly batted uh, in, in their very successful cup run so far. And uh, they're a little, uh, I think, cautious, the spectators, uh, that what happens if he get, gets out early. That's and a very, uh, very good point. That psychology. If Rich was here, it would be very easy be to all talk to him it. about yep. that, wouldn't it? That uh, There's a man who's an absolute run machine. We will, if I find his stats, I mean, he's... Because, uh, well, in fact, he goes back to the uh, end of last season because I know for a fact that uh, for their first couple of games last year, uh, James, he didn't score. He got two ducks. Yes, and he developed a little bit of an aversion to the Village Cup, apparently. Yeah. You know, he wasn't too keen on it until yeah. he got going. And then he got, I think, 50s in the quarterfinal, semi-final, and as uh, you will remember, and I won't remind you anymore, the final. Well, he took the game away from us uh, he did, this didn't time he? last year. He yeah. played a very uh, well-paced innings. Yeah. And, of course, I can't find my notes at the moment, I need them. But, uh, you know, this season he's been a run machine. All I can remember is that six more runs... And he will have 500 in the competition, let alone the runs he scored in uh, league cricket this season. Oh, he, he, I think he's got two 90s and 100 in the... Uh, he's certainly got one 100 and uh, uh, certainly got a 90 in the semi-final. And uh, I'm sure we'll find the piece of paper before uh, we start commentating. And, uh, you know, we'll be able to tell people. But that's a very interesting factor. And, uh, you know, they're more than a one-man team. I mean, this time last year, it was Will Brewster who was the man we were looking Indeed. at. Who you got out in the first... Alvinly got out in the first over. That's right. And yeah. we were thinking, oh, this could be... Uh, quite a good game, you know, we're thinking that really swung it Alvin Lee's way. Uh, so, you know, but he's there, um, you know, people like Matt Taylor, Sean Johnson have got runs, so they have other people, but there's no doubt about it, it's the Ben Johns factor that's going to be key, I think, today, in this innings. Today they will have to step up uh, if, if, if Johns goes early, or even, you know, uh, b before the target is reached. I don't think there's any doubt in anybody's mind that if he's there at the end, then Carl will win. Mm. Uh, he's that sort of highly influential player. Uh, being yeah. described as a run machine. Uh, interesting to hear uh, Hugh Turbo on that wonderful uh, interview that you managed to conduct Thank with you. him during, during the break there. Talk about the 50-year mm. span of the competition, which I think is also Hugh's span, exactly. He, he and the, the competition are identical age. Yeah, 
Yeah, although I'm not sure he was involved at the beginning. I didn't want to uh, ask no, him that. I think he was a bit, unless he early. was a child prodigy. From the cradle. <laughs> but uh, Ben Johns strikes me as being, if he can take his side home today, it will you know, be a future Hall of Fame uh, inductee. I think so, I think so. I mean, not just that, by the way. One thing I did pick up was that uh, he uh, played, uh, was he first played as a 15-year-old, I think it was 2013. He's played in every single league match yeah. since. 150th I'm league match uh, at the end of the season against Ventnor, and I think he got runs there. He's, uh, I was reading your in mm. impeccable stats there, and it's an astonishing record for any club cricketer anywhere it around is. the country to, Absolutely. to ha have an un broken spell of 150 caps as it were for your yeah. for your club side dedication indeed now just one thing before the game restarts the players have gone back in and i think the umpires are coming out so we should be starting shortly but uh, we've been speculating about josh metcalf because he bowled a really good opening spell but then went off we think he was up you know dan croft was the substitute but he didn't come back on so i don't know if there's any word on the streets as you were out there james sorry i'm putting you on the spot no I, I well i've not um, tapped into that one of course uh, Teams and players are notoriously reluctant to re re reveal to the press, um, yeah. you know, the state of any injury. I thought Rupert Salmon had tightened up halfway through his innings and was, you know, he, he slumped uh, to his haunches at the end of that very fine knock where he was not out. But uh, it'd be interesting to see where he hides himself in the field. Yeah. And whether, as you say, Josh comes out or not. Well, Josh will be number eight, so he's got a little bit of time, and I'm sure if he's needed, he will come and back. But uh, the umpires are coming out. It's going to need me. In fact, I'm going to hand over to you because you're going to be our uh, commentator for right? the uh, next ten overs. Uh, it will be Kevin if I can find him. He's uh, gone to the toilet, but uh, he'll be back in a moment. So uh, just to let you know that we've got Anthony Blondell and Peter Rockbourne. The umpires are coming out, Have as always. Great game. And uh, that's interesting. The batsmen are coming out. There's no fielders. Have you have you worked out which is which of our of our distinguished umpires? They're no, I haven't. Pottering around at the moment, doing all sorts of uh, well, ti tidy up duties. I'm gonna, sorry, uh, Jones. You're going to pass to you. I'll tell you why. I've never seen this before. The two batsmen coming out. Uh, no. Unless I'm missing something, I can't see any fielders. No, no sign of the fielders. <laughs> anyway, I'll pass over. It'll be uh, Kevin who will be joining you for. The, uh, I don't think it's a player's strike that we're uh, in encountering here. I'd be I'd be very surprised. Anyway, I'm going to hand over, Ke so it'll be uh, James, doing, James Gardner doing the commentary for the first ten overs, and for the first five overs, he'll be supported by Kevin Emery. Thank you, Keith. Uh, well, th there we are. This is rather strange sight of the, the two umpires, <coughs> Messrs. Uh, Blondell and Og Ogborn, out there, accompanied by the two batsmen. There's, a, there's actually a ball which has been positioned halfway down the wicket, ready for, at the moment, uh, a non-existent... Uh, Dumbleton side. Oh, here they come. Salmon has obviously been revving his men up with a last minute Horatio like team talk there. In the, in the home dressing room, which was awarded to Dumbleton, possibly on the toss of a coin uh, on this occasion, vacated by Albany last year. And uh, out they come. The Kevin, do you call these caps of theirs the bumblebee caps? I, I do, but, but then I'm not really entitled to call them anything. You, 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 you know better than I do. Yeah, maybe it's called the dumblebee Oh, caps. very good. Yeah. Um, oh, no, I helicopter type, isn't it? It's a tradition that they brought back in, I think, um, five or ten years ago. I think you pointed out that there's a sort of rogue black cap being worn by one of the fielders, that which marks him out as of an earlier generation, should That's you right. say? Yeah, Adam Stewart, the captain on Saturday. Oh, that's the, and the groundsman as well, yes. Yeah, he, and then a few a few wear the uh, the white sunnies. I see. I see. He's sort of um, slurping an energy sachet of some. At least yeah. I've seen that's what it is. Well, he, he he did exert himself a lot for his five not out off uh, six oh. delivery. So he's he, he he's brings a wonderful whiff of the kind of willy, village blacksmith to the game, doesn't he? He's got those sort of ham forearms that uh, have obviously handled the tractor. Yes, no, he's he's. Uh, he does the ground at Dumbleton Captain, so um, and in the past he used to bat three and scored lots and lots of runs. Um, and ironically now, he's playing on a wicket that he's probably better to bat on than when he got all his runs. The umpires are waving at that score. I'm not specifically waving at that They're waving in our direction at the scorers. Um, uh, Claire and Duncan poised with their pencil sharpened for the reply here. As Carmel set off in pursuit of 241. Uh, effectively, 
first. What is Empire State? Is he a friend of the crowd or was he signaling anything? I think he's just to the other Empire saying that there is two to come. Just oh, to that, go, uh, yeah, just to get a little signal. Uh, that's the other Empire was adjusting his tunic at the time, so uh, yeah. that's been delayed. But he's uh, interesting that they've stayed put the same hands, haven't they? How often they change hands between the hands. Indeed, uh, good observation. Ollie Horn again to Bruce Timmons once again. This time he's got it past that diving gully field where he's going to turn for two. And John's just. Uh, Easing his way back into this one of his favourite stages in, in world cricket, I think you could say. Yeah. Up, he, nice. he took the game away from Albany last year and will be looking to do the same. To, I think the feeling amongst the Calmore supporters is that if he's there at the end, Calmore will win. Um, but uh, if he goes early, then it's a real test for everybody else. Mm. Some of whom haven't had much batting in this competition so far. Ooh. Oh, and, and Bruce is beaten there on the back pad. There's a, a big shot. Yeah, he's just scurrying it around. What do you think? I think he got a little inside edge. Oh. We can't see square. I'll just watch the monitor now. And yeah, yeah. big, uh, the, the old classic show back to the umpire. <laughs> was he quite sort of, uh, yes, he was. He yeah. quite demonstrative in helping the umpire make up his mind. That's what I'm If you did that to a few of the old uh, first class umpires, they say, well, use it, son. <laughs> Don't show it to me. Use it. <laughs> Very good. There's a touch of the, uh, the David Lloyds coming through there, I think. Um, we may or may not get on to some of your, your extensive range of accents in due course, uh, Kevin. Uh, I, uh, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't want to put this apart. I think somebody's had a bet on me how many accents I get in during the course of the day. Uh, they managed to find a representative of uh, a bookmaker who's given them some odds, but uh, we'll refrain from right. where we can. Well, we'll rein it in just for the time being while we watch. Uh, so, we watch Martin from that's there. it. Good James, good spot from you, from you, uh, sent behind Ross Martin, right arm over to Ben Johns, left arm in, attacking uh, Dumbleton. Uh, in fact, sorry, he's going right arm round, which is unusual, so this is obviously a well, plan. This is a plan, because uh, John's sort of standing almost sideways in his crease, he's got a slightly crappy uh, stance, but he's off the mark straight away. Two. Looking for two there. Oh, no, it should have been a two, that was a straight. Uh, yeah. straight. Didn't run that very hard, the first one, Ben Johns, but it's, um, it's not a, 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 an enthusiastic runner between the wickets, John, you get the feeling he quite happily stand in the river for a while. Yeah, and there's certain bats who like just to sort of ease into their innings, isn't it? That I don't, you know, just at my pace that I can do, and maybe that is one of those, but uh, happy to uh, take the strike. It was a good stop by, uh, half stop by Aaron Thompson at backward point, which saved the inevitable two. They only got one with uh, Holly Horn running around from um, third man and getting it back in. So, Ross Martin now, he went with the batting and it was the bowling, so he gets his match feet. Uh, He's going to come over the wicket to, uh, to Brewster. He's got uh, the, the run up, which is almost on the 30 yard circle there, so he's, he's going to work hard. He's athletic. No, he's, he's sort of half started his run. He's keen to go three times now with the batsman. Brewster's now ready. Also batting slightly out of his crease on those. How many batsmen do these days? Would you say the percentage of batsmen batting out of their crease has, has increased? Yeah, I think so. I think so. From having, you know, people uh, mimic what they see uh, on the television, and a lot of watch one day cricket, a lot of do, a lot of batters do that. Some of them have got their exaggerated backward trigger movement back and across, but it looks like Bruce has got maybe he just stands fairly still. He's very still. I would say, Forward look, that one. yeah, nice, solid in defence. Good, good line from Ross Martin. Good start. Two slips in play. Mid-off, mid-on, uh, Ollie Horn just behind square leg umpire, and then I think we've probably got a 
step in. Uh, if not, why not? And uh, following the pictures on the NB play, I'm sure you can do that. Well, you can do that on your phone if you put all the right gadgetry and the right uh, links. Tweet us on Live Sports or NB play. Live Sports FM, uh, at Live Sports FM or at NB play. And let us know if you're supporting Dumbleton from Dumbleton or indeed Dumbleton from Dumbleton. Southampton way. So Ollie Hall now to bowl to Ben Johnson. He takes it across the left-hander. Um, so it'll be a bit of test. There was just a bit of movement in the first over. A bit of wide of posted off them. Open stance. Good John's compact left-hander. He tucks that off his hip for a single. So that takes him one closer to that 500 target of his. Although I don't want to be his mind, I wouldn't imagine. No, I think, you know, when you, yeah. Um, you may be aware of it, but I think he's all out to try and battle all these overs and, and win the game for his side. Much more important. Is he a statistical man? Is he, I, know, I see that he's had 150 appearances on the on the bounce on the trot for uh, Carmel without a single break in his league appearance. It's quite a remarkable record. Cruiser, oh, that's close. Cool. in a real tangle there. But, uh, no damage. No, he just sort of, again, born from a foolish leg, just come back in the air and he's just squeezed it into his pad. Missing legs done, but a good delivery is a bit of a bit of swing. Both the time around. The reason both these openers I think are quicker than the uh, anything we've seen all day. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, you're now top of his mark. He's settled into a sort of regular spot at the top of his mark. He's got a slight carry in his delivery stride. That was uh, full. Um, nothing worse to do with it really. Yeah. No. Um, he's had a good. I mean, he bowled. I think uh, up at Rainford. Eight overs, great. Yep. And um, very back in the length, just very disciplined. On a, a pitch that was doing a little bit up and down, so he yep. was uh, more of a handful there, perhaps. Shuffles at the top of his run, and then he comes to Brewster. Brewster's forward, and quite a good hold of that one once again. It trickles out to Kelly. Yep. Scott Tremaine comes in, does the field, the, the fielding from the first position. Sorry, James. He's definitely Brewster looking to come towards the ball, and he's just got away from his pad a little bit there, so the back's just angled wrong, and it's just inside edge into his pads again. Um, you know, they say wait for it, swinging ball, let it come, let it late. Play it comes yeah. under the eyes, yeah, it comes from me. Sorry, uh, I want a shot for none. Somebody warming up in the uh, short cover there, is that uh, a suggestion of a change of bowling to come? Um, no, he's just. Uh, Well, be him sometimes the adrenaline, the occasion, all of that is 
guys it could have picked as well. And uh, she did not put a foot wrong. She was in immaculate position for several rounds and uh, showed no hesitation whatsoever at any stage. Uh, as did her umpiring partner. So it spoke well of the overall standard in these competitions. Nice touch, I always think. Go for it, but it's been some good bowling to be fair. Well, uh, the bell is propped forward there, and there's an appeal for catching the slips. But uh, he's uh, unmoved, he's indicating with various different uh, collection of hand movements as to what actually happened, uh, and obviously didn't involve the bat. I mean, the miles behind the run rate currently, but then we, we said the same about Dumbleton. But the one thing they can't do is look at the scoreboard and see they still need 229 off 202 because all of a sudden you think, well, I've got to go and play a shot and then you play a reckless one and you're out. Well, they're 13 for one uh, off uh, just over six overs, a run rate of about two. Lavelle playing that once again, very far in front of him and away from his body. He gets an outside edge this time. It's run away outside our line of sight. Just a single down. There's a man down at third man down there. And uh, that's kept it down to a single. So, Ollie Horn having to adjust now to the left right combination. And as Kevin was suggesting, that might be part of the reason for jigging around with the Campbell batting order. Brewster just uh, establishing his squatting rights there at the crease. Ollie Horn. Sharp. And he eases into that one. It had a lovely sound to it and an easy push there. Just short of the boundary, two runs, the result. It was a time defensive push, wasn't it? Yes. And it flew away for two, didn't it? <laughs> if it had really gone through with a shot, it had gone away to the boundary, but it was just an easy, easy two. Most assured shot I think the Brewster's played. He's faced 27 balls and uh, his, to his total is eight, 16 for one. Uh, he lets that one go through. I think wide. that's going to be called a wide. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the umpires do the sort of interesting double signal of the wide. So we see it side on first of all, and then they sort of pirouette towards us and give us the confirmation that that was a wide. Three extras as well so far. It's, you know, they can't afford loads of extras, can they? Especially if it's getting tight, you don't want those extras to be the deciding factor. They were yesterday. Here comes Ollie Horn. Uh, Brewster flicks at that. It's uh, gone wide of the leg stump, and it's going to be called wide and going to be called four wides. So the, the Ollie Horn radar is letting him down. He won't be pleased with that. He can be a, a very miserly bowler, but not... Uh, yeah, just seeing him grimacing there as he's walking back to his mark. And, uh, yeah, he, he knows, like you say, his radar's off. I mean, that's three wides in the over now. It's a, it's a long over this. Now, coming in from the pavilion end. Quick shuffle at the top of his mark and uh, see what he can do to restore his radar. He's got more of what he's trying to do there. He's beaten John's outside the off stump, or possibly John's beat himself with rather a loose shot. End of the uh, end of the, an eight ball over there. <laughs> he's still, well, he hasn't finished it yet, has he? He's still oh, no, still one more. Yes, it's not, it'd be a nine ball over. Yeah. So extras, as, as you say, have crept up to eight. They're uh, currently top score alongside Brewster. Lavelle on four. Brewster. He, let, he lets that one go. Just uh, thank you very much, Ollie. I'm not sure that 
somebody may suggest you take that sweater and um, go and do some grazing down at Long Lake for a while. <laughs> but who who knows? We'll we'll see what changes. Uh, is this skipper day? Is this skipper James Gardner talk? Well, off you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, Ollie. <laughs> take a rest. Take a take a blow. Uh, skipper Salmon. I'm trying to p pick him out in the in, in the field. Oh, there he is. Yeah. Is that him just running across he's at to the covers now? No, I think he's at mid-on, isn't he, um, to the left-hander? Our Tom Green's on, the uh, the actual club captain, he's 12th man. He's gone to sort of um, Gosh, extra cover point region. A bit like sending the groundsman on, isn't it? There we go, Ross Martin. There he is, uh, Tom Green, fielding. Bowling round the wicket to the left-handed Lavelle. We're into the, starting now, the eighth over, 22 for one in pursuit of 242 to win. Dumbleton scoring it almost exactly a runner ball. Carmore trying to match them. Oh. Oh, well, it's gone. It's played all around that one. And uh, furniture has been rearranged behind him. Uh, the skipper has fallen. So Carmore uh, will be... Uh, in a high state of nervous tension at the moment as both their champion Johns and their skipper are out with the score of 22-4-2 and at the moment Dumbleton riding high. The, uh, the Dumbleys are buzzing with uh, all the excitement of a Lord's final. Yeah, brilliant delivery and a big wicket to Captain Mark Lavelle going bowled by Martin, as you say, for four. And uh, he was another key man last year. Will Brewster is still there, though. But, yeah, Mark Lavelle went here, hit a few huge, huge sixes last year in that shorter chase against Alvin Lee. But two big breakthroughs for Dumbleton. You can tell by the celebrations on both the wickets that they've got. They know they're big key wickets. Right, I think we will be getting Matt Taylor now. Um... He could have come in at three, but now he's uh, he's in there at four. Let's see what Theresa May call, talk, tells us. <laughs> for, for listeners who weren't uh, live sports, <laughs> listeners who weren't uh, tuned in earlier, uh, Anne Willem, who's the resident MCC announcer, has really the most cultivated tones mm. and a beautiful manner when asking spectators to end their perambulation around the pitch <laughs> when she says things along the lines of, it would be most helpful. Mm. And she also says, go, to, go and get your roast dinner for 17 quid as well. Yeah, then that's right, like, she was plugging, <laughs> pl plugging uh, one of the concession stores there. Matt Taylor is vigorously making his way to the crease. He's doing all those sort of uh, calisthenics that incoming batsmen do as much to settle the nerves, I think, as stretch the hamstrings. And uh, once again, it's a good opportunity to, sh to give a shout out to his mum, Claire, up there scoring in the score box just above us our commentary position square onto the wicket in the tavern stand looking out over an increasingly sort of bleak and moody looking l lords weatherscape it's not as dark as it was though james the clouds are, have gone higher again haven't they so yes i yeah once again i don't think the weathermen are, are uh, or the weather forecasters are predicting rain let's hope not for all kinds of reasons this memorable commemorative weekend so Ross Martin will start the over uh, continues over here sorry uh, he's dismissed the bell and first ball to Taylor he's played defensively Taylor slightly hunch shouldered and uh, maybe the tension is is getting to him he's got a job of repair to do now at 22 for 2 uh, in the 8th over big looming target of 241 set by Dumbleton earlier batting out of his crease once again to the, the fairly rapid Ross Martin uh, and uh, he's got hold of that one and pushed it away for two to get himself off the mark up and running Oh, it's a good job he got hold of that one because that would have been plum LBW. That's something. That's why hands are on heads. He just about managed to get some bat on it. You, you're watching on the on the, mm. the replay monitor there. Yes, good to see the batsman running well off the strip there as well. It's uh, it's uh, good discipline, I think, by 
any batsman. Martin. Back to Taylor. Taylor. Oh, nice. Plays late. At that one right under his eyes and guides it down to third man for a single. And he sort of uh, hops and skips down to the other end. Adjusts his pads. The distinct signs there of wanting to get into the game and into the mood. Yeah, Mark Stewart down there at third man. Uh, lovely little shot, wasn't it? But like I said, the fielder was there. And the run rate has gone up a little bit for Calmore. We saw this with Dumbleton as, as it, it gradually creeps up. So uh, you still think this is a tight finish. However, they have lost a couple of wickets already. Scoreboard hasn't given us a duck with Lewis uh, target total yet. I think at some stage they'll start to do that. Uh, end of the Ross Martin over with the dot ball. His figures uh, reading uh, impressive. Four overs, no maidens. Two for ten. So he's done the damage. Uh, and quite significant damage it, it, it has been too. Johns and Lavelle. That's a good return, I would have thought, for any bowler. Yeah, especially when you look at who, what they did last year and what they've done in this competition. The fact they've got them two out uh, is a massive boost for Dumbleton, of course, playing in the first final here against the holders, Cal Moore, who were unbeaten in this competition, having only entered it last year. So, yeah, it's, it's very difficult to win back-to-back -back Village Cup finals, and Cal Moore up against it. Sun's come out again, so it keeps uh, keeping us guessing. Uh, and the contrasting light and dark green stripes across the ground. Regulation haircut that the Lords has had. And that's uh, Brewster working it off his toes down for a single. Holly Horn continuing despite my uh, <coughs> dire attempts to, to get him to take a rest. He's <laughs> the souls, his captain, I should say, has decided to keep him on. That delivery again swung. He's trying to get a lot of in swing. And I, I think in his first over, he swung it too much, didn't he? He's just got to maybe just reel it in a little bit whilst trying to get that swing to induce the batsman. Here he comes, Horn. Oh, that one has been powered along the ground by Brewster, but no run. Again, you'll see it here, James, the amount of swing he gets. Yeah. No, he's a, a lively customer, mm. Ollie in, Horn. In swingers as well. There's nothing better than an in swinger, especially an in swinging Yorker. Oh, golly. Tell me about it. Spent years trying to bowl those. <laughs> Ollie Horn to uh, Will Brewster. Uh, Brewster flicks that away. Uh, we'll get confirmation in a moment. Yep, that, that's gone for four. Beaten the field down there on the, uh, the deep square leg boundary. Lovely uh, sharp shadows. Showing up the, the architecture of the pavilion and uh, largely empty seats around the ground. There's a sort of grandeur to half empty lords. Brewster pushes away into the gully, no run. Nice buzz, isn't it, around the ground now? It, it is, when we get the benefit of it because we've mm. got both um, blocks of supporters immediately below us on the, the, the tavern and the lower mound stand so you'll pick up as you say an expectant buzz I think both Ooh. teams quite rightly think that they're in this Ollie Horn thought he was in this but uh, it was too wide of Brewster really even for him to get an edge I think the bat hit the ground yeah the bat hit the ground yeah, as well so a, no a noise there but no alarms yeah, yes you're right uh, and good to see the members there are more members on mm. parade and on display today than there were yesterday for the national club final which is an interesting indicator I think of the prestige which this game has the national village cup final being brought to you here from Lords by Live Sports FM in conjunction with uh, NB Play so you've got us on the airwaves and uh, via a live stream operating from both ends of the ground so you get uh, an unparalleled view from behind the bowler's arm, whoever is bowling. And also you can tweet us on social media, at Live Sports FM and on Facebook as well. Uh, maybe you're a fan of either side and you can't make it, then thank you very much for listening. And also send us a message and we'll read it out for you. Maybe just a neutral listening as well. 
Um, but yeah, we'll uh, we'll read it out. Thirty for two of uh, of the nine overs. So the run rate uh, just over three and over. Uh, I see the scoreboard is telling us that they need 212 of 186 deliveries. Uh, it's quite a tall order at the moment. We, we haven't had a Duckworth-Lewis calculation go up there yet. But that also gives us an indication of just how far behind Calmore are at the moment. And they, they are behind the game. They must know that. But it's uh, relatively early days. Here, here comes Ross Martin again. Uh, he's forced Brewster to play that down into the gully. That's uh, I think that's the skipper there with a, a floppy hat. He's opted for the sort of the casual look as uh, Rupert Salmon. Brewster oh. flashes outside the off stump there. Can't make contact seemed just as well. Seemed a bit of a wild flash that as well. Yeah. Uh, probably didn't need to play at that one. Maybe the pressure building a little bit. Yeah, it was just swinging away a little bit. Yeah, he looks a bit agitated now, isn't he? He's sort of rehearsing a stroke or two and settling down into his very solid stocky stance Martin gathers himself at the crease and Brewster pushes this one oh, wide of the uh, fielder at mid on uh, he dives and, and does well cuts it down to a single yeah it takes another big lump of turf out the Lord's groundsman won't be happy it's a fair the players are doing the best to put it back in aren't they <laughs> they are it's a, it, you know, having walked on the ground at uh, the innings break there, it really is a green sward, immaculate carpet. You know, you feel as if you could play billiards or something on it. It's so, yeah, any any damage to it must must really hurt a, cl a club cricketer. Get that heavy roller on it. That'll put it back in. <laughs> in comes Martin. It's almost a sort of ap apologetic... Uh, turf removal what's the signal there is just one and one oh no once again the umpires have got a whole kind of private language between them which sometimes a little confusing to seem he's, he's put two are oh, two for like two left for the over is that that's what yeah. he's saying yeah oh, okay well that would be right because uh he's got two walls left in this over ross martin to brewster uh, brewster edges that one down safely to third man for a single so now it's one ball left in what will be uh, Ross Martin's fifth over impressive figures so far of two for twelve uh, Calmore just uh, sort of hovering at 32 for two uh, not in immediate trouble but they uh, have got a lot to do Martin to Brewster I think props I forward, no run. Sorry, James. I think if we compare where both teams are after ten overs, I think Calmore have got more runs on the board, but Dumbleton have lost an extra wicket. I think oh, uh, Dumbleton were around twenty-seven, I think, and Calmore uh, thirty-two for two at the end of this over. Luke, I'm going to abandon you at this at this point. Okay, uh, but uh, upgrade you to to work with Kevin Emery. So best of luck. Yep, the pro. The guy knows what he's talking about. He's going to come in. Calmore. Uh, probably relying on Will Brewster. They need a big innings from him. They need a big innings from someone like Dumbleton got, especially from the skipper, Rupert Salmon, in, in their innings. Yes, Luke. Um, yeah, they need to get a foothold in the game. They're just, I think, still reeling probably from that the loss of Ben Johns, their mainstay. But... Um, Change of bowling now from the uh, pavilion end. Uh, it's got uh, Thompson, but it's actually not. It's um, Jamie <coughs> Diamond. Oh, James is it? Diamond, yeah. Oh, okay. The scoreboard for so the score's got, got it wrong, okay. Oh, no, sorry, I was looking at the wrong. Yeah, they've got him up there, Diamond. Um, the field I was looking. So ah, so yeah, it's the field. Uh, yeah, sorry, it is Diamond, <coughs> yeah. He's a um, yeah, medium pace, just does a little bit either way, comes into bowl. Oh, and an involuntary prod again from Brewster. Yeah, is it? Yeah, just again, he probably didn't need to play that, did he? It 
pressure maybe just growing a little bit. Although, like I said, the run weight slightly more than what Dumbledore had it. Although it's, the run rate required now seven and over. So they'll be looking at that scoreboard, thinking we've got to be patient and maybe go for it. But equally, there's a time that they've got to really go for it now, haven't they? And try and did he go big early and try and, and, and break the back of the chase? They've added another single there. Yeah, and it's um, it's a tricky one because uh, uh, Brewster's now been in for 40 balls, uh, 14, so the pressure's probably building on him. Um, you know, he, he, he's wanting not to get out. New bowler coming on, so they'd like to get on top of him before he settles. But he started quite nicely, Jamie Diamond, from the uh, pavilion end. Slope just helping him just to bring it back into the two right-handers as he comes into bowling. A nice economical run-up, easy to the crease. And just a little bit. He's just tried to overcorrect there, and it's just a gone wide. outside the blue it's line for a wide. Mm. Yeah, he's got. It's a very, like you say, it's a, not a massive run up. It's just a very gentle, nice little run up, isn't it? He just got his radar wrong there. Yeah, and just a bit. I think um, even from Calmore, like a pace early, it did swing for them, and it's definitely swung. That one's just tailed out a little bit, but he started it a bit too wide. Um, so you need to just tighten his line up a bit as he comes in again, bowls. And Taylor's there, just. Again, prodding out. Both these batters seem to want to come out and meet the ball, not let the ball come to them. Yeah, they're trying to be positive, aren't they, even in, in defence? You can be positive in defence as well, can't you? So that's what they're trying to do. Um, I mean, we mentioned it before. I think it was... might have been Brewster. Or was it Taylor? You know, he just did a defensive shot and it flew down for two runs and it was a very positive defensive shot. Yeah. Now, there again, um, Jamie Diamond bowling and that one's... Back of a length and uh, Taylor's forward. That's better. That's more compact. He's just played it down in front of him. Um, you know, I think they've got enough time just to get themselves established. Brewster, perhaps, he'll probably feel the pressure a little bit more. Um, but, you know, the old saying in cricket is if you can get after the new bowler before he settles into his rhythm, then he's he feels on the back foot. And that's what they'll be trying to do with Jamie Diamond. Peel there, but nothing doing in the end of the over 34 for two. Way down leg side, that, that appeal. Yeah, yeah. Just, uh, you know, always no the harm appealing. He's in, his, uh, he's in his first over, he wants a wicket. It's the excitement, isn't it? Yeah, and years later, he'll be telling his grand oh, I didn't appeal at Lords. <laughs> I didn't appeal at Lords. <laughs> if he ends up with no wicket. wickets, he will. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, something. I managed to clear <laughs> my throat after that big dinner in the, in the beautiful Lords dining room. I popped in at lunchtime, and it was, it was roast dinner. Roast dinner. Oh, did you get? Oh, yeah. Did you get in it? Because of course you're an MCC member. We got really nice in the media centre. There's a nice uh, carrot and lentil soup. One of my favourite soups they had up in there. So that was very nice. Mm. Had that. But uh, yeah, you had a nice feed, did you then? No, no, I wasn't allowed to feed. Oh, but, okay. Uh, you know, I, I've got a few stored in the bank. I could, I could have a few days off, I think, without fe feeding. Martin in bowls, and that's better from Brewster. Lets it come, but again, he. He wants to come out, and Martin was gesticulating with the captain the last over at Salmon. And wanted his, he wanted his slip out the gully, and he's he's uh, had his wish <coughs> granted. Uh, Thompson has just gone a little finer backward point. So again, Martin who's into his uh, sixth over, two for twelve, bowling well. He's probably you know nice athletic run up on his toes. Comes in leaning forward, up at the crease, bowls. And he's again just playing it out in front of him, Brewster, and just runs it down the backward point. No run. Talking of uh, taking wickets at Lords, how many wickets did you take at Lords? Oh. Can uh, you remember? Yes, I can. Oh. Yes, I can. <laughs> how sad is that? No, uh, because professionally I was four days to play here at Lords. And uh, once for the, uh, the MCC against the Champion County, and it rained all three days. Didn't bowl a ball. I bowled like a god in the indoor nets, but that doesn't mean anything. Oh, and he's gone. He's gone. That is it. Caught behind. You'd always tell when the batsman looked straight down, he's nicked it. And Martin is coming again. Right arm over the wicket. Pitches outside up. Leaves the batsman. He's played away from his body. And Caught by Scott Tremaine behind. So Calmore really now up against it. 34 for three. And Martin having a purple patch. Three wickets. Yeah, great delivery. Um saying he's just been building up to that one hasn't he again he's chased a wide one shouldn't have gone after it should he swung out but uh, on reflection he would have left that but again it's down to scoreboard pressure isn't it he Certainly felt he had to go after it yeah you're dead right there and just the slope we can just see it sometimes mm. from our angle we yeah. can't quite get just carries on down that slope and it's just where you think you've got the bat it just carried on its tail it's 
in the air and then off the seam and it's a, it's a straightforward catch but they still need to be taken and um, Ross Martin who was a disappointed I spoke to him briefly in the interval he was disappointed with his innings mm. never really got going for him he likes to strike the ball never really felt but he's certainly made up for it um, three wickets out of the first three is and sterling work three biggies as well he's broken the back of the main of Cal Moore innings I mean he got played around in the last round but whether they'll give it to him if they do bowl out Cal Moore or if, if it's one of the bowl, or the batsmen will get it maybe the captain will get it because it, ultimately they set up the total so yeah Cal Moore for, probably for the first time in this competition ever are under a lot of stress now yeah and it's you know it, it's a different place that they found themselves in Ben Johns has been the mainstay as we keep saying but without him to play around um, they've now got different challenges to the batters. And you saw that with Bruce. It, the scoreboard pressure was building on him. He, he'd played a lot of balls for his um, score of 14, probably 45 in the end, um, and 43, in fact. Uh, and Ross Martin has ca diligently carried on that off-stump line, just going away, as you say. You know, if this was a an all-day game, you just leave half. You'd mm, need to play him, but... Mm, mm. Sean Johnson's come out. He got a bit of tap when he bowled, didn't he? He's... he's Going to have to do it now with the bat. He's just uh, going through his exercise, just swinging his arms. He he might come out swinging, actually, I think. Yeah, uh, and he comes, Martin, right arm over to Johnson, the right-hander, who takes a bit of a stride, hits him on the pad, oh. and he's gone. He's given him first ball. He's a long way down the wicket there, and uh, the Calmore supporters are looking at the big screen. Oh, it does look out. It does look Ooh. out. It's hit him below the roll, even though he's down the wicket, and that Umpire's is. Player's call, do you think? Because possibly going down leg. No, I, I'm with the slope as well. We'll have a look at that. It's hit him. He thinks because he's he, he's come down the wicket, he thinks I'll get the benefit. But this DRS now. Um, if you watch it again, here we go. The wicket's coming out again on our monitors. We'll have a look. Right arm over. And I think that's just shaping back and is just going to clip leg stump, middle and leg. I think that's out. I think that's a very good decision by the umpire. And I think latterly, you know, from club cricket years ago, that would never have been given. Mm. Walking down the wicket, never given. Nowadays, DRS on TV, they give that. And that, that's a good decision. And Very good decision. Ross Martin's on a hat-trick as well. Could we see a hat-trick in the Village Cup final? He's got all four wickets. And he'll get a five from getting on his board as oh, well. Hey, Did you get any on his board then? I just did about half an hour ago. I just penced my name up and I just put it on there. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll be there forever more now. It's, it's one of those pens you can't wipe off, you know. Oh, there we I'm go. Joking, yeah. I'm joking, I'd be thrown out. No, uh, back to my game. So I never played another game washed out, John Player League, but I played 30 years ago, almost to the day, for Optimist against Kendall in the National Club Final. Uh, three spells, nine overs, I think it was three for 22. So I uh, was happy with that. We won relatively comfortably, chase 160, got him for three. Yeah, great day. Of course, for people who don't know, you got people like Rami's Raja out in the past, haven't you? Yeah, no, yeah, thank you. That's good knowledge. Yeah. Swatting up, Graham Gooch. Yeah. David Gow was my first ever wicket. Really? County cricket, and he's that's here a, today. That's a claim to fame. Yeah. Is he here? Have you seen I him? I haven't seen oh. him, but I'm, I'm led to believe he's here. I'm not sure if Stephen Fry, who's a connection with the uh, chair of the MCC, is here. We're trying to find out whether he's presenting the prizes, which would be a coup. Oh, here's um, a hat-trick ball. Oh. Oh, ball. Well called Luke and No just, ball There you it's go <laughs> Unflappable Max Bailey Look back at the ball So what's all the fuss about He's just played it With a nice straight bat Let it come there so Let's it see It wasn't yeah. a no ball Sorry <laughs> no, Let him come But very good but Not many chances There's not many people Who've had a chance Of getting a hat-trick at Lords Over their careers And how many years This has mm. hosted cricket That's the thing Just get your bat In front of it Isn't it And the, the crowd are certainly getting involved below us here. Mainly the uh, Dumbleton fans right below us. Calmore a bit further to the right. But that looked a peach wow. of a ball. That has gone late down the slope. And Ross Martin has it uncanny. He just puts his hand up as if he's acknowledging, you know, to the crowd. But, yeah, that is a fine over. And that really has broken the back of Calmore's innings. Ross Martin is having a great day out with the ball. Six overs, one maiden, four for 12. Um, like I say, he's disappointed with his batting, but he's certainly making up for it with the ball, isn't he? Certainly is, Luke. Certainly is. Yeah, and it's done a bit. It's done a bit off the, in the air, and then just off the off the seam. I thought the the extra pace of ours might just be a test for their batters, and um, it's proving to be. But Jamie Diamond back on now um, from the. Uh, 
pavilion end. And uh, oh, there we go. Luke has just been handed some information. We yeah. talked about the hat trick. The only test hat trick at Lords by Jeff Griffin for South Africa against England. And the Queen watched part of that test in 1960. So how fitting, really? Yeah. Very good. I'm guessing there's been a few for Middlesex here and stuff like that. It's, you know, it... <sighs> It's a difficult feat to get a hat trick. People get excited. Um, you know, in a final to get a hat trick. Uh, I know Stephen Jeffries, just another South African, got wickets for Hampshire in a Lords final and unfortunately surpassed my best ever Benson Hedges because I held the record with Stephen Andrew for many years at Hampshire. So I do. <laughs> but um, in he comes again, Jamie Diamond bowling. Right arm over. That's in the air. That's nicely, nicely flicked off his toes by Matt Taylor. Mm. Timed. Effortlessly for four through mid wicket. A welcome boundary that for Cal Moore. Lovely shot off his legs. He just strayed a little bit there, didn't he? It was, it was a lot fuller. And uh, it was, as Jeff, Jeff Bycott would say, a bit of Buffy Bowl in there. He helped himself, didn't he? Yeah, certainly ball at but me. That's gone for oh, through the covers. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> Is that supposed to be Jeff Bycott? <laughs> <laughs> So it was a full toss, yeah, very much buffet. Next ball is back of a leg, but maybe a wide. Always given the benefit. No, umpires. Is he signalling that? Yes, he is. Yeah. Just has a slight delay at this end. He has a little nod. It just takes his time. Oh, that's quite harsh. Just, ooh, just swinging away. As a bowler, you never like it when the umpire gives wides where it, when it reaches the keeper. So, Diamond, back into Taylor. And it's just uh, played down in front of himself and nicely uh, picks it up, throws it to mid-wicket. Um, so Matt Taylor just seems to be getting the hang of it now. He's, um, as, we, as you said earlier, Luke, that was nice, positive in defence. Hit that nice shot, though it was a full toss uh, at the beginning of the over. Um, so Jamie Diamond just battling a little bit with his rhythm. It's coming in, easy approach to the wicket. Nice classical action. Oh, and that looks a fine delivery, and he has got him. There's a little fake nick. The bowlers, the keeper went up straight away. Matt Taylor, not particularly enamoured with the decision, is shaking his head, looking back at the umpire. But he he had a wait, and he gave him out, and Jamie Diamond's into the game. Yeah, and this is Dumbleton's to lose now, you feel, Kevin, isn't it? A swarm and all over Calmore. And isn't it funny how one year you can dominate a final and then the next be dominated yourself, can't you? It is. Look, it's it's a tough ask to defend the, your, your champions uh, both years. You know, you're the scout for them to aim for. And there was a telltale sign. If you watch cricket, the way we get the replay again, when the batsman looks back after he's played the shot at the ball, there's a little look back. That normally means they've mm. nicked it. And he tried to look at the umpire and double bluff, but that looked out to me. Good decision. And the umpire's not a lot to do, but done it with quiet authority. Nice to see. No real dissent. Matt Taylor, I think, more disappointed mm. um, knowing that the stage that his side's at, at 39 for 5 as you say Luke Dumbleton's to lose definitely and uh, I think uh, James and I talk, uh, talk, talked about the semi-final there was a large lady who was just raising her voice at the far end of the pitch at mid-wicket and she was doing it for quite a while but <laughs> the game wasn't over till she sprung into song and it's not yet no it's she's clearing there. her throat well, Gareth Reid is a Dumbleton fan. He says he's devastated, he's unable to be at Lords today, but he's loving the coverage and the commentary, and especially with you, Kevin. He's, uh, he's very pleased to see his good pal Tom Green make it onto the field as well, the 12th man. Well-deserved chance to grace the hallowed turf. Bring it home, Dumbleys, which they are doing. They are doing, yeah. Gareth Reid, great uh, store at the club. Fine club man, has played a lot in the second team. Played the first team in, in his youth. Um, sadly, his job has not enabled him to play much this year, but he got a... He, he's never got 100 numbers when he was 96, 97. Nobody told him about it earlier this season in the game. Didn't tell him and he hold out. <laughs> oh, but a no. uh, good man, Gareth. He's uh, linked to the fire service. A uh, big friend of Tom Green's. And that's a lovely gesture for the mm. club captain to get him on the field. That that was a plan. I think they would they did talk to it about the umpires. And, yeah, lovely to see. Pity that Greedy's not with us, but uh, wish him all the best. And hope we're not um, 
uh, desecrating his eardrums too much. We've got John Flint off from Cesse Cricket as well. He's listening in, saying looks like Calmore have the upper hand at the moment, but plenty of overs left. That was earlier on. Definitely not the case now, John. Uh, give my regards to Jonathan, who I commentated, commentated with in the 2017 final. I'll tell you how he can get in touch in a minute. Oh. Was that edge? And Jamie, that... No, I, I'm not... I think that might have just come off the pad, but no this, wide. This given, one no. is just yeah, I think so. It must have hit something. Yeah, just off his pad, just off the pad. Didn't mm. carry the keeper. Just did a little bit, but that's a good over. Good comeback, mm. Jamie. Just looked. He was struggling for rhythm, and that is a big wicket. Matt Taylor looked. Just getting established. Um, so Calmore, all to do, and you've got um, Max Bailey uh, along with James Manning. Um, so we said earlier James Manning didn't bowl today and certainly bowled in some of the earlier rounds I'm not sure if he'd had picked up an injury of some sort mm. um, so yeah it's um, Ross Martin who's going to bowl out he's got two overs left in his spell and he'll be looking to get on yeah, it'll need uh, it'll be a, a needs a fantastic partnership and, and a great comeback if if uh, you do get it. I mean, you never know. A couple of big partnerships in the back in it, but 39 for five is a, it's a big ask, isn't it, for for Calmore? If you want to get in touch with us, you can do on Twitter at Live Sports FM. It's the same on Facebook. I mean, Lancashire got to the um, Royal London One Day Cup. I'll come back to that in a minute. It was defended that one just out into the onside. Yeah, Lancashire. I think was something like 80 for five. Uh, looking down a barrel against Sussex and then Dane Villas came in and just played mm. a fantastic innings and that's all it needs is somebody like Max Bailey just comes in hits a quick fire 100 all of a sudden Calmore are back in the game aren't they they are but have they um, you know there's a few pigs flying over there Luke uh, <laughs> have they have they been in this position these lads batting I'd Martin Bowles and Max Bailey works this out just lets it run away down to backward point Aaron Thompson who's a uh, a live wire. You don't take many ones to him. Keith had a confident shake of the head then. He did, Keith. So He's seen a lot in his yeah, time. So He's he seen said, no, these they games. haven't. I think Calmore, usually, they like chasing and they're usually pretty good at chasing as well. They usually knock off the runs pretty quickly. Um, yeah, this is a position, certainly in this competition, that they're not accustomed to at all. I, sp I spoke to, um, when I was delving in the pavilion, a couple of the Calmore lads were in there. Um, Stuart Bailey, Max's father with uh, Max Pegler. And they were loving the day. Um, Stuart did confess that he thought Dumbarton might have got a few too many. Mm. This was, you know, prior to Ben Johns' injury. You're asking about a DLS score. It's uh, 125 at the minute, and the compar at this stage, Dumbleton were 46 for one. Mm. And it's just that rebuilding process. But you know, a a cricket is a game where the ball is moving around a little bit. The slope is assisting the bowlers. They, you know, Ross Martin was always going to bowl the nursery end, just tends to take it away from the right-handers, and he's bowled a, a fine spell. He's into it. Bowling good, back of length. Um, Max Bailey is almost looks like decide I'll see him off. We don't any more wickets, but um, in he comes. Right arm over, bustling in, oh. and has a little dab at that outside the off stump. Max Bailey could have again let it go, but drawn into the shot because of the the state of the game. So by all accounts, Keith saying that um, Calmore last year they were in good positions and then collapsed and managed to scrape home. Whereas this year they've been very comfortable. So this year. No, um, no sort of. Uh, they've not really been in this position before, so it depends how they react. This is where they need all the batsmen now to step up. Yeah, and um, you know, often at this stage of the game, these two batters at six and seven would perhaps be coming in against slower bowlers. Now, Dumbleton have got another couple of seamers to come on, and I would venture to suggest that they'll be coming on before any any spinners the wicket has just got a bit of the old September dew in it mm. a little bit of movement there's a bit of movement in the air so Diamond into Manning and that's his um, first ball just pushes it away just falls over slightly but pushes away to mid on there's no run so Diamond has sort of settled into his spell now he always helps the bowler you get a wicket just settles you down again he's um, a nice Easy approach to the wicket. That, that looks like it's just nipped back a bit. He's held his 
Hands up there, Jamie Diamond. Uh, left alone by James Manning. It definitely just came back off the wicket. Good bowling. It's interesting, I don't know if you watch Luke in any games, not not that they probably would have factored this in here, but when the lights come on, yeah, that wickets tend to change a little differently. And we've a bit more cloud cover now than when Calmer bowled. Maybe a wide down the leg side, just getting a bit of movement there, Jamie Diamond, just going down the, the slope from the pavilion end, just past the batsman's hip. Good Was take by Scott Tremaine, but a wide yeah. given, yeah. They're very consistent, these umpires. Uh, anything down the leg side is a wide. Um, you could talk to me for hours and end about that, about how batsmen get away with a lot of stuff, but the bowl is just a, an inch away from your leg and get given a wide. Quite a few um, tweets coming in. We apologies, we have had quite a few through and we haven't had a chance to read them. I'll read them in a minute. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Last thing he wants to run out. Yep. <laughs> no, that was yeah, just on his hip again and Manning just falling over a little bit, just maybe just got through the thigh pad. He's just limping a tad. He certainly don't want any more injuries, Calmore. Um... But it's noticeable that the batsmen are searching for that boundary. They're searching for it. They're looking to come at the ball instead of let the ball come to them. Diamond comes in the ball, right arm over. Manning plays a nice shot. Just not quite time, but punch to mid on to Adam Stewart, and there's no run. OK, so we've had Megan uh, Brady, Davis knee Brady, watching Dumbleton in southwest France. Remembering Jim Smith and his dedication to the team. We've also got Sam Metcalf catching up with play via YouTube live stream. Josh Metcalf with a bowling action that only his mother could love. I presume that's his brother. <laughs> and then Josh Carver said he's watching from Australia. I'll come into that in a minute. It's just worked away. James Manning's off the mark now. Pushed into mid-wicket for a single. Off of... Uh, Jamie Diamond, just to say, yeah, Josh Carver came and played a few yeah. seasons at Dumbledon, lovely lad. Overseas player in yeah, 2007, yeah, well. Tommy B was only two great club, Dumbleton's ground only second to Lord in terms of being picturesque. Uh, and also got a Canary in Berlin, all the best of Dumbleton from Becky, Jake and Nell in Berlin. Sad we couldn't be there. So uh, thanks again. And also Jane Birch, good luck Dumbleton. Oh, that's, oh, that's, a, that's a lovely shot there from uh, Max Bailey. He's just lent on that one. Let it come to him, and that's a beautiful shot. Punch through the covers for four runs. Uh, last ball of the over, and any bowler will tell you, you don't really want to be going for boundary off your last ball. It festers, you walk away, and you berate yourself. But that is a lovely shot, Max Bailey. Just like his father lent on it through the covers, four runs. I'm going to uh, step out, and Keith's going to step in. Thanks again, Luke. Um, so, the game is uh, certainly weighted in Dumbleton's favour. Calmore now uh, 45 for 5. 15 overs have gone. So, the, the mainstay of their innings and uh, their batters have come and gone. Bailey and Manning having to do a repair job and then uh, try and launch some sort of attack. But, uh, Keith, uh, what do you think so far? Thanks very much, uh, Kevin. Very, very impressed by Ross Martin. And I'm just thinking back to yesterday and I'm wondering if uh, poor old Ray Doyle from that, which is listening, because uh, Martin, Ross Martin is going to bowl out his last over. Yeah. The lad's on fire. He's bowling superbly. He's got the rhythm, keeping going. Ray Doyle yesterday started magnificently, decided to hold himself back. And I think that was not, well, events have shown it wasn't the right decision as Ross Martin's first ball of his last over is defended. So... Uh, no, at the moment, clearly, uh, Dumbleton well on top and uh, it's going to be quite uh, difficult for uh, Calmore to get anywhere near them, in my humble opinion. I think, uh, you know, those wickets early on have just broken the back of them. Yep, certainly well summarised there, Keith. Um, uh, i just come to that point about the uh, Nantwich captain, Martin Bowles in, right arm. Again, just shaping, Max Bailey. No, sorry, that's... Uh, James Manning just pushing forward, no run into the covers, but it's very difficult as a captain. Don't be just bowling, but a captain, and you're thinking, I need to bowl that at oh the yeah. end, and it's hard for you to say, I'll go right through. That's often when you need some senior players. Yeah, no, no you're, you're I, in I, rhythm, I you're in for form. Him, I think, I really do yeah, feel I think for everybody Ray. would. Yeah, you know, everybody would. I, if I'm sounding critical, I don't mean to be. It's, you know, hindsight, it's very easy, isn't it? Mm -hmm. By the way, um, just as the next ball's been defended, uh, we're trying to keep up to date with the messages. So uh, we've got uh, good luck, uh, Dumbleton, from Jane Birch. Uh, she's watching on the live stream 
Shout out to her son Matthew, who's at the ground watching with uh, Dad, Alec Hopkins, who's the president of Dumbleton CC. Somebody you would know, Kevin. He is, yeah, Alec. Yeah, no, he's got a dynasty of uh, Alec's uh, granddaughters play at the club, and uh, his son plays. But uh, the talent definitely skipped a generation uh, with Paul Hopkins and his two daughters, particularly Grace, is a fine young talent. Emily as well, working hard at a game, and it's good to see. But Alec is uh, a very proud Dumbleton man, uh, president for years, does a lot of good work at the club. So Martin, he's, he's j now he's just in that, that moment, he's searching, he wants a five for, he's four for 12. Yeah. Does he risk a couple of boundaries to get his five? What do you think, or does he keep it tight? What would you do? For the team, you keep it tight, Kevin. No doubt in my mind, <laughs> penultimate ball for him. And it's tight. <laughs> and he's yeah, just seeing him off, I think, um, I think you've got to now, you've got to. I mean, uh, Sean Johnson's dismissal, uh, we're talking to James about it. And uh, yes, he probably thought he came two steps down the track, therefore he should be safe from an LBW. But uh, I think it was a good call. But, yeah. you know, why take two steps down to mm. someone at uh, Mar Ross Martin's pace who's clearly bowling well? It, uh, it didn't make a lot of sense to me, to be honest with you. It's almost a, a nervous reaction, nervous yeah. trigger. But that is a great spell. Really Ross is. Martin is finished back of the leg, eight overs, two maidens, four for 12. Magnificent effort, Ross Martin, and uh, you know, it's very early to be calling this out, but that is a match winning bowling performance. We'll see if it actually is the case. Um, and he's getting uh, due uh, congratulations for all his players running up, congratulating him, and uh, Rupert Salmon run a long way to shake his hand that's a, it's a great effort Ross Martin absolutely and uh, well if it's not the match winning spell then it means that somebody from Camel is going to have to play an absolute uh, blinding innings a uh, wonderful piece of bowling by Ross Martin and uh, you know he was the uh, player of the uh, semi-final uh, for his uh, all-round performance against uh, Rainford obviously it's not quite all-round today he only scored uh, 10 but uh, nevertheless that's a magnificent bowling performance mm -hmm. Jamie Diamond into bowl again from the pavilion end. Oh, it's hit him on the front leg. The ump a big appeal and it all concerted. You always wonder how does somebody from backward point see whether that's adjacent or not. But, uh, you know, must. His dad is an optician, uh, so he's got good eyes. <laughs> but, uh, no, uh, that looked a very, and again, a good decision. Possibly just outside the line playing a shot. Yeah. Jamie Diamond uh, really want that. And, he, and nicely, has a little... Well, well the shout. Good yeah, shout, shout, but I like you. I think it was uh, not quite there, or put it this way, you've got to give the benefit of the doubt to the batsman. But yeah. uh, good shout. And he's come down the wicket then, a little walk again there from uh, Max Bailey, trying to put Diamond off. I must uh, congratulate both umpires. They say in football, you know, good game, referee, you don't, you don't notice them. These umpires have been nice and authoritative and just quietly going about their business, signal to each other, communicating mm. well. Yep and added to the spectacles good to see and the same yesterday can I hasten to add exactly the same dimed in again uh, Max Bailey trying to pull him off he keeps sort of taking one or two strides forward before he bowls he was looking for a wide there and um, I'm often the believer well that, you know, if you're coming down and not playing a shot you're better off just stand, starting further out to begin with stand still let the ball come to you and hit it this is after he played that lovely cover drive mm. in the last over when he stood still and timed it through the covers so Jamie Diamond uh, just have one on that and he comes again right time over brilliant end oh and it is a little inside edge past backward square leg for one Jamie Diamond has a little laugh at the batsman went, goes past him um, filled it by Ross Martin and by the way uh, was <laughs> I think he was listening to you Kevin because he did stand still for that one uh, not an authoritative shot but uh, sort of taken on what you said and I watched him and he actually stayed right in his crease for that one yeah. and uh, got a toe into it but he got a run which is more he got like a run that's it yeah so it is often you know trying to put the bats the bowl on his length put some ideas in their mind rather than let them just settle in and that is a nice shot now Rape square cut that's short of a length back probably just a bit too short and James Manny has leant back and cut that in front of a point for four timed it very nicely and now that may sometimes the bowler who thinks oh I've got somebody walking at me and just the length and that's what uh, the old batters used to do try and walk at you and then stand back and in the crease and, and cut it before so it's a nice shot that's the 50 up for Calmore yep. yep 50, 50 for 5 
Yep, in 101 balls. So, uh, yep, still a long, long way for them to go. But a couple of fours recently. That's um, if I get the right scorecard, we'll see how many fours they've got in total. Not many, but uh, hopefully we'll find out in just a moment. They had a couple recently, but uh, that's, uh, don't recall many fours before that, to mine. No, and they've you know when you lose wickets um, often that's the focus of attention. That is a fine delivery to finish off Jamie Diamond coming in from the pavilion end slightly down the shirt. He's held it up and he's squared the batsman up and it's uh, got to um, Skeeper Cotramet, Scott Tremaine on the half volley, but it was uh, almost a leg cutter. So as we look at the end of the 17th over, Calmore 50 for five, and now they're be facing a new bowler, arguably the quickest of all of Calmore's bowling. Uh, Will Sharp, James and I had a little uh, laugh at the semi-final, Sharp by name, Sharp by nature, uh, again uh, family, uh, his mother, his younger brother played for years at Calmer and sadly uh, lost his life to a heart attack while watching a, a Liverpool game a few years back, but uh, his uh, grandfather here, Vernon and Christine, great stalwarts of the club, so it's lovely to see Will, um, very unassuming young man, but He's got talent. He's got talent. Sometimes he doesn't quite believe it, but he can bowl, this fella. Well, let's see him in action now as he comes in. Oh, hello. Bit of a miscommunication, but they've scrambled through for one to a short mid-wicket, and that's a fine start. Yeah, you always the bowler. You like that first ball, just on a length, nice and straight. Um, and he's bowling the end that will suit him, the nursery. He tends to uh, nip it back, so the slope the other way will help... Uh, combat anything that might go down leg side but here we Just go so it'll be interesting you see the keeper Tremaine gone back Dumbleton still yeah. keeping field up got ring field we're into the uh, 18th over James Manning on strike five from 14 balls facing Will Sharp he lets that one go outside the off stump often you can tell when uh, bowlers have got rhythm or not is whether the ball carries to the, the mm. keeper. Again, you see it just just swerving away at the end, but didn't quite. He's just pushing the front line, I think. Just moved his marker down a bit. The umpire, nice. I like that umpire. Just a quiet word. Just said, yeah, just getting close. Um, so, just moved his marker down. Here we go again. Just adrenaline trying. Nice run up to the wicket up and bowls. And that's a good delivery. Beats the outside edge. And just to emphasise your point, Gavin, good carry as well. Uh, Scott Tremaine standing quite a way back. We're marking about uh, Max Bailey, who's on uh, the non-strikers end. We're standing up to a lot of the uh, Cowmore bowlers. But uh, Scott Tremaine, obviously the extra pace of the Tumbleton uh, bowlers, he's standing a fair way back. But uh, that came to him uh, just below chest height, about the right height, I would suggest, for a keeper. And that suggests uh, the good pace that uh, Will Sharp is showing. Here he comes again. That's a lovely shot. Just pitched it up, and that's a great shot down the ground. Um, it looks like it could go. There might be a bit of a dive in for Salmon. Dive, I think he's oh, and a there. leaping Salmon has pulled it back. And uh, bowled in Barley Horn. Good teamwork there, but it, it, that was a fine shot. That was a good cricket shot. James Manning punched it down, back past the bowler. Or Sharp pitching it up a little bit, but good fielding, Dumb uh, Dumbleton there. You know, 50 for 5. Game's not won yet. Need to yep. put it in, back your bowlers. And captain leading by example. Well, that's shaped away nicely. That no, down the slope, too nicely. <laughs> yeah, given it started it wide, but that carried again. You know, this carry all the way to uh, Scott Tremaine. Yeah, just wide, it's carried yeah. on, but that's okay. You know, we've got we've got runs in the bank. It's not a problem. Absolutely. Um, and again, bowlers are getting used to the slope, used to the angles that it does when you play on fairly flat grounds. It's uh, Tricky. Bailey comes forward, punches it outside. A brilliant stop, but backward point by Aaron Thompson, who is uh, lightning there. He's taken a divot, put it back. Little Aaron who bowled may get a chance to bowl his leg spin. Didn't get a bat today, but he is. He's been an integral part of this team throughout this cup run. Um, brilliant in the field, almost John T. Rose-esque, which is saying something. James would know of Colin Bland. Yeah, um, I remember Colin And Blaine. he is, he's slightly shorter in stature, but he is a, a magnificent fielder. Oh. And again, Play just... Yeah. Sorry, Keith Max, but he, again, he's just fidgeting a bit. He's just walking down, you see there, and yet yeah, not... Yeah. 
And this is where you want your other batter to say, look, Max, just start out, stand still, let the ball come. You need that conversation just to reinforce because they know it's difficult from here, but these two have probably got to build a platform for them to get anywhere close. They have to, because uh, we don't know the state of uh, Josh Metcalf. We're not quite sure how no. fit he is. And then we are getting into uh, the uh, tail of Ben Parry, uh, Liam Carty and uh, Steve Wright, who uh, don't not normally called upon because uh, Calmore are in a position that uh, they've not encountered, really, for certainly not this season. And uh, as I said last season, it was the other way around. They tended to get in winning positions, then lose wickets in the middle and scramble home. So uh, this position of being right behind the uh, four ball or six ball, whatever you call it, I was well behind the run rate and everything else, is a new situation for them. And these two really, a lot on their shoulders. Oh, diamond in again, right arm over, pavilion end. And he's just holding it up against the slope. And he's obviously got the batsman where they keep playing that involuntary shot outside off stump. Just nipped away, good delivery. And he's quite light on his feet, Jamie, but he just does a bit more than you expect. He's been, again, a, you know, uh, a great uh, servant this year in this competition. He's been very consistent. I'll have a look at his figures in a minute after this ball, which I think will be a wide. Yep, there we go. Commentators uh, <laughs> cursed down the slope. Uh, good take by Scott Tremaine, who's probably, you know, I'd hasten to say from here, slightly deep at the nursery end. Uh, wicket just comes off the square. I'd be with Jamie's pace just a tad closer. Just go back to Jamie Darmull. I'll, I'll give you his figures at the end of the over for the competition this season. At the end of this ball, rather. Which... Uh, it's defended, no runs, so I've got a bit of time to tell you that Jamie Diamond is top wicket over with Dumbleton, 12 wickets in the competition this season. But I think more impressively, his average is only just below 11, as economy rate uh, 3.6. So, uh, you know, certainly is, uh, and as far as the stats are concerned, probably their top bowler, although clearly Ross Martin has uh, bowled superbly today. But uh, throughout the competition, just bearing out what you said, actually, Kevin, he's been uh, their consistent performer with the ball. Oops. Interesting there, just seen a little bit of a slip on his front foot. Uh, wicket was used yesterday, he wouldn't known initially looking from the media centre, but just his front foot just slipped a bit, he's creating a little hole, maybe off-putting, but um, yeah, no, it, interesting enough, Dumbleton have not fallen into the trap, so where they, a lot of sides send the sweepers out, deep cover, backward square, they still kept the ring in, they still think, you know, you're under pressure, Calma, you've got to hit boundaries to get anywhere near this game, so... Well, we're not far off halfway. Uh, we're in the middle of the 19th over, so we're very close to halfway, and they're nowhere near 100. And, uh, and obviously, the five down is uh, symptomatic, is of problems. I was just thinking, actually, back to that uh, sort of uh, scrambled run just now, where there was real hesitation. I bet they wouldn't have hesitated; it was 50 for naught. No. But when you're 50 for five, and you think, should I take the quick single? Suddenly, you think, I don't want to be run out. It's no, great it game of psychology cricket. I love it. Mm -hmm. Certainly is there again. Look, he's looking good, James. Nice. That's positive in defence. But you know, I dare I say that you come on and bowl now, and you just bowl straight back of a length. Then it's going to take a good batter to be plonking you back over your head or into the stand, mm -hmm. uh, especially at this situation, which is all Dumbleton need to do. They just need to be play smart cricket um, and just squeeze a bit in the field as he comes in bowls. Last ball the over. And it's another fine delivery. Back of a leg, Manning, forward, press in defence. And Jamie Diamond, fine over there. That's uh, five overs, one for 19. And just, you know, he bowls at, at, at the critical times in games, you know, when mm. times at sides are looking to attack. But he's, he's done a good job yet again. Just the one wider from that over. So, uh, yeah, I mean, we've been praising Dumbleton. They're well on top. So... Uh, just uh, one thing to say, not being critical, Kevin, but first of all, can I actually give praise to uh, Peter Borman? It was Peter who provided the uh, background information of the players that I uh, circulated to everybody, which is very, very helpful. Thanks very much, uh, Peter, and I'm sure you're proud of how well your son Tommy has done. If I've just got one little criticism of Dumbleton team, can you try and get them to think of some better nicknames? nicknames yeah, yeah, poor, poor. I saw a few. Will days. Sharp, nickname? Sharpie. Sharpie. Yeah, one or two more we'll mention as uh, the next over from uh, from the aforementioned uh, Sharpie. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, you might call him Blunt Boy. That might be slightly different. It's almost uh, Australian who have a very uh, yeah. limited imagination. Ollie in Hall, I'm not sure I can give his. Uh, you can guess what it is. Uh, and I'll probably not <laughs> say it on the radio just in case. Scott Tremaine is Scotty. Ross Martin yeah. is Rossy. Yeah. Tommy but Borman, more original one here. Tommy B. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there was an so app that, that gave uh, nicknames, but it wasn't uh, very good. 
and that's beating him again on the outside edge. Max Bailey again looking to get at, you know, plays the shot he should have played in practice thereafter. But Will Sharp getting it through, just relaxing now into his spell. See, look, and that's just gone through, hit into Scott Tremaine's midriff, and he's a good, what do you think there, Keith? How many yards back is that? That's a... Yeah, it's 15, uh, 20? 15, yeah, not quite a cricket pitch, uh, about a three-quarter cricket pitch, and uh, yeah, he's way back. And also something about Max Bay, and I'm going to compare him to uh, somebody else in just a moment, in terms of how he perhaps he could... Well, let's do it now as he plays the next ball defensively for no run, because he's a young lad, not quite sure, he's a little bit older, I think, than Tommy Borman, but not much, you know, we're talking about a young teenager, you know, teenager, 18, 19. Look how Tommy Borman played. You know, and I think you could take a leaf out of his book because he seems to me far too fidgety. We've commented it on that. I don't think he's normally like that, although I'm not sure I've seen him bat because when I've seen Camel, they tend to run away with games. But mm. uh, I think he could learn something from the way Tommy Borman plays. At least that one he did, you know, not fidget so much. So uh, maybe he's listening to us, Kevin. Yeah, no, I think so. Can we make a shout it out from the... Uh you know, put a plaque up on the, uh, the balcony. Actually, I say that, he walked right across his stumps, actually. Yeah, now no, I've seen the replay, so he really is. Sort of he just, you can see from a distance, they're just struggling because they've not been in this position and he's thinking, you know, do I stick or twist? Mm. I'm not scoring, pressure on, I need to score a boundary, but it's not quite in my areas to hit. And so he's sort of getting caught between and betwixt. But, as I said earlier, good bowling, Will Sharp again, back over length, nice and straight. You miss, I hit. Does a bit, maybe nick off. But yeah, if we if Dumbledon keep the boundary balls away, then they're well on the way. Oh, absolutely. As I said, one more ball, and we're at the half st halfway stage, and uh, 56 for five. I mean, if we had one of those uh, things that tell you the percentage winning, I'm not sure Carmel would actually feature on it at the moment. Yeah, I think keepers said the win viz yesterday. Definitely, it's in Dumbledon's favour. You'd think it would probably be. I would think you're probably looking at 85, 15, maybe. That's being kind. Um, and uh, Dumbleton, well, I think we're 85 in 20. 85 for... OK. Two. So we're just going to have the drinks break, uh, Kevin. We're going to have a swap over. Just before you go, back to the nicknames, yeah. because there is one exception. <laughs> Adam Stewart, the groundsman and the Saturday captain, very nice to know that, known as Chode. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and is there a brief explanation you can give on air? Yeah, not on air, no. I think that's... Uh, <laughs> In that case, then we'll let you hand over to Thank Luke. <laughs> well, they nearly stitched me up. <laughs> OK, let's uh, just uh, mute the mic there. Let's, uh, it'll be uh, Luke Edwards uh, coming in to do the uh, commentary. I shall still carry on. Well, I'm not so much being a pundit, more uh, having, a, having a little bit of light humour with the uh, nicknames. But just let you know that the players are taking a mid-innings uh, break. Uh, but absolutely no doubt, as you heard from me and Kevin discussing who are on top, Dumbleton 50, sorry, Camel Sports 56 for 5, chasing 241. The run rate is near, well, not far off, 10 and over. And uh, it's looking uh, pretty dire for uh, the uh, defending champions, and they're going to need something really spectacular. Uh, as I said, we also got the uh, interest about whether uh, Josh uh, Manning, uh, sorry, uh, Josh Metcalf, who's due in at uh, number 8, so uh, the next man in whether he's fit because he bowled six very tight overs for 16 runs but then I'm not sure we saw him again after that and uh, we we'll wonder whether he's fit enough to uh, actually uh, take any further part I'm sure he will because he will be needed but um, after that I think we're into uh, what is known in the trade as the tail Now Keith I just went for a, I went for a comfort break before I came on air just then and uh, you know I've been talking about uh, teams not coming here defending it Calmore winning it last year maybe not defending it I was just chatting to a, a guy then in the toilet and he said oh yeah we've done it played for Shipton under Witchwood in 2003 and he, he said that um, he said basically he said it can be done he said we came here the year after pressure was on us and we knocked off 130 in no time so it can be done and I think they were the last team to do it if I'm right you yeah, probably are, what actually. What else grained, actually? 2008, uh, the last team to do it. Yeah. My apologies. I didn't really... When I did my research, I made a note of the teams who'd won two competitions, but I didn't necessarily make a note of those who won uh, two in succession, and uh, perhaps I should have done. Uh, and uh, the way it's... Uh, we got it in the uh, programme, which is very, very helpful, but uh, it always gives a side batting first, so sometimes yeah, they lost, yeah. sometimes they won, and... Uh, when we're trying to put it together. I think we reckon Cissé were the last team. Have I pronounced them rightly? Cissé. Cissé. Cissé, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good Yorkshire name. Sounds, sounds to me more French, Cissé. Well, John, uh, that's where John Flint is from. He, he tweeted us early, and if you want to tweet us as well, it's at Live Sports FM, and uh, we're on Facebook as well. 
Yes, no, please do tweet us at Live Sport FM or if, as well NV Play Cricket as well, who are providing the uh, video stream that you're seeing. We're providing the uh, words of wisdom on top of it. And as I said, if you're looking at the stream at the moment, uh, just the players having their uh, mid-innings break. And uh, as I said, we're halfway through. And yeah, mm. just looking at uh, the figures in red on the scoreboard, Luke, if I was Cowmore, I'd be feeling a bit 186 off 120. Mm -hmm. And also, well, the clouds are rolling in. If you're Calmore, are you doing a bit of a rain dance? I mean, it probably won't matter in terms of Duckworth Lewis, will it? But, um, no. yeah, it's gone a bit greyer overhead. Probably worth just quickly running. Uh, I've got, no, I haven't got time. We're just about to restart. So, Luke, back to you for ball by ball commentary. Uh, yeah, so it's Jamie Diamond continuing from the pavilion end. He's bowling to Manning. Manning, that flashes at that one but it's down the leg side and a wide given and yeah Calmore just struggling he needs to deal in boundaries and they're not doing they're only getting singles aren't they and uh, I mean brilliant effort fight by Dumbleton the way they've just strangled Calmore from what Kevin was saying they've, they've had plans and they've stuck to them they have they only live don't be critical of them those 14 extras are all wides Diamond in again bowls Manning down the pitch and drives to mid on where it's fielded it was a misfield but there's no run Holly Stewart was a field it was only a slight misfield it uh, there were a yeah, single it on there yeah. it was quite deep at mid on but it was hit very firmly so there's no chance of a run there uh, he's just uh, might go into detail but he was scratching himself while I think the ball hit him <laughs> <laughs> he's diving up to the wicket balls and Manning again drives up to the same man at mid on this time it's slightly to his right and there is a single and he take that very quickly gets through Manny moves on to 9 58 for 5 just something that Rich was stressing and uh, you know they've got to turn the noughts into ones which is what Manning did there as soon as he played the shot wasn't too dissimilar to before but it was slightly wider of Stuart but he went straight away and even though they're in a precarious position they've got to turn the noughts into ones the ones into twos falls into sixes is Diamond into Bailey again looking for a quick single and again a good diving stop there Dan the, Holland, who the young man it. Borman, is it? it was Dan Holland who fielded that one. Thank you, Keith. I've been now seeing the pictures and know their nicknames. I'm getting to know who the Dumbleton players are. Carl's just rolling, but it's to, the, it's to the left of us, so I think it's missing. I think um, we'll be all right. I think we'll be, uh, we'll be okay. Breeze is blowing, the flags are billowing away as they come in again. See, it slips slightly there as he bowls, but in the end, it's dug out there by. Bailey not the first time actually just before you come on air uh, as you were taking a comfort break Luke um, you know uh, Jamie Dalman did slip in exactly the same position so well there's a bit of loose turf there I can't believe it's wet so maybe a bit of loose turf there that's uh, causing him to do that here's Diamond again this time Bailey smartly forward just nudges it down towards third man wants two he's going to come back for two as oh there's going to be a run out is there oh he just scrambles back it was Manning who in the end dives and it was a bit of yes, no, yes, no. They could have made two and there was too much indecision and in the end there was nearly a run out. Ollie Sharp fielded that, but that was what I was saying to Kevin just now, uh, Luke. You know, if that was if they were 59 for naught, that'd have been two. But they hesitated. That score ball pressure was meant that in the end it was just a single where it really should have been two. And I think young Max Bailey just showing his nerves there, understandably so. Diamond into Manning who plays and misses at that one. It, oh, eventually it's a belated wide called there. Which means the that they're the top scorer now for uh, Calmore. The umpire Peter Ogborn. Yeah, no, they're the top scorer because so far it was Will Bruce to be 14. So at the moment, extras are the top scorer. And as I said, if there is something that uh, Dalton just been a little bit erratic was, all those 15 are wides. Diamond and again bowls and again down the leg side. It's going to be another wide. And it's going to be another wide. Yeah. Well... Yes, no, the umpires have been consistent. We've spoken about that before, so, uh, you know, we're very, we're very pleased that um, Anthony Blundell and Peter Ogborn, the two umpires, you know, have been consistent with their decision-making, certainly as far as wise are concerned. Diamond balls, that's a full one. It skews off Manning's bat and through for a single. We've had another tweet in from Dementia Doula. He says, thanks for your great commentary, watching at home with the dog, sponsor of Dumbleton Women's Cricket, now part of the WESL, Mary Merheim. 
that's from Mary then. And we've also got Jane, long time Dumbly. My dad Richard is at Lords and Robert watching from Italy. Keep going, Dumblies. Well, the Dumblies are doing well. 62 for five. Here's Calmore at the end of the 21st over. So I uh, seem to have a lot of tweets from Dumbleton, which is great. Keep tweeting. But uh, let's hear from Calmore. Sure, they need your support out there. Jimmy Manning and Max Bailey really could do with uh, knowing that. Uh, you know, they've got uh, Hampshire behind them, so uh, let's hear from you as well. But for all of you who tweet and all of you listening to us, it's uh, great to have you following us, and uh, thank you very much for your support. So, Ollie Sharp, aren't Ollie they? Sharp, yeah, continuing from the nursery end, here he is now, coming up past the umpire, bowling to Manning, and down the left side, another wide. So, Carmel's run's coming at the minute, almost in extras. Yeah. Yeah, no. well, just think what the score might be if it wasn't for extras. Be uh, even I would say 17 or 6, they'd be 48 for 5. Wow, <laughs> yeah, you see, so. Guess what subject you used to teach at college, Luke? <laughs> to fair, I've been away, I didn't know how many extras there were. <laughs> oh, wait, it's on the scoreboard, isn't it? There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Next one is pulled away, that's a welcome boundary there. Good shot by Manning, a bit shorter that time from Sharp, and Manning will be breathing a huge sigh of relief. Good shot that by James Manning. Yep, I'll just check. Is that his first boundary? Let's have a look. No, he's had one before, so that's his second boundary. And uh, yeah, as you said, a welcome boundary. And uh, I think earlier, as I said, I was criticised for not being very good at maths. So uh, I think uh, I must misjudge that calculation before. But no matter, it's a uh, welcome boundary. And uh, Will Sharp just dropping a little bit short there. And uh, just shows, you know, that, uh, yep, you've got to punish the bad balls, no matter what the score is. Unless you start getting a few more runs on the ball, the pressure will mount and that will help just keep their noses up and nothing else. Manning on strike again, again down leg side and again another wide. Uh, Manning's vice captain of his team apparently keeps a cool head under pressure as well, so he'll need it. And again another wide. The run rate's up to nearly nine and a half though. Yeah. No, he's just lost his radar a bit, uh, Will Sharp, in this over. That's, uh, you know, two wides and a four. And uh, that one clearly was. It was already on leg stump before he started swinging uh, down the leg side. And, uh, you know, I'm not saying Rupert Sam will be worried, but uh, just needs the young lad just to get his line back. Sharpen again, and this time it's defended on the front foot by Manning. Fielded there at cover, and there's no run. Much better from Sharp there with his line. And the fielder down there is uh, giving him a shout out because uh, Peter Borman told me particularly about him. He said there'll be no singles to Aaron Thompson in the covers well on that occasion Peter you were dead right no run taken to him there Azza as he's known to his friends gun fielder so that's why you don't take a single to him here's sharp in balls hitting the pad big appeal umpire's not interested he's already well he's called a no ball that's why he's not interested <laughs> uh, he's looking at the crowd he's enjoying it big grin on his face nodding oh yes it is almost <laughs> pantomime season and there he is joining in umpire Anthony Blondell <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It was all very pantomime, wasn't yeah, it? Then? It was. That was lovely, though. I, I love a bit of interaction like that. And uh, no, I didn't uh, study it. Uh, Will Sharp uh, sort of looking a little uh, disgruntled, looking to the heavens a bit. He knows he's not quite delivering in this over. Three wides, no ball, and a four. Well, we've only had two legitimate deliveries at the minute. Here is Sharp in. Pulled, and this time it was a pull and a miss. Nothing signalled this time by the umpire. We'll have a look at that one, Luke. You have a look at it with us. Yeah, way else. Oh, it's close to being a wide, you know, just on the offside wide. I think if he'd have left it, it would have been. It was mm. quite outside the off stump, but because he took a step across to try to pull it, I think he made it. Well, he made the umpire's mind up for him, but could easily have been another wide that one if he'd stayed in his crease. Sharp into Manning, and it just plays it down into the onside and runs a single, comfortable single. 70 for five. Manning off strike. Manning's faced a full over without, we haven't even had a full over yet. We've still got two more left in this. Yep, two more balls left. It's a we a saw a nine ball over. over earlier in the innings, didn't we, as well? So, Yeah, this one will be, uh, yep, yeah, as long as he bowls two legitimate deliveries, this will also be a nine ball over. Here's Sharp again into Bailey. Bowls Bailey coming down the track and again, umpire doesn't signal, I think maybe because Bailey went after it. Let's have a look again. No, that time was all right. It just yeah. swung away after it went past the blue line, so all good. 
An interesting point going back to something Kevin said, uh, Luke. Uh, that one did not carry to Scott Tremaine. So he's lost that sort of va va vu because earlier those were going through to Tremaine. He was standing a long way back, but that one bounced at least once, if not twice. Sharp again in balls and again wide. And played and missed, and this time umpire again is happy with that one, so it's ended the over. 70 for five. Calmore, they are wanting another 172 to win off 108. Bailey, 7 off 27, which just shows how tough going it is. And Manning is 15 off 31. Well, we're looking at uh, the uh, run rate, and it's pretty obvious that uh, Calmore don't need a graph to uh, tell us. But thank you very much for showing the graph that, <laughs> yes, they are below uh, the uh, run rate here. Uh, looks like we've got a change of bowling. Let's focus on that. Mr. Mr. Holland's coming on. Miles Holland, yeah. Miles Holland, yeah. He uh, oh, supported his captain very well in the uh, he did. Dumbleton innings. He's just turned 18. His dad runs a bar at Dumbleton. I imagine that'll be doing a good trade tonight if uh, Dumbleton do get over the line. They're probably, they've got one foot over the line at the minute. Pete Bullman suggests that's the only reason he gets selected for the team, because his dad runs the bar, but I'm sure that's well, not that's right. That's very harsh. You know, let's focus on the other fact that uh, his, uh, yeah, the two Holland brothers, their uh, dad uh, played for Camel, Nick, as well as playing for Dumbleton. So there's a lot of connections between the two clubs yeah. then, isn't there? In Here fact, he is, Holland then, first delivery into Manning, bowls and hit on the pad. Umpire's not interested, he's going to run through for a leg by. 71 for five. First non-wide extra. Yes, it's uh, and actually the two teams. I've got to, I'll, I'll find it Oilu, but these two teams have played each other before. Now they're not exactly neighbours, so and then it's not in a cup competition. So uh, bear with me, they want to find the right sheet of paper, but it's not the first time these two sides have played together. I'll just run through the card: Ben John's caught by Tom Borman, bowled Ross Martin for two. Mark Lavelle bowled by Ross Martin for four. Oh, that's hit on the pad there again. Bailey, they're going to scamper through for another single leg by, and there's. In the end, I think it hit the batsman, and uh, they have managed to scamper through for another single. So it moves on to 72 for five. Matt Taylor caught Scott Tremaine ball, James Diamond for nine. Sorry, let me move the mouse for you. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit erratic. It, it is a bit erratic. It's a response to my silver touch. So where did you get to? You got to uh, Matt Taylor. Yeah, and then Sean Johnson ball by Ross Martin first ball. Uh, this partnership's going along slowly, but they're still going along as Holland balls again and another leg side wide. Yep. It's catching now. Milo, as his nickname, he's bowled one now. 73 for five, so it's ticking away in wide. So, just give me the opportunity to tell you these sides played once before in 1984 when uh, Dumbleton visit Cowmore. They're on a tour. That's, uh, I'm not sure if many tours take place. I might look to James a minute. I don't know if teams come to Alvinley on tour or vice versa. It was something that was uh, quite prevalent years ago, but uh, not quite so much now. I'll give you the scores of that later on. Holland into the wicket, down the track again, Manning, but he's in behind defending that one. And there's no run. Dumbleton, 202 for six declared. Bold Cam, eight for 128. Josh Baker says, good luck to Dumbleton from a Goat Acre fan. Please don't let Calmore win it again. <laughs> that's on Twitter. Ooh. He's, uh, yeah. There, so that, uh, we'll give people the history behind that. That's, <laughs> I think there's a reason why that uh, tweet's just been given. But thanks very much for getting in touch with us. Uh, but uh, Dumbles to win the Village Cup again today. Playing amazingly well. My dad, Richard Lane, is in the crowd. And I'm glad Hoppy Hopkins, brackets, Paul didn't play. That one's uh, tried to be pulled there by Manning and it just didn't really go anywhere and it's picked up by the bowler and there's no run. Real toe-end shot, but uh, yeah, I'll wait till the end of the over, but I'll explain the uh, <laughs> the tweet from the uh, go-taker fan. But so thanks for getting in touch with us and I hope you don't mind, but obviously I'll just explain uh, the couple of games that Calmore and go-taker have played in the cup and uh, that's for... Might explain some way why uh, perhaps go take. Having said that, I did watch the quarter final and I thought it was played in a superb spirit between the two sides. So let's make that very clear from the outset. But back to the cricketers. Holland getting up quicker as he gets to the wicket and down the leg side again. Another wide. 74 for five. And it's just kind of 
meandering along at the minute, Keith, isn't it? It really is, yes. So you can sort of tell by the murmur of the crowd. It's uh, just a sort of little murmur at the moment. We're actually above the uh, Dumbleton supporters, so you think they will be uh, much more vocal. But uh, we've had to turn the volume down occasionally on our FX mic, just so you can still hear us. But uh, now at the moment, there's just this little murmur, this little hubbub. And, uh, but Camel won't be confident at all just yet that they're back in the game. Again pulled and again a leg side wide. <laughs> so it's another wide 75 for five. But Keith, when did Calmore go for it? When did he start, you know, trying to hit the big sixes and fours? Because at the minute they're just kind of it's going out with a whimper, isn't it? Personally I still think they I, I think you just gotta I, I will get to a hundred. Try and get there sort of in the next well, 25, let's say uh, the next uh, certainly before 30 overs. And I know that may seem a tall order 10 overs, 140. So, no, actually, I'm rethinking it, uh, Luke, as I speak. And I think <laughs> the sooner the better, actually. The sooner the better. Holland in, Manning in behind that one will scramble another single. If that gets through quite comfortably, 76 for five. I mean, you might argue that, I mean, how many runs have we had off this over? We've had uh, two, three, four, five. We've had six off the over, but then, of course, the run rate's nearly ten. That's still not enough. Um, I, was, I, I don't know enough about the Camel batting this year, purely because they've never really been asked to bat this low. So uh, whether they feel they've got some big hitters left, uh, but like I said, I don't know what the situation is with Josh Metcalf. That's hit. My, uh, Bailey there didn't really know where the ball had gone it dribbled out into the offside it's picked up no run end of another long over and it's uh, 76 for 5 as uh, Miles Holland walks away laughing and uh, Keith explain Go Acre and Calmore it actually really goes back to last season because they play Go Taker. I think it was the uh, round of 16 no the round of 8 so uh, no round, round of 16 because it was a quarter final this year so it was the round before um Cut long story short, um, Calmore won by losing fewer wickets and they were batting second and I think things got a little bit tetchy out on the field as they were sort of getting closer and closer. There's a lot more I heard but I've only really heard one side of the story so I'm not going to say too much but things got very tetchy and uh, I know that there was not a lot of love lost between the sides and the reason I can say that is that uh, we spoke to the umpires for this year's game because they met in the quarter final and the umpires I'll tell you what they said to me in a moment as uh, it's Ollie Sharp sure. starting a new over yeah from the nursery end and well surprise surprise it's down the leg side and another leg side wide that is a 25th extra of the innings yeah really macking up um, when they were told they'd been appointed for this game they uh, said oh no <laughs> they were really I mean I'm done yeah. you know sometimes when you're a football referee and you think oh, that's a local derby I don't really want to do that but when the two umpires were told that yeah you've got uh, go take a cow more in the quarter final they both said oh no don't really fancy that one and that was the legacy of last season but I'll come back to this season Malin on strike to Sharp playing a bit of a waft outside off stump and it's through to the wicket keeper Tremaine and there's no run and I'm going to give credit to the go-taker, cap well, both captains, Mark Lavelle for Cowmore, but equally uh, Ed Wilkins of uh, go-taker, because the game was played in a very, very good spirit. And the example of that was that uh, Mark Lavelle was, um, he was given out caught behind, but he waited for the umpire's signal, which he's entitled to do. Let's wait as the next ball comes in. into Manning, he's forward, and Sharp feels that with his foot in the end, stops it and intercepts it and picks the ball up, no run. He was um, entitled to wait, and as soon as the arm put the finger up, he walked. All right, He just wasn't sure he'd hit it. And as he was walking, the bowler started to give Mark Lavelle a piece of his mind. And Deb Wilkins, the captain, leapt straight in and told his bowler where to go. And the umpires were full of praise for Ed Wilkins, the captain, a go-taker. And I think that did a lot to cement relationships between the side. But Manning on strike, forward. A nice, solid defensive push down to mid off and he gets a single so uh, you know I, th I think uh, I would say the damage has been repaired but uh, it was really the legacy of the game before and as I said I'm not going to say on air because I've only really had one side of the story but it was a very very touchy game and as I said the fact that Camor won on losing fewer wickets doesn't always mean that uh, I saw a game this year about Waltham against Raysbury that was won by White Waltham on losing fewer wickets and a fabulous game in all aspects again batsman coming down the crease trying to uh, meet Sharp there but Sharp beats him for pace again and through to the wicket keeper 
a little bit of a waft and a play and a miss and no run. 98 balls remaining, 164 runs to win for Calmore. And probably what would be one of the greatest Village Cup victories if they won it from here. Well, we actually are at 10 and over exactly now, Lou. That's big. Oh, reverse, uh, little reverse scoop there. And he's going to be two. And Max Bailey moves on to nine. Yeah, he's a nice little uh, scoop there from Bailey. Dill scoop, I think they call it. Only can mm. tell a correctly dill, Sean, when he invented it. You have to start playing these shots now. You really do. It's, uh, he's got to be inventive. Can't die wondering, can they? No, no, you mustn't. We'll sing to... I mean, imagine what it'd be like if you got to 120 for nine in the 40th yeah. over, you know. You no, know, you, 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 he's doing the right thing. I know he seems a bit nervous and fidgety, but, uh, you know, he's got to start getting some runs. Yeah, yeah the wicket-keeper. Batsman in the squad, Max Bailey. Plays that one back to the bowler. End of the over, 80 for five here at Ori Sports FM. Luke Edwards and Keith Higgins on commentary with you. Currently, if you want to get in touch with us on Twitter, we've had a lot of tweets and... You can get in touch with us at Live Sports FM and also on Facebook. Oh, it took us about three hours to find it. Yeah, <laughs> it's been, it wasn't where we thought it would be, but we found it in our feeds now. So apologies if you have tweeted in, we're only just reading them out. But we are up to date with them now. So if you do tweet in, we will get them. No, I really do appreciate your support. Thank you ever so much. It's Because uh, uh, here we are talking away and it's always nice to know that people are listening to us and enjoying what we're saying. And I hope we're sort of relaying it. It's uh, not quite the excitement of yesterday at the moment. It could change, but uh, certainly, you know, to know that people are listening and enjoying uh, what we're saying or responding to what we're saying is uh, very reassuring. Yeah, in our last cricket coverage of the cricket season. And it's young... Holland to continue, Miles Holland from the pavilion end, it's knocked away, swept down there and it's four runs, a welcome boundary there from James Manning, clipped away on the onside and 88 for five now, need a few more of them, maybe they feel Holland's the one they need to go after now with him being a young man, it might just put him off his line and length a little bit. They need some big overs, and uh, usually you do target someone, don't you? Uh, most teams, uh, usually they sort of have a look at the opposition and think that's the bloke to target. Uh, here's some conversation had with Kevin about uh, Dumbleton against uh, Cowmore in the first innings. So Holland in, and that's a big hit, that's six. Well, have some of that, Miles Holland, says James Manning. He has absolutely smoked that. That was heading towards the scoreboard next to us. It just went absolutely flat as soon as he hit it. It, it was a lovely it. shot, first six of the innings for uh, Cowmore. Uh, James Gardner was near as that, but I noticed James had his hand out ready to catch the ball as it came flying through. As I said, we do feel a bit vulnerable here in our commentary position because uh, if uh, Jimmy Manning or any of the batsmen actually do connect well, it could come through our open window and I'm standing, staring rather right into it. And if it comes straight to me, well, my cricket prowess, I think uh, those who know saw me play cricket know what the result will be. 50 partnership up between these two as well as Holland comes in again to Manning. Manning will get a single so a welcome partnership at the minute between these two and this is what happened in the, in the Dumbleton innings like once the batsman got set mm. you, you can get in and play your shots they're in and set now these two aren't they so no. now they've got to play the shots and this business of targeting is I was talking to Kevin about whether they had a plan to target Steve Wright uh, the opening bowler for uh, Calmore who's usually so economical Remember last year, Luke, over six maidens, two for five. Not quite the same today. And they did say that he was one baller they spoke about. Let's wait for the next Holland ball. Holland in, and it's down the leg side. Is it? No. Must, uh, must have just no, grazed the pad, just, I think. Yeah, just one for the over left, he says. Says the umpire. It was... Oh, oh. Feel it kind of swung through. Wow. Yeah. That was a hell of a ball. It was outside. It beat him outside the off stump. Yeah. Swung across it all three leg stumps. Side. Yeah, it didn't go leg side. That's wow. why it started off stump and swung across. Yeah, what like a ball you say. by Mars Holland. Wow. Too good. With the cloud cover on there. Pigeons just pecking away at the grass behind Holland as he runs in and, and bowls. And there's another oh. scoop. And there's that. That isn't going to be leg side because I think he moved to the offside. And yeah. It's another dot ball. Oh, yeah, as well. There's nowhere near. It's well down offside. Yeah, he, uh, yeah. I think. Picked the wrong ball, I think. I don't know whether Mars Holland saw him coming or uh, whether Jimmy uh, was a premeditated. Sorry, Max Bailey, a premeditated shot. And uh, another way, it wasn't the right ball to execute it to. 
Uh, they've had 11 off the over, so uh, just got to keep doing this for the remaining 16 overs, or Holland 15 in. after this one. Oh, it's edged, and he's going to go down to third man. They're going to get a single. There was no slip in place. I think it would have gone over the head of slip anyway, but Bailey moves on to 10. End of the over, 92 for five. Calmore fans, despite them being in trouble, are in fine voice. I think somebody on the neck to might have something to do with that. Keith's going to step out, and James Garnett is going to come in and join me. Here on Alive Sports FM, 92 for 5. 15 overs to go. 90 balls left, 150 to win uh, in what is looking an improbable task for Calmore, isn't it, James? It is, I'm afraid. Uh, from a Calmore point of view, there's a, a mountain to climb. The scoreboard is telling us that they need uh, 150 to win with only 90 balls in play. Here's Sharp continuing from the nursery end and down the pitch goes Bailey. He was looking to hit that into the media centre and missed it. Went straight through to Tremaine and it's just not quite happened for Calmore, has it? No, it, it went wrong early on with uh, the, 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 the unfortunate uh, injury and then immediate dismissal of Ben Johns where the, the big gun misfired at the, at the start of the innings and uh, it hasn't really got much better from a Calmore perspective. These two have been asked to rebuild, and that's exactly what they've done. And there's a wide ball, offside wide this time. It's sharp. The culprit again. There's the umpire again. Oh, yes, it is, he says. As the old <laughs> I'm sure he's auditioning for pantomime for this year. He's beginning to enjoy that little exchange, isn't he, with uh, the, the Calmore supporters who were very vocal last year in, in victory, and now they're equally he's vocal in defeat, so good for them. Big grin on his face is Anthony Blondell as... Uh, it's Sharp running in past him now into Bailey. Bowles and Bailey, good shot down through the covers. And it's stopped down there, is it? It is. It's well stopped. Uh, prevented four runs and they've only got a single out of it in the end. And you can hear the, uh, the Dumbleton fans appreciating that. First time I've seen Bailey really uh, uh, lean onto the back foot. Played a very good shot. Got another tweet for you. Which we've had people listening all over the world. Mike Dool's watching from Switzerland, loving the commentary lads. Come on, Dumbleton. The Dumblies. As Sharp comes in again, bowls. Quicker one that time. It's five back, back past him. He couldn't get onto it. There's a man down there at deep mid off, and there's only one. He timed that really well, actually. He was a bit unfortunate. He didn't get to the boundary, but good fielding again to restrict the runs for Calmore. 95 for five. Bailey is on 11. Get the feeling that both batsmen have decided that. Uh, they need to throw the kitchen sink at it now. And, yeah. uh, and there's no point in limping to a tame outcome. You, you've you got to be bold, and that's what Manning and Bailey are determined to do. He's back in his crease again. Shot. Oh, great shot. That's Bailey's drilled it away, and it's four runs. Bailey moves on to 14. Great shot there. Look at this off. Oh, yeah, he swung away. Just waited for, waited for the swing and bang through the, ex through the covers. There's not much better cricket shot than that, James, is there? But very satisfying. It had a real uh, crack of willow about it. Yeah, it's like a shot out of a gun, wasn't it, the way it came off the middle of the bat. And 99 for five. So Calmore edging towards that 100. Keith implored them once they get to 100 to give it a bit of a smash. So we'll be interested to see what they do now. They've got to go. They've got to go. Otherwise, they're going nowhere. Sharp. Just a slight adjustment in the field. In his fifth over, he's coming in now to Bailey and Bowles. And Bailey down the track. And he's fielded there at extra cover. Extra cover point region, a tumbling stop, and there's no run. Bailey's strike rate improving all the time, although he's, he's 15 off uh, 39. But, uh, he's, he's stuck around and essentially giving his side a, a sniff. But it's a very faint sniff at this point. It is sharp. Coming in past umpire Blondell and he's going to bowl to Bailey. Stretching for that one. There's an appeal for Carr behind. There's also a, a look from the batsman for a wide. And there's neither. It's just a dot ball. End of the over. 99 for 5. Calmore. Those balls are ticking away. 84. Still 143 to win. Across comes Mr. Blondell to square leg. Big grin on his face still. You feel that he's <laughs> developed a whole fan club in an afternoon, don't you? Yeah. Uh, He's come a long way down. Square, well, because square legs, the, the square's so short to us, square legs almost close to those fans. Yes, <laughs> oh, but he, no, he's, 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 he's over-egged it ever so slightly there with a little 
a slightly theatrical bow to his new uh, audience. He's enjoying it. He is. And uh, both umpires have, I think, earned the respect of the players and the supporters today. Adam Stewart, new bowler on then. Ah, Chode. Chode, yeah. On, on, they, we've sent for the groundsman to come and bowl a few overs. I think that's a magnificent move there. It, it strikes me as the very essence of village cricket. Uh, There's a terrible Adam, rendition of Adam Sweet Stewart. Caroline taking place below us as well. Oh, is it <laughs> it's a drum conversion, as you might expect. I think there, there was an attempt at a Mexican wave uh, just below us <laughs> at, at, at one point. Um, not really Lord's etiquette, but... I don't uh, think it'd get very far either, because no, there's it, only it, two sides it, open. It died on the, yeah. on the beaches. But it is going to be Stewart, the big burly groundsman from Dumbleton. First time that they've taken pace off, at least I'm mm. assuming from his run-up that it's going to be pace off. Yeah, there's not been much spin, has there so far? I'm not sure there's going to be much spin here. I think, I think he's just going to plonk a dark in there, dart in there. Here we go. Pretty much. Yeah, it's off the bat foot. No run. Manning what sent back Bailey there. This is wonderful. This is this is true Sunday afternoon bowling here from from the groundsman, and I, I got a feeling it's going to be mighty effective. He'll whiz through his overs and strangle a few as he goes. Here's Stewart again in, and again just played out for a single. Well, if anyone knows what the pitch is going to do, it's a groundsman, isn't it? Yeah, yes, possibly his own pitch, uh, but I, there is there are signs that the the pitch has lost some for pace. Don't go on. <laughs> no, I was just saying, hundreds up for Calmore off 158 balls. Uh, they've been a, a little slow getting there, but uh, with five wickets in, in hand, they, they have no option now but mm. to launch some sort of attack. Yeah, 143 required. 142 required, sorry, off 82. Yeah. Stewart in. Bit of a chaff track of that. He's swept away by Bailey. Down to the man down in front of us at square leg, and there's deep square leg, and there's one run. 101 for 5, Manning on to 30. As you say, the pigeons beginning to settle in different parts of the ground. They sort of move as a flock, don't they? Stewart in, off the back foot, Bailey. He's driven it to point, and there's no run. Good fielding again there, I think. It's a very tight fielding here from Dumbleton. They're just strangling Calmore. End of season feel to the uh, weather and the temperature. Oh, it's edged through slip. A bit of luck there for Manning. He'll look to get two. Bailey's not interested, though. Bailey's very sort of slow. He's very kind of casual going down a wicket. Manning wanted two there straight he, away. He was, and he turned the wrong way around as well, which I, I've noticed a lot of batsmen, even at, the, at this level, turning blind, so they can't see or uh, make a judgment as to where the ball and the fielder are. They rely on the call. Stewart's just adjusting the field. He's just stood there pointing. Now he's rubbing the ball vigorously on his trousers as... Bit of field change there. Stewart. Brand new kid. Chode. Bowls. Bit fuller and it's clipped away by Bailey. And there's going to be one run into the onside. That is the end of the over 102 for five. A good solid first over there from Adam Stewart. A couple of Calmore um, players do, doing their circuit of lords. It's, uh, it's an opportunity to exercise your players rights and walk around the ground but uh, there'll be some disappointed names and faces in that mm. cardboard dressing room I think we're going to see more spin are we from the opposite end now I think this is this is Tommy Borman I think he can bowl a little bit yes I'm looking forward to seeing as a bowl we've been told that he tweaks uh, tweaks out a few leggies and uh, you, you've got to attack the spinners at this point in the game Tong, I think there's a substitute fielder just come on for Dumbleton. Seventh bowler that uh, Skipper Salmon has, has used. He's obviously he's got resources. It's rather nice to be able to ring the changes. Well, Tommy Bowman was the one who really sort of set this total up, didn't he? Because they, were, they started off slowly, came in, he really accelerated it, and then the captain Rupert Salmon took it on even more, didn't he? Looks like a prospect, uh, Tommy Bowman. England under 19 player, only 17 mm. years old. We're informed he's uh, looks quite well set up and developed for 17. Yeah, he's got about three paces. It's uh, premeditated uh, reverse sweep there. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit of an odd run up. He kind of skip, he kind of walks and then skips and then bowls and it's 
down the leg side. Is it? Is it giving Give, a wide? Giving us a wide. Yeah, yeah, eventually it's a slow mm. one in the end. You almost wonder whether the umpire there is tempted to <laughs> rouse the crowd into shouts of "Oh no, it isn't." Another. Short. Oh, that's definitely premeditated because yeah. he's done it twice in a row. Yeah, shorter that one from Bowman, and that one he was premeditated. And Bailey, to me, Bailey just seems happy to get off strike at the minute. Yeah, he's 18 now of 43 deliveries, so uh, whereas Manning slightly more aggressive, 31 or 46, mm. out of a total of 105. And uh, here we are. This will be an interesting battle, I think, between Bowman in and the, Manning. In the 28th over. I reckon Manning might try to go after Bowman here. You got it. Bowman looks a little bit part-time, but mm. as a spinner. Here he is in bowls, and Manning just plays that one carefully, just respectfully having a look at him. There's no run. 105 for five. Again, the ball's ticking down here. Useful to have a top order batsman who can give you some off spin like this. He sort of stops and starts in his run, doesn't he? Yeah, it's a strange one. Oh, Manning's managed to flick it away. There's a fielder coming round here. The pigeons scatter and it's fielded down on the boundary. They're going to get two. Fine leg. He scampered round to there. The pigeons have, have scampered off towards the pavilion and there's two added there. 107 for five. Tommy Bowman tossing the ball from hand to hand. Stop, start. Stop, start. start skips again. in. There yeah, bowls. And then Manning tries to, uh, doesn't get hold of that one. In the end, it's just down to long on for a single. 108 for five. Yeah, Scott Tremaine sort of indicating slight field change there. He wants the man back, back on the boundary for this delivery and uh, protecting the short boundary front of all the cheerful Calmore supporters but not, not much to cheer about on the scorecard. Uh, reverse, reverse sweep and came. appeal this time from Bowman it's a strong one Lee can't believe it he's clasping his hands there in disbelief he maybe I thought I heard maybe an inside edge oh well, it did look plum if he hasn't hit it but uh, there must have been an edge. I, there must be a temptation in a <coughs> should we say a, an experienced umpire's mind to say Premeditated, mm. got your pads in the way, off you go, son. But he didn't on that occasion. Quicker delivery, and again it's hit the pad, and again Bowman with a half appeal. This time, the umpire, Mr. Blondell, turns it down, and Bowman takes his jumper in his cap and wanders off 108 for five at the end of that over. Comings and goings, there seems to be have been a substitute on, uh, and uh, somebody's back on the field now under the, the Dumbly Bumblebee cap. I think occasionally under these circumstances teams like this get the 12th man on just so that uh, he can say he's graced the Lord's turf. Yeah, Scott Tremaine. His fiance he's just putting his, his cap back on. His fiance is a chief tea lady, so... Has she tweeted in? No. No, she hasn't tweeted in. She, no. I don't think so. I'm going to have a look. She can do at she, uh, Live Sports FM. Yeah. Always good to hear from catering department. Absolutely. It's a uh, change of ball and Stuart only had one over. Diamond's swapped ends. So Diamond's going to be on at the pavilion end now. It's a oh, back. Sorry, no, he's back on at the... Stuart. He was at the pavilion end, wasn't he? It's just Stuart's had one over. Yeah, he, well, I think that he's mumbling to himself, but uh, <laughs> you know, there he is. He's on the scoreboard at Lords. He's batted and bowled at Lords. Diamond's first ball is whipped away. It's fielded down on the boundary just for one. Very wristy stroke, that. Mm. Nice looking stroke. Andrew 9 five, the sun pops out again. A late afternoon sunshine here. We just go past 10 past four on this Sunday afternoen. Listening to us here on Live Sports Event. Luke Edwards and James Gardner on commentary. Keith Higgins will be coming up shortly. He's poised and waiting. He's just prowling around the box. Can see his binoculars in front of him as well as in comes eagle eyed Keith Higgins Diamond yeah eagle eyed Keith Higgins indeed that one's hit the pad another appeal and there's a poor attempt to take the stumps down there and to get through for a leg by 110 for 5 I think that's old as a taking his gun fielding role a little bit too literally there that was yeah. not even close to a direct hit A little bit of movement now, in and out the corporate boxes on the far side of the field, so 
Maybe that the crowd is swelling as oh, s the thought of yeah. after after match drinks. Man in charge on the pitch, I'm like he was going to put that into the pavilion and then just defended it on the back foot, back to the bowler. 132 needed off 69 deliveries. That's uh, a tall order. You've got five uh, wickets in hand, but once again, this projected launch that we've been looking for for the last three, four overs hasn't quite happened. Yeah, Manning just behind that one goes for a quick single. Then there's no shite the stumps because Manning's comfortably hold. But again, they're just dealing in singles here at the minute, Calmore. Singles definitely belong to Dumbleton in the field at the moment. Singles and dots, and they win it. Mm, Max Bailey's going to go on strike. He's 18 off 46, which if he was playing a four-day game, it'd be pretty respectable. But as it is, his side need another 131 off just 68. He's facing Diamond down the pitcher's ball, Rolly. First real shot in anger from Bailey, trying to swipe it over the square leg boundary and he's bowled. And Nelson, Nelson has through. struck. Yeah. 111 now for six. And the symbol of 111, uh, one, which is three stumps without their bails, has been literally translated there into reality and sad reality for Bailey. He deserves slightly better than that. He hung in, limpet like, tried to take his side into a, a position from which they could push for victory yeah. but he has to trudge off back to the pavilion yeah, back Ma to the away dressing room Max Bailey bowled by Jamie Diamond for 18 a second wicket for Diamond and I'd be interested to see if uh, Metcalf comes out Josh Metcalf he's down on the sheet isn't he too yeah to but what sure if he was injured eight. maybe because he only bowled a few overs didn't he at the he start was, yeah well we'll wait for the announcement from and Willem she's normally all over who's next in the, the, the Dumbleton swarm came together there didn't they and they they, they knew that was a critical mm. moment and breakthrough I mean it wasn't sort of wait, you say critical it wasn't like because of scoreboard pressure but they just want to get the game done don't they and win it by bowling out Calmore rather yep. than it just kind of petering out a little bit I see Mike West the uh, senior statesman for Calmore is on the field there with advice and water for the surviving batsman, who is uh, Manning on 36. And you'd have to say that Hope's rest with Manning at the moment. Yeah, he's, he's a couple of lusty blows, but we need, well, they need quite a few lusty blows from him now, don't they? You might well see that now. You might just think maybe that's what the instructions were for drinks. You just, just, you know what, James, just go for it. <laughs> it's probably well, what they're going to say, isn't it? Yeah, it's a sort of, you know, uh, nothing to lose. I think uh, Kevin earlier described it as, you know, do we stick or do we twist? Well, right now you've got a twist. So, have we got confirmation yet that that's uh, Josh Metcalf? Mm, there's been no announcement as yet. He, uh, I think there's still a bit, he maybe a bit miffed in the stand as well. He walked to the wicket without any obvious trace of limp or injury. We'll, we'll find out. There he is. There we go. It's been announced now. That makes it official. Josh Metcalf is back in the game. He's just scratching out his guard. He's got no maker's name on his bat. Lots of red balls, though. He's obviously been in the nets. Looking for a sponsor. Practicing. Looking yeah, for looking a sponsor. He is. He might get one if he uh, goes mad with the bat here. He's facing Diamond, first ball, and he's flicked it away. He's off the mark. Nice little flick away there off his legs. He bit gets a, a single. Bit of a croucher in his stance. Sort of knees bent and flexing the knees. End of the over. Successful one there for... Dumbleton, 112 for six. Diamond, seven overs, no maidens, two for 28. Dumbleton very cleverly positioned their 12th man on the short boundary here. So he's on and off between overs with a, a bit of this and a bit of that. Yeah. Tommy Bowman's coming back on. Yes, I don't know whether Salmon has a particular death bowler in mind or whether indeed he'll need a specialist death bowler as bold Martin out Metcalf taking careful stance Bowman bowls to him Metcalf good cut shot off the bat foot down to the fielder it's diamond it's got a good arm he's straight back in there and uh, straight into the wicketkeeper Scott Tremaine just one run 113 for six and the dark clouds have passed, the sun is out now. It's quite a pleasant afternoon here at Lords. Still cool though, as 
Borman comes in again. And it's down the leg side. That'll be a wide. Straight away. Oh, yes, it is. <laughs> and, he and he's even explaining, saying it's a leg side wide. He's, he's moving his arms <laughs> about now. He's almost... He's developed a sort of... Uh, dance. Or uh, orchestra <laughs> baton movement. Yeah. Here is Borman. Just stops again and then bowls. Again, down the leg side. And here we go. Oh, no, it isn't. Oh, yes, it is, he says. <laughs> he's got his conductor's baton out there, and he's, he's got his choir who are responding to him. So all in the, in the, in the great spirit of village cricket played at Lords. Two wides in a row for Borman. 115 for six. One, two, stop, start, go. <laughs> played out two. Point as a shite stumps missed in the end gets through there Manning for a single. 116 for six. Good backing up, prevent the overthrows. Nice little shot that, but just not what they need at the minute. If they were ahead of the eight ball, you could say that was a good little single, but they need it's almost an impossible task for them. As Bowman comes in again to Metcalf, he just forward and just plays that back to Bowman. <laughs> I don't know what Medcalf's reputation as a batsman is. Um, Keith will be all over his stats in a moment, I've no doubt. But it looks to me a little cautious. He's an exciting all-rounder, he says. Here. Oh, exciting all-rounder. So there he goes. There he goes, it. down there, down the track. Straight to the fielder, he's misfielded. And has it gone for four? It's... Uh, the umpire's signal. Has it been stopped or not? They're just checking. Umpire's having a look and a few boos around. I think it was stopped in the end. An old-fashioned moment where he's more or less asking the fielder. Is he's just saying, is it four? Is it four? Go on, oh no! Umpires signalled four in the end. Has been given as four. Yeah. So 120 for six. I think the fielder had to own up in the end. <laughs> throw back to the old days, didn't it? When the, the fielder would throw up his hand and admit to having touched the the boundary rope. Metcalf flicks it away past the field. That's going to be another boundary, is it? There's a man sprinting round. Is it going to get down to the fine leg boundary? It has. It's another four. Oh, Metcalf living up to the mm. exciting all-rounder billing yeah. that he's had. He's a policeman by day and he's on duty here at Lars now, oh. looking to uh, get his team a dramatic comeback. I thought you were going to extend your uh, law enforcement metaphor for a moment there, but wisely you pulled out. Yeah, he's, he's saying hello, hello, hello at the crease here, James. <laughs> 124 for six, he's on strike again. Full toss, it lets out go wide outside off stump. It's a wide, it was a terrible delivery that from Borman. <laughs> Umpires. Anthony Blondell's at it again. Whereas Mr. Oh, Bon is very, he's very uh, he's professional, a bit more isn't correct, he? isn't he? Yeah. Yes, he wouldn't, wouldn't catch him playing to the crowd. <laughs> so here is Borman again, last ball of this over. Eventually, comes in balls to Metcalf, fires it in quicker. Good shot again. It's dribbling down to the boundary. It's, it's fielded down. It's just two runs. And that is the end of the over, 127 for six. Uh, we're going to hear now from James, and then Keith Higgins will come over and take over from me and take you through to the end. Yes, well, we half hoping for a rousing tight finish, but at the moment, uh, it very much looks as if Dumbleton are in control. Uh, have their foot uh, on Calmore's throat, uh, nice as possible sense of the word. The game played with great good spirit between both sides. There's lots of um, back slapping and tapping going on, uh, and there's no doubt about it that there's a buzz a a about the Dumbleton effort and a, a slight sense of trepidation, I think, from Calmore. Keith, have you picked up the same sort of vibes? Oh, absolutely, uh, James. It's, uh, I mean, they're only just over halfway in terms of getting to the score, but uh, they made a fight of it. Um, you know, when I drew up the schedule and I uh, thought I'd be fair and put myself last, I was wondering for a while if I'd actually get back on commentary <laughs> was the way it was looking. So uh, You're due to take us home now, I think. Is that right? Yes, uh, we'll try and take you home, but... Uh, Whereas yesterday I was very lucky and took you home in an exciting game. Well, if, if, if I do get to the last over, then it probably could be exciting. But uh, no, at the moment, uh, no doubt who's in the ascendancy is it's uh, Miles Holland from the uh, Pavilion end coming in bowling to uh, Jimmy Manning, who's uh, almost single-handedly kept uh, Calmore in the game. But 
that uh, pool shot goes straight to uh, Tommy Borman at mid-off and there's no runs. Yes, you asked about Josh Metcalf, by the way. He's only had to bat once in the uh, Cup this season. Got right. two not out, so uh, he's increased his uh, score by a six-fold and uh, still not out, but he hasn't really had the opportunity to bat. But uh, certainly came to uh, Cowmore with a reputation, not just of a good opening bowler, but as a batsman as well. So uh, he's the uh, chap who took over from Mike West. As, uh, the next ball is uh, pulled by Manning and one of those shots where you think you should get four for it and he pulled it straight to Ollie Stewart at deep mid on and hit it so powerfully they couldn't get a single and uh, these dot balls are not helping uh, Calmore's calls at the moment. One, two, seven for six. Still That's needing 115 and only 58 balls left. Almost two runs a ball, James. It's, uh, it's a tall order. It is. Sun's come out and the, all the uh, shadows are both long and in sharp relief now. Holland in from the Miles Holland in from the pavilion end and uh, trying to take a short sharp single which they've got to do and a uh, bit of a wayward throw there by Holland as uh, Metcalf was uh, making his ground he would have been home comfortably but uh, good backing up there by uh, Phil so I can't see who that is but uh, the fielder at long leg backed up well so uh, no overthrows but uh, single to Manning slightly take exuberant by young Holland there Yes, he just got a little bit carried away, didn't he, Miles Holland? He sort of picked the ball up, and I think he was sort of jumping up as he uh, tried to throw it, and rather than wait till he came down, he threw it to the top of his jump, and that's why it went sailing over wicketkeeper Tremaine's head. But uh, no damage done as far as uh, the bowling side are concerned, and it's Josh Metcalf on strike facing Miles Holland. And again, the fielders are just beautifully placed, aren't they? That's... Uh, Rupert Salmon, the captain at mid-off, and uh, yes, that was hit with power, but of course they're going to hit shots with power now, James, and it means they're gonna, if they go straight to the fielder, the chance of runner's gone. Yeah, even the pigeons have retreated to beyond the boundary rope <laughs> there, as Metcalf is, uh, that's his favourite area. Out, uh, on yeah, no, the fielders, they seem very deep, but obviously they're going to hit with power, I mean, what, if you need singles... The pigeons seem very deep. The pigeons and the fielders, yes. <laughs> Oh, yes. Now he's launched that one beautifully as uh, Metcalf on the offside. Beautiful off drive. Long boundary, so no chance of a six, but uh, four runs for him there. That's clearly his area. He, he favours the, uh, the full cover drive to the yeah. off. But only five runs off the over and uh, one ball left, so uh, still uh, not quite getting the average going. But at least uh, they're showing some respectability, Carmel. 132 for six. Metcalf on to 16. And uh, if he was injured, I'm not sure if he's showing it, but uh, obviously there's sort of muscles that you need when you're bowling, maybe not quite the same as when you're batting, and uh, or else where the adrenaline keeps you going. Interesting, actually, the fielders have gone back a bit, haven't they? They've dropped out, yeah. yeah. So I think back, now it's saying, you know, you can have the single. Back on the pavilion boundary there. Yeah. So in a way, it means he's got to run too, and if he's slightly injured, that's probably what he doesn't want to do. Plenty of singles on offer, but they need more than that. Well, that one he gets the dot ball as he uh, cuts it off the bottom of the end of the bat and know uh, where they get to run to Aaron Thompson. 31st over from um, Miles Holland. Most notably, mm. struck down by Cramp and crippled him. Uh, so here, the, here comes more water. I wonder. Yes, it's uh, whether it's a long season, it's not particularly uh, hot out here. Whether nerves, um, you just don't know, do you? Sometimes you just overstretch yourself because Ben Johns, going back to that, that clearly was a key turning point because he played was just forward defensive wasn't it and he obviously overstretched himself got cram had a bit of a tension and uh, the next ball he uh, you know got caught at second slip by tommy borman off uh, ross martin who had that excellent opening spell of eight over three maidens four for 12 and you know he just sort of think that, i mean hindsight's lovely isn't it james but i must admit when i got cramp once batting there's only one decision come off and get over it and go back out later Oh, yeah, that was probably in the days when you could you could still have a runner, which I think has uh, largely gone out of the game, hasn't it? It has. Well, <laughs> there are reasons for that. I've, I've been involved in a sort of yes, no, whoops, it's not me, sorry situation. Yeah, we anyway. We switched bowlers at this end. We got uh, Adam Stewart back on. Adam Stewart back on, yeah. Yes, he only bowled the one over so far. Quite a tidy over for four runs, but he's back on this time at the nursery end. And he's going to be bowling to uh, Jimmy Manning, who uh, is uh, he's on 38. Looks younger in, uh, in full sunlight, uh, as Chode. So he bowls the next ball, he's uh, sort of slow, he runs up to the wicket but his arm comes over quite slowly but uh, on a good length there and Jimmy Manning uh, steers it powerfully into the offside but uh, straight to Jamie Diamond 
at uh, deepish extra cover. Just a single, takes him on to 39, 133 for six. And uh, my guess is that Josh Metcalf is going to have to go for Adam Stewart. It's the only chance Cowmore have got. And doesn't really get hold of him, but another single down to deep long on. Metcalf has scored briskly, hasn't he? He's uh, so makes him 17 off 10. So mm. he's the, the one batsman who's got ahead of the uh, the 100th strike rate. He is, but uh, obviously they're going to need others to do that and quickly as well as Stewart comes in from the nursery end. Dot ball as uh, Jimmy Manning sort of shovels that, tries to, I think, shovel it on the leg side to try and get the single, but Adam Stewart, I mean, off your own bowling, you're always going to be a little bit keener, aren't you, in the <laughs> no, field? Nothing is too much effort off your own bowling, that's right. Yeah. So, uh, no run there. Stewart again from the nursery end. Powerfully hit off the back foot by Metcalf, but straight to Stewart and uh, no oh, runs. Almost one of those crowd catches, wasn't it? It was yeah. a bump ball that he just pouched and he should really have thrown it up and yeah. got, <laughs> got the roar from the crowd. So two dot balls in a row. Let's see what happens on this one. Oh. Another dot ball as uh, Metcalf tries to turn it on the leg side, hits him on the pad. It's uh, no appeal, so uh, going down the leg side because he'd been on the pad. Umpire Ogborn does not have the pleasure. Sorry, which umpire is it at this end? It's um, Blondell, isn't it? Blondell, Blondell yes. yes. Right, yeah. He's the. Didn't uh, have the pleasure of giving the, the pantomime wide. man. Powerful shot this time, very straight by uh, Metcalf. Well, they go for two. Should uh, have done, probably. Uh, well, interesting, actually, because if they had done, the throw was a direct <laughs> hit. So, uh, one of those where, yes, I think you're right. The thought should have been there, but in the end, it proved to be a wise decision. But just the uh, single to Metcalf means he. Uh, uh, sorry, which one was that? That was uh, Manning who got that one. Anyway, we'll give you the score. It's the end of the 32nd over, 135 for six. Manning on 40, Metcalf on 17. It was Manning who got that uh, single off the last ball. Yes, it's uh, one of those moments there where you, you, you've got to push your, your twos. Because singles are not uh, not sufficient to do it. No. But if, if, uh, if Adam Stewart keeps busting through his overs and bowling dot balls, that wraps the game up. Well, I think that's the way it uh, seems to be going at the moment. And uh, Rupert uh, Salmon, the captain, has decided to bring back his opening bowler, uh, Ollie Horn, who's, I think, got uh, three overs left. And uh, just doing the maths, he won't quite bowl through. But uh, nevertheless, I think a sign of intention that he might have given a couple of uh, their lads a chance who perhaps bowl occasionally to have a bowl at Lourdes. But I think this is sort of saying, no, this right. is it now. Yeah, adults back in the room. Let's get this done. Yeah. So he's got three overs left, five overs, number for 20. But uh, proved a remarkable fall to uh, Ross Martin, who had those excellent figures I just gave you earlier, four for 12. Bowling to Jimmy Manning on 14. First ball straight back to Horn, and uh, one of those bump balls where the uh, batsman and bowler glare at each other. <laughs> Ollie Horn there, uh, signs of real uh, fast bowling aggression. I've got it in my hand, you come any closer and <laughs> tickets. I think all good nature fun there, but nevertheless a real <laughs> glare standoff, Mexican standoff between the two of them. But another dot ball. Horn again. Manning comes down the track, but doesn't really middle it, but uh, just a single to uh, oh. Salmon at uh, mid-off. Excellent. This is outright uh, war between these two, Manning and, and Horn. We're going to have a little bit of spice just to liven up the, the end of this game. 136 for six brings Metcalf on strike. Mid-off and mid-off have gone right back to long on and long off on the boundary, right in front of the pavilion is uh, long off very straight. Deep shadow down there. Shadows lengthening on this September evening. So the next ball's outside the off stump and Metcalf has what he has to do now, has to go for every ball, but uh, missed that one outside the off stump taken by keeper Tremaine. So we can see how wide it was. Quite wide, but uh, not wide enough. Had to be there for the shot and he didn't quite get the bat there in time. Metcalf has a sort of rueful glance out towards his his fan base, his supporters out there. They must be willing him to get the big shots in. We know he's got them in him. Raised bat, waits for Horn to uh, come in and bowl and uh, gets his bat. Doesn't time it very well, but enough to get the single. Double divot down there. Dear, dear. Yes, I noticed some of the fielders have been very fastidious in putting the divots back when they made them. Uh, Tommy Borman particularly, I noticed a couple of times uh, when he sort of did some fielding and made a mess of the pitch, a mess of the outfield. He put it back in. Good on him. Formidable characters, groundsman. 
That next one is off the toe end of the bat there by uh, Manning. I think it, no, he came off his pad, so uh, just the leg by. And as I said, it just seems to be dot balls and the odd extra at the moment that, uh, yeah, that one, he was a big pull to the leg side. He was uh, peel, half a peel by Ollie Hall. Well, but, he was, uh, he, I thought he was remarkably interested given that he could see all three stumps at the time, but uh, <laughs> there we are. He's a feisty character at Hall. And even so, just two runs and a leg by from this over and one ball left. Bowling to Metcalf. And that ball strikes him on the pad and a big appeal there by, well, one of those appeals where Horn just sort of... <laughs> I think Horn only does big appeals, so he doesn't hang yeah, around. Well he's he, actually geeing his players up was, there at the end of the over, it. saying, why aren't you joining in with my appeals? Get behind me, lads. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, end of the over. Just the uh, three, uh, two runs and a leg by from it. 138 for six, Carmore, with seven overs left. 41 to Manning, 18 to Metcalf. The... Uh, well, the run rate is now 15, and if you want the actual uh, sort of equation in terms of runs and balls, 104 to win, 42 balls left. Ah, oh, that's uh, some remarkable hitting required if that's going to happen. Certainly it would uh, light up this late September afternoon at Lords. Well, they've not really had the big over, had they? I mean, Nam which yesterday to get within striking distance of Bexley did have that big over right. off Adam Ball, was it? 16? Yeah, 16, I think. That's right. You know, yeah, that's what they need. They need, yeah. uh, well, they need more than that. They need seven big overs. And uh, could, could this Adam be the Stewart one? comes in now. Oh, he's gone. And I think there's a stumping there, and there it is. Jimmy Manning's gone. He had no choice. He came down the track to Adam Stewart. He missed it. And Scott Tremaine had plenty of time to take the bails off, and that probably is the death knell here for a Cowmore. Jimmy Manning stumped Tremaine, Bowl Stewart for 41, 138 for 7. And uh, I'm not going to do a David Lloyd impression, let's just say that I think Dumbleton have got uh, one and a half hands on the uh, Village Cup. You think somebody started the car somewhere down in Dumbleton, do you? Yeah. I wonder if they have. I think, yeah. I, it's not an expression, well, yeah, it's all right, it's an expression, I suppose, I could think of worse. But uh, no, well done to Jimmy Manning. It was a losing cause and he's battled very hard. Three fours and a six. Yep, the camp, the uh, Carmel anchor there has been uh, upped and dismissed. I think the main thing now is just to make sure they don't lose by 100 runs. I think that would, it always feels a heavy defeat. I mean, any defeat is sad, but uh, I think the main thing now is just to make sure that uh, they can uh, make sure they reduce the amount of defeat now. But uh, Well, if they can take it to the last over, and even, even the last two overs with uh, somebody with a long handle at the wicket, um, you know, that, that represents their only... Indeed. possible chance but but even it's, then, a slim you, one. it's a slim one you need sort of about you know sort of well certainly more no less than 72 to have any chance and you, uh, they've just got to remember they're playing at Lords you, you, you bat your overs there's no question of uh, giving, wow. up, giving up overs I'd like them to because it means I can uh, stay doing this lovely job we're doing and by the way I forgot to say big thanks to uh, Luke who's finished his commentary stint and uh, well done Luke great great commentary oh. and great summarising and uh, I'll think of some similar words for you James in a couple of hours. Well we're time. all volunteers in this team so it's, it's a remarkable Very good privilege point. To, to be we part do it because we love it part of and the we team love it. And part of the occasion and we love it anyway Stuart coming in bowling to a new batsman which is uh, Ben Perry we, oh, we, I'm not sure we complimented the wicket keeper Scott Tremaine sufficiently on that stumping. I think by, you know, um, pro keeper's standards, it was a f straightforward one. But you've still got to mm. catch it and not fumble it. And he did all, all yeah, that. No, perfectly. he did well though, Scott Tremaine. He did well. Stewart comes in for the next ball and uh, Perry tries to turn it off his legs but uh, goes uh, off his pad onto the up the pitch for no runs. Yes, when I was commentating on... Uh, Camor against Go Take in the quarter final. For some reason, I called him Ben Parry. And I'll give you the sequel to that in a moment. I see he's both Parry and Perry, depending on which. Um oh, no, it's Perry. There's another Y, by the way. It's yeah. definitely Perry because a message came through to the captain. Oh, that's interesting. Well, that case then. Uh, no, it's definitely Perry because I was calling him Parry. Yep, I'll I tell you why in a minute what happened as Kevin the next ball comes in. And, uh, no, he doesn't go. Oh, they're going to have to run for this. Would it be a run out? Should there would have been if it had been a direct hit by Adam Stewart. There was real hesitation between uh, Josh Metcalf and uh, Ben Perry. Really shouldn't be. They've got to go for it. He had all three sums to aim at, Adam Stewart, as he picked the ball up and turned round. He was on the ground, but uh, I don't think it's going to matter too much. But... Uh, does mean that uh, Ben Perry is off the mark. Right, the sequel to the story is that uh, the chair of uh, Cowmore came running across to me with a message from his mum. Get his name right was the gist of the message. Uh, from, from Perry's mum. From, from, from ben Perry's,
I thought that had gone over his head, but uh, that is a great catch there. As he fell backwards, I thought he'd misjudged it, but he has taken the catch, and uh, that's Metcalf gone for 18 off the bowling of uh, Stewart. So uh, we'll see in a minute. Uh, Stewart with two wickets in this over. Billings is rapidly coming to an end. And we'll give you the fielder in just a moment. I haven't actually confirmed who caught it yet. Uh, Sun was in his eyes a little bit there, and I, he, he did misjudge it. You, you said you thought he was going to drop it. I think he did too. They oh. credit it to uh, Ollie Sharp, I think. Yes, Ollie Sharp has got the catch. So Metcalf caught Sharp, bowled Stewart for 18, 140 for 8. And uh, I'm going to do something, James, if you uh, don't mind. If another wicket falls quickly, I'm you going to do what TMS do. Yes, we call in. Uh, we call in the uh, Dum the voice of Dumbleton to exactly. preside over those. Is that all right with you? Absolutely if, if right. Yeah, we, I'm we trying to think how many more overs you've got, but we, if a mind, wicket falls, we made that agreement earlier on. So that's, that's very good fine, of you, gentlemen. Yeah. You're yeah. obviously great cricket traditionalists, like Hugh Turberville, who I interviewed earlier, and that's very good of you. I do appreciate that because no, there's still another ball in the over. Kevin is lurking in the background here. He, he, he senses no, victory, no, and no. Right, rightly too. Well, let's put it this way: uh, you were sort of. Uh, a late addition to our team last year, but I can assure you, if Alvin Lee were going to win, we'd have uh, brought, dragged you back in and uh, made sure you were there at the time. But probably, sadly, it wasn't to be. But, probably uh, lucky. I would have been incoherent with joy. <laughs> but uh, never mind. It's been a great stint uh, today and yesterday with, with your whole team. So perhaps with your permission at the end of the over, I will hand. That's fine. Kevin. But uh, you've been absolutely great, James. Been fantastic working with you and uh, you. your commentary and summarising has been second to none. I am waiting for TMS to get in touch with us. I think we've got plenty of good people to step in. But let's just watch us. The last ball of this over by Stewart to uh, Ben Perry. And he gets a single by stroking it into the offside and he'll keep the strike. Uh, by the way, it's Steve Wright who's come in at uh, number 10. So, end of we've the... We've got so many poses in the game at the moment. It's, it's, it's frightening. This is Live Sports FM, the home of live sports. 141 for 8 at the end of the 34th over. Ben Perry on two and Steve Wright who uh, won't face a ball yet because they crossed at the end of that over. And we've got uh, six overs left and uh, yes we welcome back because he has played for Dumbleton seconds quite a bit this season. So I think it's only fitting that Kevin Emery joins us for the last six overs. Whatever happens Kevin, you will be here to see, well I can't see any other result now. No, no, definitely not. Um they got a bit sloppy in the middle of Dumbleton after getting the ascendancy, uh, a few too many wides, but the Suns come out now to uh, highlight their uh, pending victory, and uh, it's nice to see that, that everybody's got in the game in some capacity. Absolutely. No, no, a lot to say. Well done to Rupert Salmond. As the captain is only Horn bowls Ben Perry right through his defences there. It was just a forward defensive shot, basically. It was just too quick for him, I think, and Oli Horn gets his first wicket. Yeah, right through him, middle and leg. Yeah, and still, just even now, the sun out, that swung. Swung, done him for he did. movement through the air. Um, and Ollie Horn has not had his best day, but, yeah, nice to see him again. He's got amongst the wickets, so he can say to his grandkids that I got a wicket at uh, Lord's. It's uh, just worth a mention that his dad, who was a great supporter of Ollie, uh, Rob, um, uh, sadly passed away a couple of years ago but he'd be looking down proud as punch uh, on his son's performance not only here at Lords but uh, throughout the competition he's been a, a go-to man for Dumbleton in this uh, competition Absolutely and uh, I don't want to be too premature but uh, we do know that uh, Dumbleton have been close a couple of times in uh, previous uh, years in the competition they uh, think they reached the uh, quarter-final and the semi-final. Haven't got through to the uh, finals before, but uh, the fact that they've got so close uh, means that, uh, you know, they could, the, the hands, I said, they, I said earlier, one and a half hands on the cup. I think it's uh, one hand and four fingers, and it's just the thumb that needs to go around it as uh, Liam it. Carty comes in. Yep, and uh, James has just pointed out the large lady in the corner is just standing to her feet. Oh, I think she's more than that. I think she's uh, gargling to make sure her vocal cords are in full cry, but uh, not just yet. No, um, not just late. Uh, the uh, larger than average size lady that I think you're referring to. Yeah, but as you say, James Manning, uh, good hand in a in a losing cause. Him and uh, uh, Max Bailey, you know, give them a bit of a hint of a shout at one stage. It was still going to be a tall order, but um, yeah, eventually they needed to, you know, scoring at 10, 11, 12 and over. It was, was always going to be much. just a bit too much, and uh, it, uh, 
you know, they never really had the big hitters who could just get that sort of 16, you know, I mean, looking at, uh, you know, the way Rupert Summon batted, you know, they needed somebody like him to come in and start scoring uh, boundaries. Uh, yesterday, you know, there's plenty of batsmen for Bexley and that, which who came in and got big scores at key moments. And Camel just didn't seem to have that. I guess the uh, ones they're relying on, principally Ben Johns and Mark Neville, out very early on, very cheaply. And I think that prediction early on, uh, Kevin, that, uh, you know, Calmore thought that it was all on Ben Johns. If he got out early, they didn't know what was going to happen. They were fearful. And the fact he got out early, their fears were realised. But let's see how Liam Carty gets on facing his first ball for Molly Horn, which is outside the off stump and he leaves it alone. Yeah, just got a little perk in his step now. He just finished down further. Still doing a bit. Sun swung in this uh, uh, September sunshine. Um, and it's fitting, actually, in this game particularly you, you could possibly say that um, the batsmen have set the game up for Dumbleton, Ross Martin has definitely broken the back of it. Over the course of the competition it would be perhaps fair to say that the bowlers have got Dumbleton to where they are um, but, but the batters have set a target Absolutely, Tommy Borman and Rupert Salmon particularly and Miles Holland as well, must oh, forget Holland, his yeah. contribution no. it wasn't a 50 but uh, it was you know, that was a valuable team contribution and uh, yeah strong momentum and they're talking all around the ground about his six that apparently nearly cleared the brilliant up here I know it's short but it bounced back off the just near the clock there behind us and above us mm. so he'll remember that and he's had a bowl um, not his finest spell but he's had a bowl yep and Ollie Horn it'd be fitting who if he can finish this off no I'll, if I get the chance I'll say something about uh, Rupert Salmon's captaincy for the team in a moment but let's just watch as the next ball is turned off his legs by uh, Carty for a single, so he can say he got a run at Lords, but uh, in a losing call. It's 142 for nine. Brings Steve Wright on strike to fake the first ball. No, I think were, what I like about Rupert Summer was he was obviously trying to give everyone the, the fact that they could say they've had a game at Lords. You know, a couple of overs. You know, bringing Adam Stewart on, although actually he'd done him proud, isn't he? Two over, three overs, two for ten. And one or two, you know, Miles Holland maybe didn't bowl as well as he could. But I was going through the scorecard. I think anyone who hasn't batted and bowled is uh, Aaron Thompson. Yeah. yeah, Aaron in the field has yeah. been superb. No, he's a gun fielder. He, he bowls leg spin pretty, pretty good. He turns it. Mm. Um, but he's had a great day as uh, Steve Wright plays or misses at the next ball. You know, he's had a great day because he's fielded superbly. He really has. You know, you can see he's their go-to fielder. And uh, so he's got that sort of leadership there if you like yep. in the field and uh, everyone else has contributed in some way and I think that's you know he's he's because uh, he's only the Sunday he's only the cup captain isn't he the only captain's on he's only captain in the village uh, Adam captain's on the Saturdays yeah because Rupert is not always available on Saturday work wise as much um, as Ollie Horn comes in oh. bowls to Steve Wright who plays and misses outside the off stump good over it is indeed a very good over for Ollie Horn Got to so wicket yeah. in that one. Seven overs, one maiden, one for 23 at the end of that over. Just the uh, single that uh, Liam Carty got to get off the mark. So with uh, five overs left, 142 for nine, Calmore. Still need 100 to win. Six, uh, five overs left. And uh, really we're just seeing the death throes of the game. But, mm. uh, you know, at least they've, considering the poor start they had, they, they've taken it as long as they could. But... Uh, I think Mark Lavelle and the uh, Camel team are going to have to admit they were second best, in, certainly in batting and bowling, and uh, probably yeah. not much of a difference in the fielding, but uh, batting and bowling, they've been second best today. Yeah, I think they've recognised that. As you said, it's uh, heavy dependence on Ben Johns, and psychologically, when he's gone early and then, you know, his injury and just that perhaps deflationary feeling for them. Um, they did well a little bit in the middle. Um, you know, they can always cling to the consolation. They won it last year. Uh, and they'll they'll have a they'll have a damn good go next year, I'm sure. So Adam Stewart from the nursery end, on his right arm off spin to Liam Carty, who plays it to mid off and no runs. Well, Keith, he'd be he'd be disappointed. Well, the he'd be there. Right arm slow loopy away swing. Uh, I'm doing him a disservice. Right arm loopy away swing. I love the way he dives across for his own <laughs> fielding, but he couldn't stop that one there as he goes to a deep long off for uh, Carty's second run. Miles Holland is the fielder on the uh, long off boundary. Takes Carty on to two, 143 for nine. Just a little bit of psychology. I mean, uh, they least made it less than 100 to win. Yeah, yeah, so no, just a little bit because, yeah, I mean, it's still a heavyish loss, but uh, there's that difference between, well, of course, they would now lose by 98 runs, but. Uh, just think it's good they've got that psychology done. 
of Steve Wright. I think Ooh, that's the first ball. Oh, no, no, right. Oh. <laughs> There's the uh, psychology because it was a slight misfield uh, there at uh, mid-off. Don't know if we're going to have the uh, fielder identified for us. Tommy Borman. It was Tommy Borman. Off his knee. And uh, I think because of the score ball pressure, the batsman didn't go for the run when really they should have done. And Steve Wright, next ball, uh, straight to Borman who feels more cleanly this time and there's no run. They put yeah. his name up this time, by the way, because it's a clean bit of fielding. Yeah. Um, you know, and I said that's the score ball pressure. We've seen that two or three times. You know, when uh, they got nothing to lose, they really should have gone for the run there. Steve Wright still to get his first run, which he will get now with a nice clip off his legs. But uh, good fielding there just behind square on the leg side. So even though they're virtually home and dry, Ollie Horn slid across to make sure that there was only the one run there. And uh, that will please everybody at Dumbleton. 144 for nine. Carty back on strike on two, facing Adam Stewart. Turns that one nicely into a big gap on the left side, but no real power on the shot, and I'm sure they're not going to force the two. So just a single to Liam Carty, takes him on to 345 for nine. Yes, Keith, if, if ever there was a case for two batsmen not to wear helmets, it would be fa <laughs> facing Adam Stewart, who uh, I don't think the speed gun would actually register in his deliveries. Um, but they do, it's all part of the armour these days, and... Uh, you know, and it would have been a damp script if they'd have gone and flailing and all out, as you say, with a less than 100. But at least for their fans who've been quite vocal when they had a little bit of a uh, upturn in fortunes, uh, you know, they're going to see it right down to the wire almost. Yep. And that's good. People have come, you know, all the way up from Southampton, Dumbleton fans from the Cotswolds just north of Cheltenham. And it is now a glorious evening. Sunshine, law of looking at picture. Yeah, absolutely. And I think probably that's the uh, thing to do now. They're not going to win, but let's uh, get the game as close as we can because it is going to be something for the fans, you know, that uh, we've still got four overs left as the uh, first ball, the next over is steered into the uh, vacant uh, slip area by Carty for a single off the uh, bowling of uh, Ollie Horn, bowling his last over. Takes him on to four, 146 for nine. Now, it's a very good point, uh, Kevin, that, uh, you know, with I'm not saying you paid your money, I want to see everything, but... <laughs> You know, you want to make sure that you've had a good day out. And if you can say, well, both sides batted through their 40 overs, then you must have had a reasonable day out at worst. And I'm sure it's better than that. Steve Wright plays the next ball and cuts it to a backward point. But uh, Aaron Thompson is there. And uh, even if you were going for the runs, there's no way you would run for that one. No, no. But it's a chance, think for about it. Sorry, okay, the chance for liam carty and uh, steve wright to land a couple of blows and you know, if he hits a six or a four pass point uh steve Wright now the crowd will all be up done but he can dine on that out on that for a bit mm -hmm. he's back in the calmer pavilion years later horn again in nicely turned off his legs by uh, steve Wright down to a long leg but uh, no more than a single there takes him on to two now we mentioned earlier that uh Ben Johns had played 150 consecutive games for Calmore. Yep. I spoke to Mark Laval when I sat down in the pavilion just chatted to him. He said he's had a problem with uh, hamstring groin a bit in the last um, month or so, and he just tapes up and gets on with it. And, you know, sadly for them today, it just, just went at the wrong time, didn't it? It did, but, uh, yeah, yeah, it's so sad. as just watch Horn comes and next oh. ball, which is... Uh, Pulled round off the toe end of the bat by Carty. Obviously got something on it as it goes down to a long leg fielded by Ollie Stewart. Single takes Carty on to 548 for nine. Um, yeah, it, it's sad. It, uh, in a way, it shows the uh, professionalism of uh, Ben Johns. Uh, you know, exactly what you said, tape it up and get on with it. Mm. That's brilliant. So, you know, he's got this great record and he obviously doesn't want to jeopardise it. And he is so valuable for the team. I don't think it's a case of, well, I'm not fit enough to play. You know, I think he's so valuable. He has to play for the team and... Uh, it's a nice self drive there by uh, well, cover drive even by uh, Steve Wright, but uh, straight to uh, Ollie Stewart who's come round because we got a left. I should say we got a left right hand combination, so the fielders do move round a bit. But we um, mentioned it earlier. You know, people always forget that Ben Johns is one of their gun fielders, and he was doing quite a lot of running between positions from sort of mid wicket yes. out to long off like that, and all those little things that just put an extra strain. Very good point, Kevin. Very good points indeed. Anyway, last ball of uh, Ollie Horn's spell. Bowling to Liam Carter. Ooh. And he, oh, I thought he bowled him there. Very he sort of looked round, was waiting for to see the bails on the ground, but he got a toe end on it, dribbles through to long leg, gets a single, keeps the strike. Miss Carmel getting 150. 150 yeah, for nine. Yeah, good. Good milestone. And uh, 
Good spell, Oli uh, Horn. Um, again, he's been a a fixture in the team. Um, not been his most fluent of spells. It's done quite a lot. You know, even that one has just tailed in at the end again. Yeah. It's done a lot. Maybe I think the Calmore boys were, were talking about what ball they're going to bowl with. Is it different? Is it uh, the make of ball that they play with? And it's definitely moved for them all day today. It has. Um, it has. And that one, you're right. It. Uh, you know, thinking it was a full shot, it mm. was a full shot because of a good ball. Mm. Yeah, actually, give give uh, Liam Carty credit for actually keeping it out and uh, being able to uh, steer it. Uh, well, get it uh, get it away. But anyway, we got Ali Sharper uh, coming back on. Uh, Horn's final figures: eight overs, no maidens, one for twenty-eight. And it's uh, Sharp to uh, come back on. He's bowled five overs, one maiden, none for twenty-four. Sharpie, as he's known, bowling from the nursery end. Carty goes for a big waft outside the off stump and misses it. Yeah, Sorry, Will Sharp. I was calling him Molly Sharp. Will yeah, Sharp. Will my Sharp. Sharp. My uh, apologies. He's got a couple of brothers in the wings. Yeah. Freddie and Albie, younger brothers. Good cricketers as well coming through. So the Sharp dynasty will continue for many years to come. But uh, yeah, Will, nice chance to just finish off, try and pick up a wicket, Lord. So he took that very good catch. Look, he's shielding his eyes from the sun now. Mm. And he was fielding just uh, adjacent to that position. Took a great catch up in the it was. heavens. I'm going to be glad that you and uh, James pointed out that because I said he misjudged it, which was really a wrong thing to say because with the sun in your eyes, that was a difficult chance. And mm. uh, he did well to readjust and catch it. Next ball is outside the off stump and uh, Carty misses it. And uh, he and Steve Wright are going to have a conversation. Oh. Touch gloves. A little punch. So Will Sharp now, he's got two, he's played a missed at two, they've brought the slip in Dumbleton, you could argue to put another one, but given the score, but I think Will Sharp now, the order of the day is nice and straight, you miss, I hit. Let's see what he does from the nursery end, right arm over. Oh, that's out, I think, There's oh, no. a LBW appeal there, which uh, umpire Blondell, who's uh, got himself uh, infamously popular with the uh, fans from Dumbleton, shakes his head there. Yeah, look, I'm sorry, a bit of bias there from here. We mentioned we we're square on, but um, I haven't seen the replay. But it was full, it was full. It might have just tailed in at the end again. Oh, we've got a look now. Let's see what happened. Ooh. Oh, it tailed in. Ooh, but I think it went away at the end, a bit of reverse. It might have uh, come into the... Uh, yeah, been one worth of, you know, Ooh. looking at again. I but at uh, the moment, it looked like it's going down the leg side. But you said it might have tailed in. But let's see what he does with the next ball. That one is outside the off stump. And, uh, yeah, Will Sharp, who was a little bit wayward with his wides earlier on. Has conceded another wide, but that's almost incidental now. 151 for nine. Yeah, I might have been if, if it was ever available to club cricketers. I might have been uh, having a review for that last ball sharp. It was going, and then it just tailed like almost. It did, reversed. yes. No, first of all, I thought well, that was clean down leg side. You're right. It just. Um, I thought it might have got a bat on it. But yeah. Oh, that's another wide. Well, that was definitely a very wide. Ooh. That one he plays and misses outside the off stump, Carty, but not taken cleanly by Tremaine, but uh, no runs. Yeah, just, just battling a bit, uh, Will. Um, he's very close often at the front line, and uh, we worked a little bit with just to get him to get his front foot planted be behind it so then he can concentrate getting through his action. Because even we've seen with these wides, they're not, they're not going, they're swinging out. He's just not quite completing his action as he might do, but then he follows it up with a very good ball. A spot is the next ball as he comes in from the nursery end. Bowls to Carty, who uh, tries to turn that round the corner and... Uh, does the thing that I love in club cricket, does his own fielding. Never <laughs> see that now the level of cricket, no, do no. you, Kevin? Indeed, there'll be appeals for handling the ball, I should think, at this yes. point. But uh, in club cricket, it's the done thing that if you uh, miss the ball, it lands near your feet, then you are picking it up for the fielders, which yep. uh, I think is nice. Mr. Gooch years ago, didn't he fall foul of that? Yes, he did, yes. So far, no runs off the bat. We've had uh, four legitimate uh, balls, just the one wide. No runs off the bat at the moment. Will Sharp in from the nursery end, right arm over. Just proving to be, oh no, no ball, nothing. So another extra goes on the total, 152 for nine. Yeah, they're very different early. The psychological element uh, of cricket, it, Will, when he bowled a few w wides, the Calmore fans were, were cheering incessantly. And so just put a bit of pressure on him. And, you know, uh, from a Dumbleton point of view, it didn't mean that much because of the runs they'd scored. And he just finding his rhythm difficult. As the next ball is, uh, this time is on a uh, good length on the stumps and uh, played back by Carty, but uh, straight to Rupert Salmon at mid-off. So in the old days, that would have been a maiden, but because there were two wides, it's not. 
but just the two runs coming off it there 152 for nine two overs left come on need 90 runs from 12 balls and uh, even I can do the maths um, I won't say that's a mathematical impossibility but you have to bowl a hell of a lot of no balls and wides in order yeah. to get that yeah Interesting, I saw Rupert Salmon. Nice, you know, he's given Will a lot of other captains, might not give him another over. I think he's bowled a few too many wides. But, um, you know, six overs for 26, not uh, disgraceful by any means. And he's bowled some good deliveries. As I say, that LBW shout looked very adjacent to me. Um, but, of course, I'm a bowler and biased. Um, and uh, he just signalled uh, uh, Rupert to Tommy Borman. He did a fancy bowl and he immediately pointed to the nursery and he didn't... He didn't fancy bowling from this end to the shorter boundary. So Miles Holland is back on now. For the penultimate over. Maybe the last over we will see. Bowling to Steve Wright. Who turns it into a big gap on the leg side. Now they should get two here. I know it may not be consequential. But uh, at least they've got to show some willing. And uh, they managed to get the two there. As uh, the fielder uh, right on the uh, boundary there. Ross Martin had a long way to come in. And uh, that was really quite a comfortable two there for uh, Steve Wright. Takes him on to 554 for nine. Yeah, so, sorry, go on, you first, Kevin. I was saying, good commitment, Ross Martin. You know, the game's over. Mm. He can jog in, there's two. But he, he, he ran in hard through it, and a slightly better throw was just at the keeper's feet. He might have tested it because he was stretching for the line. They the were, they were stretching there, but it uh, shows the commitment of Dumbleton. They're so close, but uh, not there yet as the next ball steered to Thompson on the offside. And uh, if you've been following our commentary, you'll know that uh, anything steered to Thompson, there's only one result, no run. That's right. No. So, I was just going to say, Kevin, I was just setting things up. So, Dumbleton, in 2011, reached the semi-finals of the Village Cup, lost to the eventual runners-up Rotting Dean by nine runs. 2020, lost the quarter-final to the eventual winners, Colwall, by, you guessed it, nine runs. Is today going to be the day they turn those two results round? Well, the way things are going, that's almost there now as the next ball from... Miles Holland is turned back to him by Steve Wright, but there are no runs. And when people talk to you about wickets losing their pace, you know, this is the second day on a wicket, and the ball gets softer, the older it gets, obviously 40. But I think it's been noticeable that it's not quite zipped through. I mean, when the clouds are about, it seemed to be doing a little bit. It has definitely moved in the air and just a bit off the pitch, but without the pace that some of the bowlers would have liked. Holland again into Wright who cuts it into the offside and they're gone for the single against uh, Thompson and uh, Thompson actually had a bit of room to move there and uh, so in other circumstances I think they'll look for the overthrow because he had quite a way to run. His throw for once wasn't that accurate and uh, certainly if they were pushing for runs I think they would have got an overthrow there but uh, they're not pushing for runs and they've decided not to so just a single to uh, Steve Wright takes him on to six, 155 for nine. And like a lot of things that have changed in club cricket, the years gone by, the guy would have stayed this side. But Aaron Thompson's gone again to backward point for the right hander. He's backward point for the left. So he's yep. a bit of running around to do. Carty faces the next ball, which uh, he plays to short mid wicket. Uh, sorry, uh, short mid wicket. Short extra cover. Yeah, it's a pace off delivery there from Miles. Holly Hall, the fielder there, and there is no run. So, in the death rows of the game here, just the seven balls left. 159, 5 for 9, Cowmore. If you've forgotten what the target was, 242. 242, same as yesterday. Yeah, um, exactly interesting, uh, Keith, I don't know if you've got to think about this, or James in the background. Uh, who would you be your man of the match today? Uh, good point. I'll come back to I'll think about that and let you know in just a moment. As uh, Next ball from, from Miles Holland. Last ball of the over. Last ball of his spell. It's played straight back by Carty for no run. So Miles Holland's finished with four overs, no bags for 24. So we've got one over left, Camor 155 for nine, Carty on six, right on six, A need 87 to win. Well, we know that's not going to happen, and uh, as you said, uh, Kevin, I think we're going to put Tommy Borman on. So to answer your question, I think we obviously got three candidates, Rupert Salmon, Tommy Borman, Ross Martin. Who was the, out of those three, has won the game for them? Um, I suppose, as a bowler, you would say Ross Martin. Mm. The only reason, perhaps, I would say against that is that we like to share these things around, and he was the player of the round in the in the semi-finals. <laughs> <laughs> so whether that will weigh against him, I don't know. But uh, in terms of the three, if, if I was making the decision impartially, I think it has to be Ross Martin, because I think to bowl eight overs, four for 12, is a match-winning spell. Yep. And to get the wickets he did, we're talking top-order wickets. We'll go through who we got in a moment. 
back to so Will Sharp bowling the last over. And he bowled him. Will Sharp bowled him. Bowl Steve Wright. That is the winning wicket. Dumbleton have won the Vonius Village Cup by 86 runs. The players, including the uh, 12th, 13th, 14th men, have come onto the pitch. Players saluting with their fans. Also good to see some handshakes from the uh, Dumbleton players with the two Camor batsmen because the game has been played in a superb spirit. But uh, the winners of the Vonius Village Cup of Dumbleton, I think it's only right that I now let Kevin Emery, who was playing for, well, has played for Dumbleton second eleven this season, to say a few words on what is clearly a momentous occasion for this lovely club on the Gloucestershire Worcestershire borders. Yeah, it is. It's a uh, you know, once-in-a-lifetime achievement. Um, you could tell by the smiles and the elation at the end. And again, nice for Will Sharp. He went round the wicket first time in his spell and bowled the perfect Yorker. Um, so he's got a wicket. He's on the board, as it were. We mentioned earlier that most of the team have got in the game. Even Scotty Tremaine got a nice stumping. Aaron Thompson, brilliant as ever, backward point. But they've all chipped in, and it's been a it's been a team effort right throughout all the rounds. Different players have put their hands up and put in a performance. And today, I think uh, in cricket sometimes you just have to say, well, we were beaten by a better team. And I think Calmore would uh, not begrudge Dumbleton uh, their victory. They started off shakily. Uh, built in the middle innings, Tommy Borman um, growing into his innings and getting a very uh, good 76. Rupert Salmon, 70 uh, odd, near runner ball and captaining, so you might factor that into the man of the match, but I'm probably with you, uh, Keith. Uh, Ross Martin, four at the top four. Uh, he's probably won at the game, and now you see the players coming off, and as they should, they'll uh, shake hands with the opposition and no doubt share a beer at the end of it. Browns are already on the pitch and Lord's Cricket Ground has witnessed another wonderful final and I'm happy to say my team has come out on top. I think you've been very restrained Kevin. I was waiting for you to run around the commentary box punching the air with delight but uh, great summary and uh, we'll carry on with you and uh, give you a few more thoughts but uh, let me pick up something you said. I'm, I'm looking at the stats here because uh, with the bat interesting that the two top run scorers in the competition by some distance were Ross Martin and Daniel Holland. Well neither of them made, made big contributions today. Um, Tommy Borman, I didn't realise this but has only played a couple of games but mm. played in the semi-final but in the two previous games, he scored two and six. Yeah. And, and he today he's come up with 71. And uh, not a bad place to do that at Lords, is it? Uh, Absolutely. He, t Tommy's a rising star. Um, he's got a big future ahead of him. Um, and so he was taken for um, England 19s and age groups that couldn't play a couple of the rounds. Uh, and showed his class at times through that. You know, maybe got out to one of the worst balls he faced. But um, great for him to come and... Uh, win a trophy at Lords and now the Dumbleton players are coming towards their fans and what is really nice it's quite gratifying is that the, the Calmore players are stood and all applauding them on the side of the square applauding all the Dumbleton players people take their pictures they come to salute their fans who've made the journey up from Gloucestershire and Calmore are doing the same but what a lovely touch that is Calmore stood and applauded every Dumbleton player across that that is what sport is about Absolutely right, uh, Kevin. It was, uh, I got quite emotional with the end of the game, Bexley against Natwich, and uh, wasn't obviously nowhere near the finish that we had yesterday. But actually, we're looking at the Camor players and the way that uh, they were applauding the Dumbleton players. Uh, actually, brought a little bit of lump to my throat, and uh, you know, great credit to both teams. We spoke a little bit about. Uh, you know how uh, great village cricket is in terms of sportsmanship. We did mention that uh, Camel particularly had a slightly feisty game last season in uh, one of their earlier rounds. But uh, all the games I've seen this season, including yesterday, when you think how close that game yeah. was, I think that, you know it's great to see this sort of spirit in club cricket, which uh, you know is why so many of us love the game. Exactly, and I think um, you know one of the things in sport is you don't always win, and how you react to defeat is. Um with a measure of the men, uh, a Calmore, uh, brilliant there in their in their um, applause for their uh, victors, um, and no doubt they'll come again. They've you know got it twice in two years, a feat in itself that shouldn't be overlooked. Um, ben Johns at Hamble with an injury, their main player, and that would have sent distress signals through their team. But they uh, they came back into it a little bit, showed some fight, showed some determination, and but at the end of the day. Dumbleton just wanted it a little bit more, had a bit more um, 
more in their tank, so to speak. Uh, Seamers with a bit more pace. The wicket did a little bit and it swung. And then they kept chipping away with wickets. Ross Martin having set it up with those four at the top four on a hat-trick at one stage. Mm. Great to see. Uh, and it's been a privilege to share this with you, Keith and James and Luke, uh, this afternoon on a late September in uh, St. John's Wood, North West 8. Thank you, Kevin. And uh, we're can I say that uh, the privilege has been ours as well to have you with us with James and Luke uh, I think we make a damn good team personally yeah no it was good very really have and, uh, we've, uh, I hope you've done justice we've had a lot of feedback and we thank you very much for that we will run through the uh, scorecards in a minute and uh, James is uh, pointing at uh, someone someone obviously one of the players is uh, dancing around a little bit a uh, oh dear you're pretty flint off <laughs> I think what will happen is that uh, if it follows the pattern of yesterday that the, uh, there will be presentations in front of the pavilion but that will be limited to uh, the uh, people who are allowed into the pavilion but uh, I'm sure that the players, although they're in front of the fans at the moment, will come back and uh, show their medals and their trophies and uh, might be a chance to catch up with them then but uh, just uh, got James, uh, what's James pointing at? What's he pointing at there? I'm not very good at reading sign really language. The umpires who's got excited at the end. Oh, well, and is that oh, it must loop. be Anthony Blondell. Yes. He's uh, been, he's, uh, uh, he's been a real character today. And uh, nicely as well. Nice, mm. uh, nicely uh, done. But, uh, no, big congratulations to Dumbleton. Obviously, Camus races to Cowmore. Um, worth pointing out, Kevin, their first ever defeat in the Village Cup because they yeah. only entered it for the first time last year, won it. So... Uh, I don't know how many games they played. I can tell how many games they played this year. 17 was it undefeated. It was I think it was, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, first defeat in the Village Cup. But, um, you know, they're obviously they're going to be very disappointed. But uh, just a few words about them. And, uh, you know, the fact that they came second best. But I think the way they acknowledged Dumbleton shows that they realised that. I think the fact that they kept it going to the last over when it was very clear from, well, when it was for 50, when uh, Ross Martin was on a hat-trick, uh, really from then on was it was pretty clear that uh, they had too much firepower for Cowmore and Cowmore were never going to get near it. The fact they stuck in there till virtually the end is a credit to the club, in my opinion. Yeah, definitely. Um, they showed some good resolve in the middle order. They, it was a, a decent bowling performance without being sort of uh, <coughs> catching the eye as much as they would have liked. Uh, and Dumbleton just got away from them at the end so put them under a bit of pressure but um, uh, they stuck in in their middle and it gave a chance for some of the unsung heroes to show their skills James Manning, Max Bailey and a few others you know some of their bowlers performed creditably um, they were hampered I think Josh Metcalf didn't bowl his eight full out money two came and hit some lusty blows at the end so you know, if you're going to lose one in a, in a winning run then actually at the final you know, I can think of worse places to lose it, maybe like a semi oh. or a quarter. So, uh, and they've, you know, they've had two consecutive years at Lords, and uh, that will never leave them. These guys, you know, when they get old, they remember that two finals at Lords, and there's not many people in their club career and even their professional career can say they've done that. I dream about playing at Lords, and obviously in my age that would never happen. But when I was playing club cricket, it was uh, something that I knew would never happen, and. Uh, this is as near as it gets to us, and I'm so glad I'm able to do that. What I'll do, Kevin, is I'll go through the scorecards, but uh, please, if you want to say anything afterwards, feel free. But uh, if we just spend a couple of minutes running through the scorecards. So it was actually Cowmore who won the toss and decided to field first, so they put uh, Dumbleton into bat. Uh, the wickets fell as follows. It was uh, Ross Martin who was bowled Steve Wright for 10. Dan Holland caught Max Bailey, bowled Ben Perry for 29. Tom Borman caught Sean Johnson, bowled Mark Lavelle for 71. Mars Holland caught James Manning, bowled Ben Perry for 39. Rupert Salmon, not out, 73. Adam Stewart, not out, 5. The extras, 14 of them, 5 buys, 2 leg buys, 6 wides and 1 no ball. In the 40 overs, that was 241 for 4 for Dumbleton. And we all felt that was a very challenging score. The wickets, if you want to know when they fell, it was Ross Martin at 18. Daniel Holland, the second wicket, to fall at 40, at 80 rather. Uh, 127 for three when Tom Borman was out. And then a great partnership between Rupert Salmon and Miles Holland, with Miles Holland out at the score at 216. Bowling figures, Steve Wright, eight overs, one maiden, one for 31. Not quite the figures he had last year, but at least he got his maiden. Josh Metcalf, you mentioned earlier, slight injury concern because he wasn't bowled out, six overs for 16 runs. 
Mark Lavelle didn't quite become the top wicket taper in the competition. Got just the one wicket when he needed two, but he got a wicket. Seven overs, no maidens, one for 46. Ben Perry, eight overs, no maidens, two for 65. Liam Carty, eight overs for 42 runs. And, <coughs> excuse me, Sean Johnson, three overs for 34 runs. So that was the uh, Dumbleton score. 242, therefore, was the target for Cowmore. And as you gather, they sadly didn't get anywhere near it, mostly due to the excellent bowling of Ross Martin. And when I read the scorecard out, assuming it appears in my screen, which it has now, then you'll see why when I tell you how the wickets fell. So first wicket was the key one of Ben Johns. Caught Tom Bullman, bowled Ross Martin for two. Mark Lavelle, bowled Ross Martin for four. Will Brewster, caught Stock Tremaine, bowled Ross Martin for 14. Matt Taylor, caught Scott Tremaine, bowled Jamie Diamond for nine. Sean Johnson, LBW to Ross Martin for naught on a hat-trick because he was out first ball, Johnson. I just need to refresh the scorecard because it still says there's a couple of not-out batsmen, which I don't think is the case. So just let the scorecard refresh. Apologies for the slowness of my lovely laptop, which has done sterling service today. And I think now it will tell me the rest of the scorecard. Here it comes. Thank you very much. So we got as far as uh, Sean Johnson, LBW to Ross Martin for naught. So he was on a hat-trick, Ross Martin. Then we had uh, Max Bailey bowled Jamie Diamond for 18. James Manning uh, stumped Scott Tremaine, bowled Adam Stewart for 41. Josh Metcalf called Will Sharp, bowled Adam Stewart for 18. Ben Perry bowled Ollie Horn for two. And the last wicket, Steve Wright bowled Will Sharp for six, leaving Liam Carty not out six. A lot of extras. Mm -hmm. Second top score with 35, <coughs> leg buys four, no balls two, 29 wides, but nowhere near enough for Calmore. Bowled out in the last over for 155. And those bowling figures, well, we've got to start with uh, Ross Martin. Eight overs, three maidens, four for 12. Other bowling figures, all supporting the team. Ollie Horn, eight overs, no maidens, one for 28. Jamie Diamond, seven overs, no maidens, two for 28. Miles Holland, four overs for 24 runs. Adam Stewart, Cho, the groundsman will be pleased with his figures, I'm sure. Four overs, no maidens, two for 13. Tom Borman, two overs for 20. And the wickets, if I just quickly run through them, and you'll see some of the troubles they had. So the two key players, Ben Johns and Mark Lavelle, were the first two out. Johns, when the score was five, Lavelle, when the score was 22. Will Brewster, another key opener, out when the score was 34. Next ball, Sean Johnson out, LBW, so they were. So Ross Martin was on a hat-trick. It was denied, but Matt Taylor was soon out afterwards, leaving them 39 for five. Recovery between uh, Max Bailey and James Manning took the score to 111 before Max Bailey was out. Then James Manning out at 138 for seven. Josh Metcalf, 140 for eight. Ben Perry, 141 for nine. And the final wicket, last wicket stand at 14 before Steve Wright was out making it 155 all out and uh, must have I didn't have the screen at the time but I'm very pleased I did the mental maths win for Dumbleton by 86 runs so Kevin I think it's only fitting to give you the last thoughts in fact there is a crowd congregating in front of the pavilion so I'll leave you to say a couple of words and then we'll sign off so your final thoughts on an historic day for Dumbleton yeah it's a day that will live long in the memory um that you can never take away from those players and uh, in their twilight years of cricket they remember this um, fitting that they've all contributed along the way and the final like the quarters and semi albeit there were times where it was nip and tuck they've won fairly convincingly in the end uh, a good team performance well led by Rupert Salmon uh, commiserations to Calmore who tried to emulate the feat of five other clubs in, in winning it twice but Dumbleton's day and they'll be singing on the coaches back to the Cotswolds. I'm sure they will. Kevin, thank you ever so much. It's been a privilege and a pleasure working with you. Thank you ever so much for your time today, and I hope it won't be the last time that uh, we'll commentate together. Yes, Keith. Yeah, great. Thank you very much. Thanks um, so much thanks indeed. Thanks to James and Luke as well. Very oh, good. We will. Big, big thanks to uh, Luke Edwards and James Gardner, who will be part of uh, what I think has been a pretty damn good commentary team, if I may say so. So we're just going to... Uh, Hang up in a moment. We're going to finish uh, the uh, commentary here because uh, the presentations are taking place. I think, actually, no, I think I might stay on, actually, because uh, we have got shots of the uh, screen of the uh, pavilion. So I think we will just stay on for a bit. I don't know if my colleagues want to go and join the uh, presentations, but uh, since we are still on stream, we will just uh, try and describe the scene for you. So there's quite a crowd gathering in front of the pavilion. 
obviously waiting for the uh, players and the presentations to be made. And we'll keep an eye on it uh, just for uh, the time being, because if that's going to happen shortly, then obviously it will be good to uh, bring that to you. So uh, just let people know that we will stay on air just for a couple more minutes, just while we wait sure. I've just got the signal, keep going, Keith, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> OK, lads, thanks very much indeed. So uh, what we do is let's just play a little... No, no, I think we're just getting on now. Let's just hear uh, and uh, Tremaine, get, sorry, Anne Wellham giving out uh, the PA announcement. We also have Steve Layton, CEO of Vanayas, Hugh Turberville, editor of the Cricketer magazine, and David Gower, the Vanayas Village Cup ambassador. First, Jamie Cox will say a few words. Uh, thank you, Kate. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the MCC, can I congratulate both teams, uh, not only the players, but certainly all the fans, uh, your administrators and everybody uh, who's made it here today. Thank you very much. Over the, Over the past two days, We've been privileged here at Lords to host the very best of the heartbeat of the game. And, you know, to, to for you guys to, to, to start in a competition with 350 teams, to work your way up to play in the final is a wonderful achievement. So, thank you. To, to Chris, to Chris and Jim and you at the Cricketer, uh, well done to Steve and the Vinayas team uh, for your support. Well done and thank you for a competition that's now 50 years proud, uh, I'm sure you are, uh, in watching another outcome today. From the MCC's perspective, a quick thank you to our ground staff who once again have produced an amazing surface befitting of a game such as today. And further... Furthermore, to our amazing operational team from our ground stewards to our pavilion stewards, our operational team to Kate and her cricketing team for putting on a wonderful day. Thank you to those. And look, just finally from my perspective to the Calmore boys, you know, you experienced the, uh, you experienced the pleasure last year. Um, of having uh, and the fairy tale victory that went down pretty late in the day from all reports or from all memory I should say it was one of my first days in the business you've experienced the pain today boys but I'm sure you've had a terrific day and well done on a great run through the tournament and to Rupert and the Dumbleton boys you know to be the champs you had to beat the champs and you've done that today, so fantastic effort. I'm sure there's some memories created today that you'll never forget. So congratulations to you guys. David Garrow will now present the Ben Brocklehurst Memorial Trophy to the man of the match, as adjudicated by today's presentation party. For his score for 12 from 8 overs, the man of the match is Ross Martin. Turbo will now present the galleons to today's umpires, Anthony Blondell, Peter Ogborn and John Hope. <laughs> Jamie will present the galleons to the runners-up Carmel Sports Club in scorecard order. Will Brewster. Ben Johns. Their captain on his final appearance, Mark Lavelle. 
Matt Taylor, Sean Johnson, Max Bailey, James Manning, John Metcalf, Ben Perry, Stephen Wainwright, Liam Carty, their 12th man Daniel Croft, and their scorer Claire Taylor. the balance to the winning team, Dumbleton Cricket Club, in scorecard order. Okay. Ross Martin. Dan Holland. Tommy Borman. Rupert Salmon. Miles Holland. Adam Stewart, Aaron Thompson, Scott Tremaine, Ollie Horn, Will Sharp, Jamie Diamond, the 12th man at Tom Green. Duncan Westerman. <laughs> Finally, Steve Layton, CEO of Vineas, will present the Vineas Village Cup to Rupert Salmon, captain of Dumbleton. Okay, I think the uh, formal part of the uh, presentations are over and the uh, Dumbleton players are uh, waving and jumping to their fans. So uh, just a few final comments and uh, Luke Edwards has come back to uh, join us. Thanks very much indeed, Luke. I mean, uh, lots of people to say thank you to, but first of all, what a great day. Yeah, comprehensive victory in the end for Dumbleton and the curse of potential back-to-back -back win strikes again, doesn't it? But Dumbleton, the first time here and they've won and they've thoroughly deserved it we thought there was nerves early on in the innings but then they, uh, they soon accelerated and it would have been a formidable total despite the um the collapse from calmore especially at the start and the three big guns went cheaply and it was all all plain sailing from there really i think the biggest achievement for our commentary team today and it was a real fear of mine that we will keep referring to dumbleton as dumbledore, dumbledore yeah. and i don't think we I did, did. You I mentioned it did once it. Yeah. but it was deliberate so yeah. i think that's a great achievement i nearly did say dumbledore but, once, uh, but, yeah. no a great occasion great occasion so uh, lots of people to say thank you to uh, big big thanks to uh, the mcc uh, mark mcdonald and anna who were working with us uh, today and uh, yesterday to uh, make sure that uh, we got the uh, video feed that uh, we're just looking at as uh, Rupert Salmon holds the uh, Village Cup up in front of their adoring fans, in front of the pavilion. Still probably about 100, 150 people there, but uh, as we watch the final throws of it. But a uh, big, big thanks to uh, them and to uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Ray, who has been a great supporter of uh, working with MV Play, making sure we all coordinated, and I think we coordinated quite well. I've got to say that because he's behind me, but uh, no, it was uh, it's been great working with MV Play, and uh, you know, hopefully uh, with the Trinus we made a good team. Big, big thanks to uh, Jonathan Pinfield, who was always in the background, even when he's in Hamburg, just making sure that uh, the sound quality was as it should be. So big, big thanks to him. 
Big thanks to everyone who's been tweeting us today. I saw you missed you earlier on, but I think we caught up with you all and seemed to be a lot of tweets from Dumbleton, and I'm sure you are very, very pleased with that. And Switzerland and Italy, South Africa. Oh, They're wow. all over the world watching the stream and listening. So. Well, we're very, very pleased. And I know lots of you were watching the stream yesterday. You got the figures, actually. 600 people watching the stream of the last over. And uh, obviously not quite the exciting finish today, but uh, there we are. Um, I think there's a message there from Jonathan. I think you can read his writing yeah. better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like a doctor's writing. Um, thanks to all the clubs who've invited us in as well this season. And, and let us cover the, uh, the Vonius Village Cup. It's been another exciting season and we look forward to doing it again next year, all being well. I really hope so. And uh, yes, uh, so I will echo those thoughts. I mean, if you want to name the clubs, I'll name the ones that particularly support us early on. I'm thinking of uh, White Wolf and Raysbury and uh, Cookham Dean, who got through we to the national to, rounds. We went to Rainford. Uh, I think that was about it. <laughs> oh, well, I'm sure, yeah, there was others as well, I'm sure you did. But, uh, you know, certainly, uh, thanks ever so much for you. Uh, and Alvinley, don't forget Alvinley. Yeah, well, yeah, they played Alvinley, but we didn't go to Alvinley oh, okay. this year. But, but yeah, they, they were supportive of us. And in terms of the cricket this season in general as well, the NCCA for letting us in yep. and do some doing some games there. And we're looking forward to doing, uh, doing, doing that again next year. Uh, hopefully get some NCCA games on, second 11 games, and we've got lots of sport coming up, not just cricket, of course, the winter months are upon us, so we've got lots of football, rugby union for you as well coming up. So make sure you stay tuned, and follow us on Twitter at Live Sports FM to find out what is happening. OK, and just a big thank, we mentioned lots of sport coming up, hopefully we'll be covering one of the FA Cup third qualifying round games in a couple of weeks' time. So, uh, big, big thanks to the commentary team today, Luke Edwards, James Gardner and Kevin Emery, I think everything is finished in front of the pavilion, so just a time to say big, big thanks to everyone for listening to us. We've been Live Sports FM, working with MV Play to bring you live audio and video stream of the Vonius Village Cup final between Camor Sports and Dumbleton. And I've been Keith Higgins, and my final comment is to remind you of the victory margin. It's first time victory for Dumbleton in the Vonius Village Cup, beating Camor Sports by 86 runs. Thank you much for listening. Listen to you again soon. Thanks very much, and goodbye. We've got so many posers in the game at the moment, it's, it's, it's frightening. I mean, we brought the European game over here where they're falling on. I mean, we didn't invent that, we got rid of it. The highlights of my career, I have been beating some of the best fighters pound for pound in the world. Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, marvelous Marvin Hackman. So, I've had a wonderful career. The Premiership, as big as they are, and it's a fantastic league and the best supported league and watched league all over the world, a lot of those players come through a system. Grassroots football, that's where it's got to come from. Floyd Mayweather is probably thinking, should I fight this kid or not? He must be scared of something. That's why he doesn't really want the fight. He's not really keen on the fight between me and him. So let's see what happens. I'd like to have as many on Twitter as there. 53 million. Wow. This is Live Sports FM, the home of live sports. us now at live sports fm and follow us on facebook at live sports fm this is cricket live